Good. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what a lovely day for it. At the exact same moment as I welcome you uh, to Upcut Cross for the South Tech Cup point to point. This live feed presented by the Devon and Cornwall point to point area. The commentator who's in a crane high uh, above to my, uh, to my right has started talking as well because the runners for the first of our pony races this afternoon are on their way to the start. Before we pick them up on the way to the start, let me tell you, we're going to bring you the two pony races on the live stream. Uh, there's one coming up very shortly and then the other one, uh, well, they, they follow on pretty much soon after. Uh, and uh, then we're going to leave you to it for a bit and then we'll be back in time for the first of the point-to-point -point races, which are at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So it's the Cornish Tractors, 138 centimetres and under, novice riders race, which is the first of our two pony races. All five ponies are taking part in this race and they are making their way to the starting point uh, down the race course at the moment. I can tell you that number four, Poppet, the mount of Nicol Connors, has been adjudged the best turned out pony in this race. Well, we've got, a, uh, we've got various cameras around the track, so hopefully one of those can now uh, pick up the ponies. There they are, uh, on their way uh, to the start. This race, over a distance of seven furlongs, 1,400 metres, uh, if you prefer. And uh, let me just go through them for you. Number one is Avalon Dancer, mainly yellow colours. It's a really bright, sunny day here. I should tell you the ground is uh, good to soft. They had a decent amount of rain earlier in the week. But it's the most beautiful day today with quite a breeze here as well. So I'm sure it'll be drying out to good before too long. Uh, and um, so we've got um, uh, Avalon Dancer, number one. Two Dance uh, Alone with Lowen Cruz Mills, who's 11 years old riding Dance Alone. Uh, three's little replacement, Catherine Spark. Uh, uh, Catherine uh, is... That was the last one for the paddock. I'm not sure it's actually in our picture at the moment. Four is Poppet with Nicole Connors, one at uh, Fleet. And uh, then five is Wynn Dark Lad with Lewis Burke uh, riding that one. Yeah, the race car says uh, Catherine Spark, but it is, of course, Catherine Sprake. The Sprake family, a well-known family in these parts, in horsey circles. So uh, if you're able to be following on this afternoon, you're very welcome. And lovely to see another member of the Sprake family in action here this afternoon. So they're just making their way steadily down to the start. We're in North Devon. We're not too far away from uh, the town of Oakhampton's not too far away. Uh, and it is the most lovely, perfect summer's afternoon for all of this. There is a bit of a breeze, which is a disadvantage if you happen to be hosting a live stream and got notes in front of you, but for everyone else, uh, it just uh, makes it a tiny bit cooler than it otherwise uh, might be. There's Dance Alone right in the centre of your picture at the moment. Little replacement in the front of the three uh, ponies there, and there's that Avalon Dancer as well. The colours in the bright sunshine, just uh, a tiny bit harder than they might otherwise be to pick out. But um, Mark Dennis, who's the commentator for the two pony races and then the point-to-point -point races this afternoon, uh, will be doing that for us, be picking them all out. They're starting on the far side of the race course here. So that, that is the starting point there. Oh, well, they're just arriving down at the starting point on the far side of the track. As far as the point of points later are concerned, it's, a, it's an oval track uh, and it's um, a, a very flat, very fair track. It, it really is pretty flat. I think there's a bit of an incline heading towards the home straight. There are four fences in the home straight and three in the back straight. Clearly, that doesn't matter for these ponies, though, as we and Dark Lad goes through our picture as well. Uh, but uh, that's what everyone's going to be jumping uh, later on in the afternoon. It's quite a, uh, it's a very rural area, as you can imagine, in, uh, in Devon, this, uh, and quite away from uh, any uh, major sort of uh, settlements. And I think people here renowned, it's, it's not massively busy at the moment, but renowned for tearing in at the last minute to make certain that they see the first race of the day. And as you can see, various uh, parts of this point to point uh, are also country fair, so people selling a few bits and pieces from their tents etc but uh, this is the main action as they 
begin to assemble down at the start. So uh, just to be clear for this, this is kindly sponsored by Cornish Tractors. This Cornish Tractors 138 centimetres and under novice riders race for qualified riders who at the start of the season haven't won an open point to point or an open pony club race, a novice race nor an intermediate race and who've never taken part in the race course series. So those uh, with these riders are having to just make absolutely certain to tick all the boxes there and it's for qualified ponies which haven't won or been placed second in any point to point open uh, open point to point open pony club or open race course race since new year's day 2020 combinations must have qualified as per the regulations and uh, the great thing about pony racing in in britain these days which has really taken off over the last what decade or, uh, or so, I suppose, maybe a little bit longer, is, uh, yeah, it'd be longer than a decade, but the last two decades. The, the great thing is that as well as getting the opportunity to take part in races, these young riders, many of whom have gone on to ride in races proper, Tom Marquand's one that jumps straight into the mind, somebody doing particularly well on the flat now, who started in, I'm, I wouldn't have thought necessarily at Upcut Cross, but has um, taken part in pony races around particularly the Midlands, you know, they've learnt their trade, they've learnt the skills of race riding and also the regulatory side of things. So uh, every, the first thing I saw actually when arriving on the race course this morning was uh, the uh, riders being taken round uh, by more experienced ex-jockeys to uh, have a good look at the track and uh, to uh, d discuss it, discuss any issues they might have. They've also, they do all the, well, obviously the colours and the helmets, etc., that you can see uh, from our pictures here, but uh, also the weighing out, etc., in the paddock, talking to connections, all that kind of thing. So it's a, a really good part of learning and magnificent. There are so many uh, riding in, in Britain today, uh, so many uh, jockeys or point-to-point -point riders who have started in this particular sphere. So they're gathering at the start. Set the second division sort of follows straight on, same distance. Again, it's Cornish Tractors, uh, which is sponsoring, and it's 148 centimetres and uh, under an open race, that particular race. So uh, we will bring you coverage of that. If you've been able to join us for these pony races at Upcut Cross this afternoon, we're part of the live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area from the South Tetcot point-to-point. Uh, -point. Uh, the second of the two that take place at Upcut Cross during the season and uh, in fact this is a, a finale as far as the live streams are concerned but uh, over the last few months we've been as wide apart as Dunsmore uh, close to uh, between Tiverton and Exeter we've been to Fleet Park we've been here before we've been to Cherry Brook uh, we've been to Great Trithew as well so We've been uh, getting around around Devon and Cornwall. If I've missed out your favourite, then I apologise for that. Uh, Wade Bridge, we've certainly been to Wade Bridge as well a couple of times. Uh, Buckfast Lee as well. Uh, and uh, now we're at Upcut Cross. Right, the contenders for the pony race about to get underway. Mark Dennis will describe this one for us. Failing to uh, join the group as they... Uh reach the line so flag still up then So it's looking a little more hopeful. Wayne Dark Lad uh, is the one that's uh, almost uh, trying to plant and is very reluctant to uh, to face up to the starter.
So we're still under orders. And the flag is down then. So he has let them go this time. And Wayne Dark Lab was the one that was uh, just uh, hesitated on the start there. And uh, just lost about a dozen or so lengths on the group, main group. Then his dance alone then leads the uh, charge away from the start with Avalon Dancer. A half length down in second. Little replacements about two lengths off of the two leaders then. And another three lengths then back to pop it. And uh, one dark lad has reduced the deficit uh, and is up to within about eight or maybe ten lengths of the uh, uh, main group of four then. But they uh, continue their journey up the back straight. And it is uh, Avalon Dancer now who's taken over and goes on by a by about a half length to dance alone. Little replacements uh, uh, just made a length or two on the uh, front two as they uh, continue on then to the top of the top of the back straight and uh, Poppets around about six lengths off of the leading trio now and another uh, ten lengths then back to one dark lad. So they lead the back behind them then and uh, begin the turn at the uh, far end and Avalon Dancer uh, with the advantage. Gone about four or five lengths clear now of uh, Dance Alone and uh, Little replacements, uh, another length back in three, but Bruce Vaughan on uh, Avalon Dancer leads the charge around the uh, fence at the top of the home straight then and uh, sets sail for home now. Three or four lengths clear then of Dance Alone in second, being tackled by Little Replacement. Little Replacement looking to uh, go into second on the inside of Dance Alone. They've gone clear then a pop it and one dark lad still the back marker. But on the run inside the final two furlongs now and Avalon Dancer and Bruce Vaughan uh, are uh, well clear. They're five or six lengths clear of Little Replacement back in second. Dance Alone is three. So on the uh, run inside the uh, final half furlong then it's going to be uh, Avalon Dancer and Bruce Vaughan to take this 138 and under in fine style in the end clear from little replacement dance alone's next then pop it and uh, one dark lad now pushed down to the line and uh, stylishly by Louis Burke he's done very well to uh, get this pony around he was very unhelpful at the start so well done Louis So uh, the first race has gone to Avalon Dancer. Avalon Dancer winning that in good style under Bruce Vaughan beating Little Replacement and Catherine Sprake has run another good race, Dance Alone, Pop It and win Dark Lad and Lewis Burke certainly uh, n n not necessarily being massively helped by the pony but determined that uh, that one was, con was going to do as well as possible. I'll tell you what, we might don't really want to see me, do you? you want to see the, the ponies? So let's see if we can actually uh, have a look at the uh, ponies in the uh, paddock here after uh, their successes. We'll try and do that in just a second and we'll give you some runners as well for the Cornish tractors. Uh, 148 centimetres and under open race. Let's just get confirmation. So... So just uh, being confirmed behind me that uh, Avalon Dancer and Bruce Vaughan have won that race and they're coming back into the uh, winner's enclosure behind me. And uh, there we are. Let's see if we can uh, just pick up uh, the, uh, the winner there in the yellow and the green striped colours. While uh, we keep on looking at, there we are over there. Just getting confirmation of the runners for, for the next race. Yeah, I'll, we'll do that in a second. Otherwise, if we eavesdrop, we'll be there forever. Uh, but um, there we are, our winner on the just about, just going out of the left-hand side of our picture. And uh, hopefully we'll just return. Where, where are you? The winner. We want to, we want to applaud you, sir. Uh, and uh, that will uh, be 
in the winner's enclosure any second. Now, there we are. There we are. Uh, and our floor manager, Rita, making certain that she's getting all the info as well. So, um, well done to Avalon Dancer, which has won our first pony race this afternoon. My experience of these pony races is technically, I think there is a race time, but the, this one will normally just uh, gallop on in just a few moments' time. Uh, we'll go into the second pony race. Well, we're continuing to admire our first winner. Let's tell you that the first race proper... We haven't got uh, any decks yet. They haven't been, uh, in fact, the closing time for decks haven't been made yet. But we've got the Race or Garage, Devon and Cornwall area conditions race that uh, kicks off proceedings at 2 o'clock for the Dick England Memorial Trophy. And just, uh, you're probably hearing the loudspeaker behind me uh, here saying that uh, the uh, declarations for that first race will close shortly. And that is the uh, conditions race. Uh, and we'll have news of that. We, there were, what, five entries. Uh, we'll have uh, news uh, of that in a few moments' time. Well, I was talking earlier on about the fact uh, that uh, the, the, the riders taking part in these two pony races, literally the first thing I saw on arrival at Upcut Cross uh, this morning was uh, the various riders uh, going off with a, a very experienced uh, um, veteran, uh, now retired jockey in Roddy Green, who's uh, been good enough to join us on the live stream. Now, I, I love the way that, because uh, you, you do this quite a lot, don't you? You, yeah. you walk, walk the course. So is it, is it to calm nerves? Is it to point things out? What, how would you... Um... Oh, it's, it's just to point things out to them, because uh, they a lot of them haven't ridden here before. A, a, a variety of the courses, they wouldn't have been here before. So and I've, I've been coming here for a long time, so I know the course. So I can just sort of make sure no, no, no mistakes are made, basically, that's all. So what sort of, what, name me one thing in particular you might have said, well, be careful here or... Yeah, the, the odd time, you could, the odd course where, where there's sometimes you have to, um, generally the, the, these courses are set out such they're, they're on the outside of the courses, but the odd time you get, a, you, you'll have a fence that you have to go bypass a different place. Right. And you know, make sure they get, they get that right and, and just generally that they understand what they're doing and that they're happy and comfortable to ride, to ride the race and hopefully do okay. A few nerves as well? or um... uh, Sometimes, yeah. But most of these are fairly seasoned. They're, yeah. they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, so hopefully they'll go on and, and they'll have all the futures in the sport. That's what it's all about. And this, I was just trying to work out when this whole thing in Britain took off. What, 10, 15 years ago did it really? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And, you know, I, I named Tom Marquand as yeah. an obvious person who's sure. graduated. But there are... Um, there, there are a lot, aren't there, that once upon a time might have well have been having a guided tour with you or one of your colleagues around a place like Upcut Cross. Well, to be honest, I don't think this. this I don't think I, 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 to my knowledge, there wasn't. It isn't as good as it is now. Back if you, when it first started. Yeah. But now you have um, people like myself trying to help the young lads go forward and, and do well, and we will even get them on the simulators and get to, get them really into the, the riding before they even they come here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and they have to. I love the fact they have to. They have to weigh out. They have to talk to connections. Yeah, even yeah. It might well be yeah. their parents. Absolutely, and the yeah. tack. Presumably, you have to make absolutely certain that. Well, I, we'll do a tack check in a second anyway. Um, right. But you know, that's something else they'll learn anyway. Mm. They're only. Really, they're very little. Mm. Um, and some of the ponies are quite highly strung, so it's just a case of. Um, getting it all done properly so they have a good safe race round really and did you do pony racing once upon a time in ireland in ireland yeah it's pretty yeah. rough and ready mind <laughs> it's pretty rough did that suit you uh it didn't matter but yeah. over, and over there they, they use whips and everything and of course right. it, as a kid you don't you don't even have to and use it bet betting it was yeah massively yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it flapping yeah. basically yeah but it's yeah. very rough so, um, so this this is a lot more organized and a more regulated a lot more organized you have no whips um they learn a lot more whereas ireland there was it was very rough mm. obviously some big names came from it but i mean yeah including yourself well yeah but yeah. It's, it's just uh it's great it's a great start for these kids it's a great yeah. start for them because it gets them into the pointing if they're they go that way mm. someone will stay on the flat anyway it's yeah. a great start for them i just I wish there was more of it really yeah though there's quite a lot there is a lot yeah but yeah. i think this season i noticed it was a later start this season yeah normally with an earlier start um, so hopefully next season things will be yeah i hope to... so i hope so it gets back to normal because it's a great start for the kids and it's um and it's seven furlongs 1400 meters yeah this, this race is longer be, you've got, uh, this one's a bit longer is it yeah the next this, one? this is mile and, mile and two i think it's right. we, start, we do twice right. past the post so but but they have to be on their they have to be on their metal don't they well they've got to ride a race so the longer the distance the, the better they can ride a race and think about it and calm down a bit more you know so mm. it, it develops the brain to, 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 to be to race ride better mm. yeah. excellent well look they're in the paddock already for yeah. the next. You well, better go and right. check tack. Thanks well, very much thanks very much. Cheers. to uh, Roddy Green, who's uh, with us on the live stream, this live stream, uh, the latest of the live streams presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area. 
uh, and we're at Upcut Cross if you're just with us on the most beautiful May afternoon. A little bit of a breeze in the air, but a really lovely sunny afternoon. And as you can probably see behind me, uh, ponies arriving for our second of the two pony races. Uh, and uh, that is coming up, well, uh, coming up shortly. Not absolutely certain when, but, but uh, once they got themselves organised, they'll make their way to the start. And then we'll have uh, Division 2 of the Cornish Tract is 148 centimetres and under open race. And uh, it has just been pointed out to me quite correctly that number five, Lady Moondancer, is being ridden by Bruce Vaughan, who's looking for a famous double uh, here this afternoon. And uh, Bruce is, I think Bruce's brother led up in the first race, and this time it's his dad uh, who is leading up to a real family affair uh, for the Vaughans. And Bruce himself, what is he, a nephew of, uh, of Tim Vaughan? Um, Tim Vaughan, two of whose horse boxes I passed on the M4 motorway yesterday. And at one stage I did think, how on earth has this managed to get past me? And then I realised there were, there were two. Um, anyway, um, we've got uh, jockeys up now uh, for our second race uh, here. I wonder uh, who's going to fo follow Avalon Dancer, which was successful in the first race. And there is, uh, in the same colours, uh, number five, Lady Moon Dancer. She's a, a four-year-old mare. Uh, and uh, she's ridden by Bruce, who's 12, 12 years old, and as we were saying, Dad leading up uh, this afternoon. And there's another of our contenders here, Red Hot Chili, who doesn't look red hot at all, does she? She looks very calm and happy about life in those uh, colours, which are jolly nearly... In fact, looking, looking, looking from a distance, I thought, my goodness, Lock Song's come to the races. Or one of the um, brilliant Jeff Smith horses, alcohol-free maybe. But uh, obviously the cap's a little bit different. Same colours, easy to pick out the purple and uh, the, the light blue. Over there, Shotgun Mini. Shotgun Mini being ridden by Billy Broomfield. Billy, who's uh, 14 years old. And uh, we've got... Uh, we've got um, we've got uh, in the red and white colours All over the there. And declaration times will be pushed back by half an hour. Oh, all races All have been pushed back half an hour here. I suspect that's because of the traffic. So that is that is the the news from here this afternoon that we're going to get this pony race. Then we are going to have a bit of a gap because the racing has been put back half an hour, and I think that will be. In fact, I'm 99.99% certain that'll be uh, because of the traffic on the nearby A30. In our uh, picture there, in the red and white colours, Class Act Annie, ridden by Ryan Corcoran, his dad leading up as well. Liam Corcoran, you remember, as a uh, conditional rider. So um, I'll tell you what, I'm sure, our, I'm sure our graphics department are all ready with uh, that, this thought anyway, but uh, we will... You will see a, a, gra a graphic up on the live stream before too long saying that all races have been put back half an hour. So um, uh, that will be the first will be at 2.30 and then at 35 minute distances after that. So gradually making their way out onto the track. It, it's good that not all of them are absolutely, it looks as though it's uh, class act Annie possibly. Just not been completely cooperative because that's another part of, of the whole aspect of, uh, of riding that uh, they have to learn. And uh, that class act Annie, eventually she's on her way. Uh, there's uh, Off Your Pop uh, with Archie Pierce. Pierce. And actually, did, talking of those that aren't being 100% cooperative today, and I think Bruce, who, ro who rode the first winner, is probably having to learn a little bit with the um, second of his mounts because a couple of them, Lady Moon Dance around off your pop, are not actually all that enthusiastic about popping off to the start. There's uh, Red Hot Chili, who's a little bit more chilled, and they will gradually be make, making their way to the start. So, as they do make their way to the start for the second race, if you are following uh, all the uh, action from Upcut this afternoon. Let me uh, tell you that uh, every race is going to be put back half an hour uh, and we will make uh, certain that um, 
we will make certain that um, we have all the news for you as the afternoon goes on. So making their way to the start for the first, first of our pony, uh, second of our pony races, and thanks again to Cornish Tractors for their support of this race. So, so uh, runners, runners just, just giving their final, final checks check down, down at the uh, top end of the course.
So Alexis Elro almost ready now. Starter just picked up his flag and uh, just asking the, uh, the runners to organise themselves to uh, face up to the start. So flag is up then. We're under orders. One or two a little keener than the, the others to uh, get underway. So they're going to take uh, one more turn. Lady Moondancer looks to be a bit of a handful at the moment. So flag is still up then. We're still under orders. So uh, they look like they've turned and all facing in the right direction now and they're away. But unfortunately, we have lost Lady Moondancer at the start. Unseated uh, uh, Bruce Vaughan. So no double today for Bruce, I'm afraid. So we're back to four then. They've got uh, a circuit and a third uh, roughly to race over. So up front is Red Hot Chili. And... Uh, Ella Buttery, who have got the lead. They're a couple of lengths clear then of uh, Off Your Pop. He shows in a clear second. Shotgun Mini is uh, three, and uh, Class Act Annie, uh, the back marker. And then around about uh, ten lengths off the leader then. As they pass the judge, they've got a circuit ahead of them to race in this 148s and, and over uh, uh, open. So uh, Red Hot Chili. Takes them down to the bottom de bend then. About five or six lengths clear then of off your pop in second. And Archie Pierce, another five or six lengths back then to Shotgun Mini. And another four then to Class Act Danny. As they uh, uh, leave the uh, bottom bend behind them and uh, begin their run up the, uh, the back straight. And uh, it is uh, Red Hot Chili with a healthy lead now, just uh, steadied a little bit the leader now. So leads around about four or five lengths over off your pop. Two more off to uh, Shotgun Mini, and uh, Class Act Danny continues to uh, be the back marker, and uh, around about a dozen or so lengths adrift of the leader then. And the gallops just settle down a little bit now as they reach the halfway point in the back straight. So Red Hot Chili and Ella Buttery. Uh, Ella looks over her shoulder and it's going to see she's still got about six or seven lengths in hand over off your pop, who's bit now being challenged on the outside by Class Act Danny and on the inside uh, by uh, uh, Shotgun Mini. But uh, they now prepare then to uh, leave the back straight and uh, race around the bend at the top end of the course. One circuit almost completed then for these 148s. So Red Hot Chili leads back to around about four or five lengths now. Or over Off Your Pop, Class Act Danny now goes into uh, second at the expense of Off Your Pop. And uh, Shotgun Mini, the back marker of the four then as they begin their run down the home straight then uh, for the final time inside the uh, final three furlongs now and uh, Red Hot Chili been pretty brave uh, so far as uh, led from flagfall Ella Buttery looks over her shoulder and is going to see that uh, Class Act Danny is the chief danger now and comes up on the outside sweeps around the outside and uh, goes up to take a lead now also finishing fast is Shotgun Mini but it's Class Act Danny then with the uh, about two or three length lead under the close finishing uh, Shotgun Mini but Class Act Danny uh, driven out well to the line from Shotgun Shotgun Mini, uh, Red Hot Chili is next, and then finally we have Off Your Pop. There we are with Class Act Annie in the red colours, getting a well-deserved pat down the neck. No, we'll just stick with Class... Yeah, there we are in the red and white colours. Uh, Class Act Annie, Ryan Corcoran, age 14. 
remember his dad Liam riding as a well as a j professional jockey and uh, looks like a chip off the old block we might try and have a word with uh, Ryan in a few moments time drama at the start when Lady Moondancer unseated the rider I think had said beforehand that uh, she didn't look as though she was 100% happy uh, about life and then she's actually taken a bit of catching on the track as well uh, but um, the good news is she, she, she was fine and uh, one of the, one of the uh, outriders on the track was chasing after her which actually wasn't having the desired effect it was just making her tear off even, even quicker uh, there's our third horse Red Hot Chili coming in with uh, Ella Buttery 12 year old Ella, well done to her and there's our winner though right in the centre of picture now and that's uh, proud dad Liam uh, is he on the phone? Yeah, Aidan O'Brien, like he's on the phone, uh, no doubt, uh, chatting to connections. Yeah, we've done it, and um, we've done it again because Ryan's had a been around uh, for a bit, plenty of experience, and good to see. She was just a, she was a tiny bit reluctant, actually, class act, Annie, about going out onto the track. But, um, you know, once the business side of things got underway, then uh, she was she was off and running. And uh, our floor manager there, Rita, already giving the young rider his instructions, which might well be come and talk on the live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area uh, after you've received your prize. Let's uh, just bring you bang up to date. Uh, if you are following it, and I hope you to follow the point-to-point -point racing during the afternoon, racing's been put back half an hour. Uh, that's uh, because of traffic on the A30. That's the main road from one of the main roads from Devon into Cornwall. And it was quite busy when I came up it at 10 o'clock this morning. And I imagine, especially on a lovely day at the, on the eve of, or with half term now underway, uh, I dare say uh, that that is particularly busy, that, that A30. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mop up uh, these two pony races for you and uh, bring you, well, confirm the news, which is that uh, Class Act Annie and Ryan Corcoran won the second division whereas Avalon Dancer and Bruce Vaughan uh, won the first division of the pony races just see if we've got anyone to have a chat to in a second and then uh, we're, we're going to uh, leave you be for for a bit and but we'll be back when the racing starts so uh, the first race was scheduled for two o'clock but that's now going to be at 2 30 and then everything's Put back half an hour so just to run through the races later on the race hill garage devon and cornwall uh area conditions races the first of those races at uh 2 30 now but before we talk about that let's uh, say congratulations uh to ryan corcoran i said our floor manager was giving her, him his instructions to uh, come and have a word on the live stream and, and here is ryan congratulations well done yes thank you very much uh, what, how much uh, that that uh, Put the fun to one side. How 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 big a test was that for you for you, for you and your mount today? Um, did you feel? Well, we know she stays, and the further she was going, the better she was getting. And she had was a bit in front, so we didn't want to hit the front too soon. But when you do, you got to kick on, and yeah. no, she went away in one. So. And you, if you don't mind me saying, you're looking very stylish. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so have you have you worked hard on uh, on every aspect? We were hearing from Roddy Green earlier on. You've walked the course today, and you've done all the. The weighing out and the tack checks, etc. So there's there's plenty to do, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the yard every morning and up for Roddy's, and he's helping loads. So. Right. So you know you know him well. Yeah. Yeah. And your dad was a was a professional jockey. jockey. Yeah. Yeah. So and I saw him leading up and give, giving a few instructions as well. Yeah. And uh, even more impressive, he was on the phone afterwards, Aidan O'Brien, like you know, on the <laughs> phone to uh, to, uh, to say what the what the result was. So how good, is, you know, you, you've you've done that. That how many wins is that for you now? Uh, that's my fourth. Now. Fourth. So how good does it feel when it when it all works out? Yeah, no, brilliant. Yeah, I bet it does. Really I bet it does. Well, look, it's quite a warm day. I better let you take your your helmet off. No, thanks. Uh, and congratulations, and they probably got a trophy for you as well. So, uh, yeah. uh, well done. Lovely to see you, and best of luck with the future as well. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks to uh, Ryan Corcoran, who's uh, joining us on the live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point to point area. So, I will just go through the uh, races that are coming up for you. So. Bearing in mind that we're being put back by half an hour, 
the race or garage, Devon and Cornwall area, conditions race level two is the first now at 2.30. It would be interesting to see if Minimalistic is here to take part in that one. Um, then second race, the Giffords Chartered Accountants Restricted Race uh, was scheduled for 2.35, now be 3.05. Uh, Champions Hill is one of the entries in that race. Grove Ash, another of, in of interest. Liberty Rock as well. Um, plenty of uh, horses entered nine entries in that particular race. Then a couple of uh, open races uh, for us. The Simpkins Edwards Mixed Open Race. Uh, that uh, was scheduled for 3.10, now 3.40, uh, and uh, that one uh, is a mixed open with some a whole lot of really interesting contenders. I wonder whether Freddie Gordon will be uh, down here uh, with Captain Bucks, uh, but there are other horses like Dr Rhythm was entered in the race uh, as well. Eric the Third uh, is a, a favourite of lots of people, famous Clermont is in there as well. Minimalistic entered in that one. River Myth, she's a bit of a legend, isn't she? 16 letters, Sykes and Virac as well, also amongst the entries. Uh, the entries haven't had to be declared yet, so we'll get news fairly soon of, uh, of those entries. Then the Dunbeer mixed open race for novice riders, race four. So that was scheduled for 3.45. It'll now be at 4.15, uh, and uh, several of the horses mentioned already entered in that one, but uh, specifically for novice riders so uh, uh, an interesting race there kindly sponsored by Dunbeer West Devon uh, for the Hilda Wallace and Mike Drown Memorial Challenge Trophy and then uh, race five probably now be at 10 to 5 the PRJ Engineering Maiden Condition Stakes uh, and uh, a few interesting contenders in that and then we round off the afternoon technically I know it's a word that's not used very often these days, but technically there are enough entries to divide, I think, if, um, if, if, that, uh, if enough of them wanted to have a go. Uh, we'll find out later on whether that's the case or not. It's the FC Cleaning Systems maiden race. It was scheduled for 4.55, now at 5.25, and lots of interesting contenders in that particular race as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, give one more big name check to our two Pony race winners, uh, Bruce Vaughan, age 12, winning on Avalon Dancer. Uh, that was in the first of the two pony races, over seven furlongs. And then over 10 furlongs, mile and a quarter, uh, the one four centimetres and under open race, won by Class Act Annie and Ryan Corcoran. So applause for them. Well done to them. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, we're going to uh, thank our lucky stars that we didn't get stuck on the A30. Uh, and that we're not in a real lava now trying to get to the races. Uh, if you are, and I know you can, uh, by clicking on the link on the, uh, on the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point uh, -point website, uh, pointingdc.co.uk, you can actually uh, uh, see uh, the, uh, the action from here uh, via, the, um, via your, foot, your device or whatever in your car. Well, if you were able to do that with the pony races, congratulations. We're very grateful. Uh, if you're on your way here, it's a beautiful afternoon. We look forward to seeing you soon. First race now at half past two. See you then. And, and second is Catherine Spray, riding Little Replacement. Well done, well done, Catherine. And third, we've got Lowen Cruise Mills riding Dance Alone. Well done, well done, Lowen. A great ride. And fourth, who had the best turned out, this is Nicole Connor. And Nicole was riding Poppet. Well done. Well done, you. Ryan gets the goblet gift and two rosettes from Cornish Tractors. And second is Billy Broomfield riding Shotgun Mini. Well done, Billy. Great riding. Absolutely great. 
and number third was Ella Buttery riding Red Hot Chili, who also had best turned out and absolutely well done. Fourth, Archie Pierce riding Off Your Pop. What a fantastic ride Archie had. And then fifth, we have Lady Moon Dancer ridden by, and then fifth, we have Lady Moon Dancer ridden by, was it Bruce again? Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Guys, if we could all come in for a photograph, that would be absolutely fantastic. And thank you very much for racing here at Upcombe Cross with the South Tanker. We've really enjoyed your presence. Again, uh, the South Tet Cup point to point live stream is underway. Again, we're running half an hour late, uh, and that's uh, not because of any dramas here, but uh, dramas away from here on the A30, the, the main road from Devon into Cornwall, which and Cornwall into Devon, which uh, is not too far away and is very busy, as you might uh, imagine, on this Saturday uh, before half term, uh, before half term proper, so to speak. So, uh, as a result, racing has been put back half an hour. The first race is now at 2.30, and then it's plus 30 minutes for everything as the afternoon goes on. There were just that many uh, horses and jockeys and trainers and owners, and, and indeed um, uh, racegoers, stuck on the A30, or it was moving at absolute snail's pace, moving about as quickly as some of my selections. Uh, so, uh, as a result... They uh, made that decision. We have, though, had two races here already, and I hope those involved aren't stuck the other way around on the A30. We've had the two pony races already. Success for Avalon Dancer and Bruce Vaughan, age 12 years old, in the first of the two divisions. And uh, these guys are meant to be learning from all this kind of stuff. Bruce was uh, brought back down to earth after that uh, success, quite literally, when his mount in the second pony race unseated him at the start. The race eventually won by Class Act Annie, a fourth success for jockey Ryan Corcoran, aged 14. So well done to all involved. I hope they've managed to catch Lady Moondancer now. She was determined not to be caught after unseating her rider, uh, but uh, everyone was okay. Pride a little bit dented, but apart from that, everyone absolutely fine and uh, look forward to seeing the Bruce Vaughans and the Ryan Corcorans of this world and indeed many of the other riders taking part in those two pony races in the future perhaps here at Upcut Cross or indeed perhaps somewhere in the Devon and Cornwall point to point area or indeed uh, somewhere in British racing whether on the flat or over jumps. Yeah, this is Upcut Cross. We're not too far away from the town of Oakhampton, not too far away from the A30, that dual carriageway, which is very slow today on the most beautiful afternoon. A little bit of breeze around, but literally, oh, there are a few, uh, a few uh, white cloud, fluffy white clouds over uh, to my right-hand side. But apart from that, the only Apart from the blue, the only colour in the sky is uh, those streams associated with aircraft uh, perhaps going in or out of Exeter Airport. Uh, my name's Cornelius Lysett. You're very uh, welcome to this live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area, the latest of the live streams presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area. All details, as always, on the website, which is Pointing DC, D as in Devon, C as in Cornwall, pointingdc.co.uk. And we're delighted to be here uh, this afternoon for what uh, looks like a six-race programme. Uh, the ground described midweek as good to soft. It'll be drying out a little bit, but... Uh, Certainly a couple of trainers who've walked the course said they're 100% satisfied with it and uh, saying, well, you've got to run here because it is unlikely as we uh, creep into June next Wednesday that uh, there'll be ground quite as good as this uh, for the remaining fixtures of the season. Still some more Bratton Down to come and some Umberley as well in the Devon and Cornwall area, other point-to-points around the country as well. So uh, you were looking there at the programme of races which are taking place 
during this afternoon here and I think our caption people can press a button cleverly and uh, give us that caption once again uh, which will be up on your screens any second now the first race now at uh, 2.30 the Race Hill Garage Devon and Cornwall area conditions race and we know the runners uh, for this race number two Artemis Rocks doesn't go but the others do and that is the schedule for the afternoon so that's the new post time uh, on all of the races everything plus 30 minutes start with that conditions race uh, in about 25 minutes 20 minutes time well oh, just over a quarter of an hour now uh, then 305 a restricted uh, race uh, the Simpkins Edwards mixed open race at 335 that looks if we had a decent number of uh, contenders there some really interesting hopefuls in that one then the Dumbia mixed open race for novice riders race four the PRJ Engineering Maiden Conditions Race, Race 5, and the FC Cleaning Systems Maiden Race, over two and a half miles. So everything over three miles bar uh, our final event of the day, that one over two and a half miles, uh, offering us a, a really interesting uh, alternative to the three-mile race for that maiden. So that is all coming up as the afternoon goes on and I don't know uh, uh, whether we've actually got confirmation from the declarations clerk of the four I know it is four for the first race and we will have that as a caption for you uh, very shortly but uh, as you can see few people gathering already around uh, the uh, 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 around the uh, bookmakers there and there are some trade stands also uh, behind those people gathering around uh, the paddock so um, Plenty of the, the fun of the fair at the South Tech at Point to Point at uh, Upcut Cross today. There's an alternative view. This is the most beautiful part of Britain. Uh, we're in the southwest of England. We're in North Devon, not too far away from Oakhampton. The Cathedral City of Exeter is about uh, just under an hour away, something like that. And that is uh, looking, that particular camera is looking uh, over towards us because I think. That uh, union flag that you could see there marks the finishing line. But uh, our technical team showing off the cameras that we have available to us uh, this afternoon. And uh, there is the first of the runners uh, in the paddock. Uh, and that is Minimalistic, who's going to be odds on favourite, I guess, uh, for this race. Minimalistic. Trained by uh, Sue Dark, owned by the, the Darks themselves, ridden by Josh Newman. And what a good horse he is. He was a course and distance winner here of the restricted race three years ago. But he's been terrific this season. He's a 10-year-old, 10-year-old by definite article. And you can see he was pulled up last time, but two wins uh, before that. Uh, qualified via the Modbury Harriers. And uh, he came back after more than 18 months in January at Buckfast Lee. He's been in pretty good form since then. There was a very decent second at Great Trithew in a Grenadier mixed open in February and a, a comprehensive success in an intermediate at the First Fleet in April. The PU last time was when probably a little bit out of his depth. Didn't jump great in the intermediate level race on the Hunter's Evening at Cheltenham. So that is Minimalistic who is here and raring to go. And uh, Simon Knott, who's our, our betting guy, will be with us very shortly to update as far as the betting is concerned. In fact, he is uh, joining us uh, now. Simon, good afternoon. Hope, uh, hope you're well. Yes, very well. Uh, ju just uh, going on about minimalistic, how much we like minimalistic. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, he's going to be a pretty short price, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's been four to six. He's now two to five. It's the only one they've backed. Even Granville, the form man's backed it. So uh, that's the one. I mean, uh, Al Moralta. Is that normally a very good, is that very good, a very good indicator? Very good sign. Everybody that's a shrewd is on this one. Uh, Amor Alto is 3-1 to out to 9-2. to two. Asa Lady is out to 5-2. to two. Five gold bars is the outside of the field at 7-1. to one. And Minimalistic is now eyes on 2-5. to five. I, what, Eyes why? Eyes on. What that that's mean? the tic-tac. Oh, right. That's the slang for it. Take it yeah, from the so, tic-tac. Oh, right. Eyes on. Eyes right. on. Yeah, okay. Excellent, super. Well, minimalistic, looking uh, looking terrific uh, in the uh, paddock there, and uh, we'll have the other 
I know you're the owner, sir. I'll tell you what, if you're the owner, sir, you come lean over so you can you can talk in our talk into our microphone, um, the owner. So this is Edward Dark, who's who's here. I'm gonna move that a bit closer to you. Fine, thank you. So um, Odds on favourite with a horse who's, who's done you proud this uh, uh, this year, hasn't he? He has indeed. Yeah, we're very, very fortunate to have such a lovely horse, you know, that uh, he's won twice on the second, and he's, we've had five with him, five wins all together with him. Very proud. And and as well, we do all the work ourselves, myself and the wife. Yeah. Oh, do you? Yeah. So yeah. What, what's he like as a horse to deal with? He's a strong lad. <laughs> he's a strong lad. <laughs> Is that lad. a euphemism for saying he's, got, he's strong-minded? He's, no, he's a strong lad, but he's very, very sensible. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, excellent. Yeah. And he's a, it was a few years ago now, but he's won on the track here in the past. He has he? indeed. He won, he the, won the next race, I think, on today's card. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I say we've had a lot of fun with them. Yeah, and, and he we went to Cheltenham we, last time. Was he just swimming in the deep end a bit? Not really. Things didn't go right that day. From from t- time we left home, you know, unfortunately he got cast in the box the night before. Oh. Yeah, and uh, well, so it was I say, a bit touch and go whether you'd even run. It was indeed. It was right. indeed. Yeah, but nevertheless, it was a marvelous experience. Yeah. Had you uh, had runners at uh, Cheltenham before? No, never. Oh, ne- right. Never been. Uh, so I you're say, standing in that famous paddock on that famous turf. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. It was a marvellous experience. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, And I say we do all the training on the farm. Right. Yeah, so we're very fortunate. Well, you're very fortunate. and But, but clearly doing a great job as well. So well, keep congr- fingers crossed. Congratulations. And we might even see you again after the race. Well, we, we wait and see. Excellent. Lovely. Super. Thank well, you lo- very much. Lovely, too. Thank lovely you. to see you. And thanks for coming over to say uh, hello. Uh, so that was Edward Dark and uh, Minimalistic, his odds-on favourite uh, this afternoon. Just to uh, tell you that uh, coming up this afternoon, we're going to be talking in the not-too-distant future to Vinnie Webster. And uh, they had their good success. He had his good success, uh, the latest good success at Stratford last night. We'll talk to Vinnie in just two seconds, but let's just have a look at uh, these, these other horses because we've got four of them in this race. And uh, the one that you can see there is Amore Alato. Holly Pennells will be riding this for the Forkses. Sarah Forks uh, trains uh, the horse. And um, this one qualified via the Tiverton Foxhounds, previously trained by all sorts of people, Dan Skelton, Nick Williams, Johnny Farrelly, and competitive at a decent level. You can re- recall a good run at the Cheltenham Festival. One, one of you as well. Point, uh, point to pointing after a near four uh, year break and solid runs in defeat over the course and distance and also at uh, Treby Dannon. Sarah Fork said to me earlier on, we'll probably finish last, but uh, I, I think she's being uh, overly pessimistic. Somebody's got to finish fourth, uh, and, but um, uh, Amoria Alato not been doing too badly at all this uh, uh, season. And we'll have a quick look uh, before we talk to um, Vinnie. Uh, at uh, what else have we got here? We got um, that's uh, that's still a Mori. Uh, so in front there, with the um, is number four, which is five gold bars. Jockey's just being called to the paddock there. There's five gold bars. Hasn't run um, for a bit. Nine-year-old by Goldwell for the Hawkers. Pam Pangeli uh, owns this one. First run since January 20, when successful in a restricted race. Uh, Buck Fastly, keeping on well to beat the hot favourite on that occasion. And the hot favourite subsequently ran pretty well under rules as well. So it be interesting to see how five gold bars uh, gets on. Been off, uh, off the track for a bit. Um, so uh, looking forward to seeing that one. And our other contender is number three, which is Ask the Lady. Seven-year-old mare. And uh, there she is. I can see her. Number three, Ask the Lady by Ask, trained by Dean Summersby for Tony and Eileen Worth. Plenty of promises are maiden in 2020. Returned after a long break in January at Weybridge, finished fifth, and since then has been going pretty well. There is a walkover in there, but the second, the time before last, in a restricted race at Treby Dan and conceding weight was solid and most recently hacked up in uh, a race at South Hill. So we'll uh, pick them up again in a few moments' time. But um, before we do that, let's uh, reflect on racing last night uh, and its connection uh, to us here uh, this afternoon at uh, Upcut Cross. Because last night, I'm just getting the result up on my phone to be absolutely positive about all the details. But last night at Stratford at 8.05, 
Come and join us, Vinny. A horse called Say About It uh, was successful in the Llewellyn Humphreys restricted point-to-point -point novices hunt and chase. And the man who was in the saddle last night is now here to be in the saddle. Are you uh, so you haven't, you, been celebrating, okay? you haven't been celebrating all no, night, then? No, no, I come back here today again, <laughs> so we said we wouldn't do anything last night. Excellent. And you, you beat my friend Luke Harvey's horse. Yeah, well, look, they're all there to be beaten. It's a horse race. <laughs> I'm sure Luke could take the same view. Yeah, well, that's it, exactly. Like, no, it's good. It's, it's like especially good for Roy, like... It's, it's the only horse he's got. He's been running them all season. He's had seven runs and now. And he puts life and soul into it. Oh, he it? loves it. It's a big family thing. Like his own mother rides it out. She's in her late seventies now, and he's just a nice horse to have around. Like he's yeah. what seven runs this season. He's won three now, and he's not he's placed and all the others. Like so, he's he's been a good servant to Roy. He's been a good servant to me, to be honest. And didn't we we chatted, didn't we, at Fleet the other day? Yeah, that's it. Was, the last yeah. time I spoke to you. Have actually, you had the you, you had the newborn. Yeah, she's here today as well. And, well, I'm pleased she's here because she's <laughs> lucky charm, isn't she's she? She's here today somewhere as well, floating around, yeah. so that's good. So how many winners is it every time I seem to look? There's something good going on. Oh, I think, I think I've had four since I spoke to you last at right. Fleet. Right. So I'm slowly starting to come together now. Oh. So hopefully we can keep going. Like. Yeah, and you know, it's point to points is one thing, but going out to Stratford on one of the biggest stages of the year—that's <laughs> that's something else. That's great. Well, it's just look, it's, it's just one of them. Like you know, it might be a small race, to others, but. It, as far as my well, career, I think all of them are quite decent races, aren't well, they? As, as far as it goes for me, like yesterday, it's, it's, that, that'd be my highest profile winner. Like so, yeah. that yesterday that was basically like my Gold Cup to start me off. Like you know, yeah. so this just gives me a test for more. All you well, want I'm now just is looking more. At the close up <laughs> in the in the racing post. What does it say? Held up in behind leaders, made ground despite jock. No, it doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it says held up in behind leaders, prominent seventh, went third after four out, led after two out, and it's because although it's two out. It strikes me how often horses who are in the lead two out, they stay there at Stratford. Well, to me, the earlier races yesterday, if, I don't know if you were watching yesterday, but the earlier races, like, they went quick and the winners were coming from behind. They weren't they weren't finishing like everyone thought they were going to. Right. And I don't know, it just worked out well for Rice Horse. He was a bit novice throughout with a couple of his fences, which he'll, he'll learn in time, but... That's allowed. He gallops, yeah. you know, and he stays galloping. Yeah. He, he doesn't have much of a turn of foot, but he gallops, like, yeah. so I paid dividend yesterday. And you beat James King as well. Yeah, it was he, good, that's you good. A bit of, bit of banter with him afterwards? No, he's, well, I don't know, he's this time of the year. They're not very happy when they get beat, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think like it any time no, of the year, no, but especially no, but not this time of the year. Especially not this time of year like that. Yeah. Like, you know, I suppose he probably thought he was going to have a winner yesterday. Well, at that odds, yeah. he probably thought he should have, but... Yeah. No, it's just worked out lucky for me in the end. So Excellent. Got, well, look, well done. Thank and you I'm very pleased, much. I'm pleased to remind me of your baby's name. Willow. 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 Yeah. Delighted Willow's here Yeah, she's today. there. How many, have you got, how many have you got this afternoon? Just one today. Just River Myth again. I, oh, won, right. on, I oh. won on her a honeycut the last day. So. And that's a bit, that horse is a bit of a, a, bit of a legend, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, she's, she's a class act. Like, yeah. you know, she's won 12 now and she likes it around here. And which here. one are you in? Novice Riders. Uh, novice Riders open. Yeah. yeah. She likes it around here. She's won around here. Yeah. It's just a good race. Yeah. You know, it's good entries today and good racing today. So fingers crossed we come out on top well good luck to her good luck to you good luck to willow perfect thank you and, very much uh, maybe come and chat later on if well, it goes hopefully well. we'll see you again super Cheers, lovely to uh, lovely to see uh vinnie webster with us and uh, i'll tell you what if i'd if i'd beaten the champion jockey in a race at stratford last night i might have been out all night celebrating rather than coming all the way down here but well done him Get, getting it getting through the traffic uh and being at uh up cross with us this afternoon so if you're with us on the live stream uh, we are we haven't had the first race yet uh, everything's been uh, put back half an hour because of the traffic on the nearby a30 and the amount of horses and owners and trainers and jockeys and stable staff and race goers who were stuck on the uh, on that main road between devon and cornwall cornwall and devon so uh, we start at half past two which is what well yeah we're due to start at half past two but well, the jockeys are in the paddock here, but uh, they're not on their way to the start yet. So might just be a minute or two late. But uh, it is important to try and get as many people in as possible, whether on uh, that side of the fence or on the racing side of the fence. And that's exactly what they have endeavoured to do. Right, we might go back to our camera in the paddock to uh, try and have a further look at uh, some of these horses that uh, are here. We've just got the four for our first race i'll tell you what we'll do that's um just going through our picture there five gold bars i think five gold bars is quite interesting um hasn't run for a bit but uh, but uh, the form stand the for the form stands up did he hear that that is what we're doing jockeys up says the announcer let's go racing and that's exactly uh what we are going to do you just saw minimalistic there's minimalistic on the right the rider josh newman 
in the towards the right of the picture and uh, about to get the leg up on minimalistic and uh, great to hear from the owner Edward Dark earlier on trained by Edward and Sue uh, on their farm the bluer colors that you can see there the pink with the blue that's uh, Amore Alato then uh, quite red looking at um, even though it's green and red isn't it but uh, five gold bars uh, in fact it's green and orange looks quite orange in the sunshine this afternoon and uh, the other ones because I know you like to see the riders and check out the colors that is ask the lady and ask the lady with uh, Darren Edwards Darren Edwards leading rider in uh, these parts and um, on and off for years and prominent in the ratings for this year Rob Hawker going out on five gold bars now that is red I've, the, the sunshine put me off slightly the uh, the pink and the blue of Holly Pennells uh, there the, the back one of those three and then uh, you'll see coming to the picture now the yellow and black of uh, on Josh Newman's back the colors of minimalistic so those are the four the only one that doesn't go in our first race is number two Artemis Rocks and they by the look of it going to give the um, the people in the around the paddock here an extra opportunity to have a good look so they're going to take one more turn Mark Dennis is our commentator uh, this afternoon I don't know if we can do this because I shouldn't really direct the program from on air but is there any way of getting that camera uh, to uh, to give us a position of where our commentator is up on the yeah we're trying to do that right now uh, so our commentator is on a crane like structure in the middle of the track and there he is he, I don't think he can hear us but if I wave at him he may wave back uh, yeah there he is Mark Dennis is our commentator uh, this afternoon thanks to Josh who uh, uh, who uh, took uh, part in that particular piece of direction and that gives you a very good idea just how blue the sky is here so uh, minimalistic going through our picture and we'll have Mark Dennis calling them down to the start afternoon at uh, Upcut Cross and uh, we have six races on the car for you this afternoon. The runners for the first, this is the Race Hill Garage uh, Devon Cornwall Area Conditions Race are on their way out of the paddock and uh, down to the start. The first out we see is number three, Ask the Lady, ridden by Mr. Darren Edwards, purple the yellow triple diamond, hoop sleeves, purple cap with a yellow diamond. Next out is uh, number four, that's five gold bars, ridden by Mr. Robert Hawker, emerald green and red quarters with a red sleeve and an emerald green cap. Following this one down is number five, that's minimalistic, ridden by Mr. Josh Newman, yellow with the black cross belts, armlets and cap. And the uh, final one to go down is number one, that's Amore Alato, uh, ridden by Miss Holly Pennells, and that's pink with the royal blue chevron, half sleeves and cap so for go to post then for the first this is the uh, Devon Cornwall area conditions race uh, they are due away at 2.30 now obviously taking into account the uh, uh, late start so uh, we're about a minute until post time Thanks to Mark. Describing the runners on the way uh, to the starting point, just having a look at uh, the first obstacle. So it's a, uh, a long, thin race course, and uh, they start these three-mile races on the far side of the track. Three fences on the far side of the track, four up the home straight, and they go two and a half times around. So 18 fences to be jumped on good to soft ground. And uh, looking, oh, Simon's here. So Simon, update us on the um, update us on the on the betting. Yeah, minimalistic is a two to five favourite, but one bookmaker showing four to seven. They obviously left him out early, desperate to get it in. So there's value if anybody wants to back it. So a strong favourite in minimalistic in the yellow colours there, just on the right of those three, going to a bit of shade under that tree. This ten-year-old for the darks had a long break, but has come back in spectacularly good form and uh, look at the look at the form figures for uh, minimalistic so far ten, this 10 year old 
by definite article and uh, you know the six was okay the two was very solid the two ones were good as well and then as Edward Dart was telling us when the horse went to the hunter chase evening at Cheltenham nothing quite went right and he got cast in his box the night before he might not have even gone so they say just put a line through that in which case no wonder the horse right in the center of your picture now with beautiful all that forestry behind as well um, that a very strong favorite just on the right hand side of that in the blue and the pink Amore Alato 13 year old for the Foxes has been pretty good in the past uh, it's been it was has been beaten a couple of times since returning to point to pointing but has run all right and that's um, number one Amore Alato two doesn't go three is asked the lady in the purple colors that's just towards the left of your picture as you look at it there trained by Dean Summersby does so well trains this for the worths was a good maiden in 2020 then had a long break came back finished fifth at Wadebridge but Look at um, some of that form since then. A 3 one, two, one. one of the ones that was actually a walkover, but the horse has been really competitive in, in really good order. And the second, the time before last, was a really decent run at uh, Trebudanon. Trotted up last time. And then four is five gold bars in the green and the red quarter colours. Hasn't run for a bit, but has plenty of ability, and that one is just on the right of the picture. So, sounds as though the starter is pretty much ready for them running half an hour late and uh, we've ended up running 32 minutes late which is really considering they were a bit worried about who was going to be able to get here earlier it's a great uh, a great effort flags raised mark dennis will describe the action goes down then somewhere away they jump away from the start then for this uh, conditions race opening race of the afternoon first race of six and uh, the four of them begin uh, take on the first of the 19 fences and they're all over that safely so uh, ask the lady with the early lead and uh, Darren Edwards joined on the outside by uh, Minimalistic Amore Alato he uh, just placed in third under Holly Pennells and uh, five gold bars uh, only just the back marker by about a half length and as they take the turn at the top end of the course uh, on their journey uh, back towards us now so uh, as they do so, as the lady and uh, Darren Edwards, Darren on the 20 winner mark, 21 winner mark for the season, in, not including a hunter chase at Exeter. And uh, they race on, uh, continue down towards us then. Three plain fences to take in the home straight. And uh, Minimalistics now just going on and uh, taking a lead. Goes a couple of lengths clear then of as the lady who races on the inside of Amore Alato. And... Uh, Five gold bars continues as the back marker. So Minimalistic, the favourite. He's uh, two to one on with the bookmakers. Five to two is Asa Lady. Five to one is Amore Alato. And uh, five gold bars. The outsider of them at eight to one as they cross the next end. They're over that safely and now race past the judge with two sackets ahead of them to race. So Minimalistic, a winner of... Uh, a five-pointer points, a double already this season, and a second. Takes them down to the final plane fence in the home straight, and they sail over that. They're all over it safely. And uh, Amore Alato has uh, gone up into second now at the expense of Asa Lady. He goes up onto the heels of Minimalistic as they uh, race right-handed then at the bottom end of the course uh, for the first time. As they uh, now prepare then to... Uh, Race up the back straight, plain fence, open ditch, and then another plain fence to take in this uh, part of the course. A minimalistic goes on then. Got about four, maybe five lengths clear of Amore Alato in second. Ask the ladies two lengths back in three and another two back to uh, five gold, gold bars as they cross the next end. Lovely stride there from uh, minimalistic Josh Newman. Asked him up, jumped it beautifully out in front and continues around about five lengths clear then of Amore Alato as they uh, take the ditch then for the first time in this uh, conditions race. They're all over that safely and uh, continue on past their point of departure now and uh, onwards up to uh, another plane fence. So minimalistic with the lead, around about four, four lengths clear then of Amore Alato on the inside under Holly Pennells. Holly uh, had her first ride only about six weeks ago 
at uh, the Hornicut meeting for the West Somerset and uh, had a second and third, had a third the next day at Bratton Down. So uh, she's opened up her, her count uh, very well for her first season. So they leave the back behind then and begin their turn at the uh, top end of the course and Minimalist has increased his lead. He's around about eight lengths clear now of uh, Amore Alato. That's the lady in behind this and five guard bars continues to uh, whip them in at the back as they cross the next end and again they're all over that safely and uh, race uh, back towards us making a descent uh, down over the hill. Uh, Minimalistic uh, continues as they uh, approach another plane fence as they come to it now and he's jumped that nicely and just his lead's been now uh, dramatically cut they were up to in about uh, a length and a half then of the lead as uh, they continue on down then to what will be the final fence in a circuit's time and uh, they're all over that safely and uh, race away on the level then as they pass the judge circuit left for them to race minimalistic by uh, a length and a half to Amore Alato on the inside of Asa Lady as they make their way down to the uh, final plane fence in the home straight then they're all over that safely all jump it well and now uh, uh, race right-handed at the bottom end of the course so uh, minimalistic two lengths clear then of Asa Lady has gone uh, up back up into second by a by a fraction, by a half length perhaps from Amore Alato on the inside and uh, then a length back then to five gold bars. So they run or make their run up the back straight then uh, for the final time and uh, onwards towards the uh, first plane fence and uh, minimalistic with Amore Alato right up in his inside now up to a half length of the lead Amore Alato and uh, ask the lady uh, just in third on his outside as they uh, make the ditch for the uh, second and final time. Minimalistic got in really tight to that. Just cost him a bit of uh, momentum there. Amora Lato is uh, up on the outside now, up to a half length of the leader and just uh, goes up on the outside to uh, uh, join the leader now. As the lady switched a little bit wider out, five gold bars goes up the, trying to get up the inside. But Minimalistic has uh, just been asked for an effort by Josh Newman and uh, goes on uh, by about a, a half length now to Amora Lato on his outside, joined on the inside by five, five gold bars there, who goes into second under Rob Hawker. Uh, Ask the ladies on the outside, just goes into third now at the expense of Amore Alato. So they take the turn then and begin their run back to us and on towards the third last end. Three out coming up then for Minimalistic. He's out over safely. On the outside, Ask the lady. On the inside, five gold bars. Amore Alato also on the inside into third. So they race then, then to the second last end. Five gold bars. Now serving it up to Minimalistic. These two jump and land together. Better jump there by Minimalistic. And he's now gone clear. He's gone uh, about two, maybe three lengths clear on the run to the final front from five gold bars Amore Alato's back in three so they race down then to the line and it's going to be minimalistic going to score for the third time this season takes it well by around about 10 or 12 lengths in the end of five gold bars the fast finish in Amore Alato and uh, ask the lady will be the final one to finish So, the odds-on favourite uh, successful in our first race, Minimalistic. Just see the other side of uh, that fence from that camera in the yellow colours. And uh, if, if, you had a, if you'd had a big investment at odds-on, it wasn't all plain sailing on the, on the final circuit. It didn't jump the open ditch that brilliantly. And then it looked as though there might be trouble from uh, Rob Hawker on five gold bars. But um, really good jump at the second last 
put it to bed. And there's our winner, number five in the yellow. For the Darks, Edward and Sue Dark, qualified via the Dark Vale, Southpool and Modbury Harriers, trained by Sue Dark, trained on the Darks farm. And uh, you might well have heard Edward, who's there in the blue shirt, on the live stream just before the race, saying you can discount that last run uh, when uh, pulled up on Hunter's Night at Cheltenham. My inclination was to think he was just a bit out of his depth, but it turned out there was a, a good reason for that. He didn't say he had a difficult 24 hours before the race. Might not have even taken part as well, but uh, did take part. And uh, Minimalistic has won that in good style. We'll have some starting prices in, um, in, a, in a second uh, from... Um, uh, I think we'll get some starting prices, will we, uh, from Simon? Uh, what? Uh, it, um, so. Um, yeah, well, the favourites returned two to five, and uh, the second horse, five good bars, was the five to two second favourite. So. Excellent. So the odds on favourite has one. Would there, would there have been a few? Oh, sorry. For, uh, go on. Hang on, no, I've, got that, I've got that wrong. What have you got wrong? Five good bars was eight to one. Eight to one? Yep. Okay. Oh, there we have it. Uh, oh, there we have it on, on the uh, screen. Beautifully done. The official result confirmed then for the Race Hill Garage, Devon and Cornwall area. Conditions race level two, one by number five, minimalistic, ridden by Josh Newman as the five to two on favourite. How many wins is that for Josh uh, this season? 17th winner of the season for Josh, five to two on favourite. BT number four, five gold bars for Rob Hawker at five to two. And third number one, Amori Alato. That's run all right. I was saying to you beforehand that um, Sarah Fawkes has said we'll probably uh, finish last, uh, but absolutely hasn't and has finished in third place. Four ran non-runner number two. As we say once again, uh, hello to the w winning owner, who we didn't know he was the winning owner when he came before, but he was the winning owner as it turned out. It's Edward Darks here again. Well, well done. This horse just continues to do you proud. He does indeed, doesn't he? Get nice and close to the mic, Ed, so we he, can hear Edward. I so say he does indeed, doesn't he? He just bowls along and just loves it. And one good thing with him, he jumps jumps for fun and stays well, doesn't he? That's his big advantage. Stays really well. Yeah. And that jump at the second last, that sealed oh, it, didn't it? Indeed, because, indeed. Because, yeah. let, let's be fair, on the final circuit, there were a couple of times I thought that hawker horse and the hawker horses are running really well. They certainly are. They certainly are. It was a keen little race, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But I say, as you can imagine, we are tickled pink. Yeah. Absolutely, and he's yeah. he's a big he's a big unit, isn't he? He's, he's a big what seventeen one, right? Seventeen one. And yeah. you say he's strong. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. do you ride him? You ride him yourself? Ride him every day myself. Really? Yeah, not bad for eighty year old, is it? Are you eighty? Yeah. All right, you're going to have to start behaving like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh well, that's uh, not today though. Not, not today. Not today. No. no but we, but we, we he's been it. a birthday present for you all year. Yeah, very true. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, well done. That that's great. That's a second win at Upcut for the horse and a third win this season for the that's horse. That's correct, sir. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, look, yeah. well done, you. he was second at Sykes, you see. Second to Sykes. Well, so that's great for you. That's good for Yeah, him. that was back in February, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you and the wife are doing a fantastic job. Well, let's try and keep it up. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, look, well done. There's a trophy for you. so you. Yeah. you much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks very much to Edward Dark, the, uh, the winning owner who with uh, his wife, Sue, I'm not being stupid, am I? He doesn't look 80. Uh, but uh, he's, uh, he rides the horse on a regular basis. And uh, I, I love those type of stories. And that, these are the type of stories that Pointing, Pointing needs to tell. It's people like the Darks on their farm, not too far away from the race course at Buckfast Lee, uh, who are absolutely life and soul of this sport. And look at the enjoyment that he and his wife are getting from their success with Minimalistic. And they're getting a third win of the season after, after a bit of a break. So uh, it has come back this season. And look at the form figures now. 6-2, 1-1, a P at Cheltenham on the, Fox Hunters, uh, the Hunters' Night. And then another one here this evening. Minimalistic, the 10-year-old, uh, winning once again as the odds-on favourite. Now, we're getting news of the uh the we're getting uh, we're getting moving on to race two now uh and this is the giffords chartered accountant restricted race and uh, i think that we can confirm all the runners for you here i know there are two that uh, aren't going but these all go so you've got number one banff with uh, chad bayment two doesn't go three is dice report megan bevan four grove ash with charlie sprake Saw Charlie arriving here earlier on. 
uh, with an entourage. Uh, they'll be giving him plenty of support this afternoon. Five Kings Key with Matt Hampton. Six Liberty Rock uh, with uh, Darren Edwards. Uh, so uh, that one is number six. Seven is Star Walker with Jimmy Cole riding. And I don't think it was advertised on the website uh, or in the race cards here, but number nine, Who the Man, is ridden by Will Biddick, uh, currently the season's number two rider, the seven-time champion, point-to-point -point rider, uh, male champion seven times, and Will on, uh, I think he's on 49 winners for the season. So the half-century could come up here. So we've got Banff, Dice Report, Grove Ash, Kings Key, Liberty Rock, Star Walker. Then that the one that uh, uh, the other one that doesn't go is Villanesque, and then we've got Who the Man for the Giffords, Chartered Accountants Restricted Race, kindly sponsored by Giffords Chartered Accountants, predictably. Uh, and this race now, if you're if you're with us on the live stream, and uh, we know people do join us on and off during the afternoon, we are running late. This race we are anticipating will take place at about 3:05. Uh, because of traffic on the on the dual carriageway not too far away they had to just delay racing by half an hour so that is the situation there are some happy scenes from the winners area uh, where a bit of debriefing is taking place by Josh uh, Newman uh, describing what happened we've had our own debrief from Edward Dark which um, was an excellent one and I just can't get over the the enthusiasm that uh, people like him uh, have for what they do. And he, I, I can't actually, I know I'm entirely biased, I'm, I'm being paid to be here today, but I could e easily, this, this sort of day, we're bright end of May sunshine, forget the traffic, we're bright end of May sunshine, a little bit of a breeze, so it's not a really unpleasantly warm afternoon. I think if there was no breeze, it would be really warm. But it's just really pleasantly warm this afternoon. We're in the sunshine. We're in the countryside, the British countryside, which, as uh, you were seeing a few moments ago, and there, those people are all joining in as they line the side of the paddock, the Josh Newman fan club, no doubt. But um, people just really uh, pleased to be out in the fresh air, uh, high up in, in Devon, and enjoying a really good day out. And that's what these point-to-points do supply and uh, for those of you who aren't able to be with us today we're delighted that you're following the action I, I like the look of that it's, that that licorice um, sweet shop that looks really good doesn't it but there are various other um, uh, stands as well which are advertising their wares uh, in uh, in the sunshine here this afternoon great day out but uh, equally great if you can follow the action from afar that you're doing it via the live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area on this Saturday afternoon. We're just going to confirm again. I think we can do that. They, they have just weighed in for the first race. Uh, and we can... Uh, no, those are the... I was just going to confirm the result for race one. There are our runners coming up in a few moments' time for our next race, but we can confirm uh, the result of the first race here this afternoon in full in glorious technicolor and there we are with uh, minimalistic confirmed as our winner five gold bars has run really well in second place returned at eight to one amore alato uh, third at odds of five to two right the first of our runners for race two is appearing in the paddock so uh, i think uh, we can have a have a good look and see um in fact the first couple of runners are here so let's uh, start with number five there king's key and uh, king's key is one who's here today trained by matt hampton for laura clayton qualified via the blackmore and spartford vale and the trainer is on board this horse as well on board king's keys a seven-year-old by the grand national winning si yates uh, with some really solid form figures you can see there a couple of th three threes and a five so far a couple of excellent efforts uh, one was in the open at Melbourne St Andrew in January uh, restricted at Babbury Rings in February and ran well at the first fleet as well well beaten last time went up to Chasley Corbett for a restricted tiny bit to prove now but has shown that uh, there is plenty of ability won the maiden at um, 
won a maiden at Cherrybrook in April of 2021. So uh, that is number five, King's Key, and we'll be looking at uh, some of the other horses in the paddock in just a few moments' time. But chance just to reflect once again on our first race this afternoon. We've heard how enthusiastic the uh, the winning owner was, Edward Dark, and I'm sure the winning trainer, uh, winning, um, he's the winning trainer with his wife as well, winning jockey, Josh Newman's going to be equally. The Darks are very happy about that, <laughs> yeah, Josh. Yeah, they'll be delighted. They, uh, they thoroughly enjoy uh, pointing, and they've, they've, uh, they take that horse uh, dear to their heart as well. So, yeah. no, fantastic. And, and it is, it's, I know somebody like you does it, um, I was going to say even more professionally. They do a perfectly professional job, but you do it more commercially as well. Yeah. But when when it's uh, uh, he's 80 years old, no, it's guy, great, and, and, they, and they do it, every day. they do it all themselves. And um, yeah, they they obviously have a, a, a fairly big farm, and, and they're busy with that. But Edwards, he's got younger family, and they've done more of a role with that, and it gives him, I suppose, it's it's. Um, it's it's just enjoy, enjoyable for him yeah. and, and the horse it, horse seems to like it as well and I'm, I'm glad he's that's his third win of the season yeah. now so they've, he's really paid them back and I, I guess it's really good fun for you as well you you ride for all sorts of different people <laughs> when you get enthusiasts like that yeah no he's uh, no it's good fun they enjoy it and he um edward sort of rings me up after most weekends now to see if he's not been there to see how i've got on and I think it was about a month or so ago. I went down there and bought some sheep off him. So oh, did you? It's, <laughs> oh, so you're going, making certain you stayed in the good books. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, uh, so. Excellent. And this horse, he's a big, big horse, isn't he? And he's, he's a big a horse. horse. He's imposing. He takes your eye. He's lovely to sit on. He's actually, I, I sort of, he, he raced pointing a few years ago, and he was probably easier then. You could, like today, you would have just bowled along in front, but he was... The old sod was having a little bit of a, a look around today, and I thought for a second at two out, we were in a bit of bother because he started jinking to the to the right. But um, he got away from it quickly. He, he was quick over it. He came yeah. on a lovely stride. He was just having a real good look. He's probably probably on the quick side for him, and he probably right. is used to and likes getting his toe in. What about that last ditch there? He got in a bit close to that, and I did think for a second, especially the hawkers at horses, yeah, are running really yeah, well. Yeah, they are. They're in great form. Um, I was fairly confident he picks up. Um, when they come when they come to me and I just chased them away from it a little bit and got them back on an even keel and, and going forward is the main thing because if you're going forward it means if they come to you can you can keep increasing yeah and so what point to point wise is that seven I think that's I don't I'm not very good at maths but I think you've had 17 is it does that sound right uh, yeah about that yeah about that. yeah yeah well, that's all right yeah no no it's uh, it can always be better but of it can course. be a lot worse mm. And I've seen you um, under rules, uh, not not always riding, but uh, no, no, super, quite a lot of supervising. Keeps me busy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have been where, where you've been up and down the country? Uh, yeah, Savile the other day, and yeah. Worcester and Warwick. And yeah, 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 a few different places. Excellent, but and still a few more couple of weeks, a uh, few more weeks of the season to go. So uh, yeah. you, you'll be at Bratton Down, Umberley, in places. Bratton Down next week, I'd say I'll have one or two probably, and right. Umberley we'll see, but I'll go anyway. Yeah, excellent. You great. Um, last week was it? Last weekend you had a lovely maiden winner. Yeah, nice. Um, the he he ran he ran at. Just Coffles, remind me of the name. Uh, Donny's uh, Donny's um, Donny's fortune. Yeah. Fortune. Yes, so, absolutely. It's gone out of my um, head as well. And um, no, he ran it. He ran at Coffleston, and I had to ride another one in the race. And um, we just wanted to get, get get an idea of what we had really and. And, and unfortunately, Darren unseated off him. It's just one of those things right. that happens to all of us. And um, and then he was in it, Bratton, and then he was going to miss Bratton and come here. And I sort of managed to get my thoughts well across, and, and we went to Bratton. And, and that was quite impressive. Yeah, no, very good. Um, yeah, like I say, I rode him just to see what we had, and for him to finish off a race because he's not got the best form come from Ireland. But he um, he was sick when he came over, and it took a took a little bit of time and we just took our time and and he, he really came into himself and and now that, that was a great result and and he, and he looked good doing it and i think there's there's things we can brush up on and also I, uh, he'll definitely strengthen up for a summer summer out so he's, is there a plan for this season or is that no him? he's out he's out he's, now oh, he's, yeah all right. he's out in the field but he's one so. to follow next season yeah I, I, touch wood yeah, he hasn't yeah. been sold yeah well he might yeah. have had a buyer but he's in the yard so <laughs> right all right that's great yeah that's great 
Well, excellent. Well, look, well done. Uh, well, well done here. That must be great fun on a horse live minute. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent. Super. Well, and how many more have you got today? Uh, two or three. Yeah, oh, we'll, be looking, months, so. we'll be looking out for you. Lovely Perfect. to see you. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely to see Always good to see Josh uh, here, Josh Newman here, uh, and uh, successful with Minimalistic as the odds on favourite. Everyone around here is called Josh this afternoon, so it's getting a bit confusing. But this is Josh Newman who rode the first winner of the afternoon, and uh, that was Minimalistic for. Uh, the darks in uh, in great style right we can take you back to the paddock now we were having a look at king's key earlier on we need simon actually to just uh, bring us some um, betting uh, on this second race of the afternoon uh, what, what 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 have we got simon it's, uh, it's all about liberty rock um, liberty rock number opened, 6 yeah num opened up 5 to 4 i won the bat there a minute ago and is now 4 to 6 so that's the one they've been on. Everything else, Danny Cobb Banff is 20, Dees Report 25, Grove Ash 4, Kings Key 5, Liberty Rock we've said 4 to 6, uh, Star Walker 14, and Who the Man, the second favourite at 2 to 1. But the, and only the, one the Will Biddick connection will have been of interest to plenty of people. Yes. Yeah. Excellent, super. Thank you very much. We'll see you again in a second, Simon. Let's look then for number 6, Liberty Rock. And number 6, Liberty Rock is just uh, what are we yeah we're just trying to there we are we have located him for you liberty rock is a six-year-old by libertarian trained by dean summersby qualified via the lamerton hunt owned by messrs banks gardner and hughes kept up to the job when losing the maiden tag here on the 8th of may beating the fellow joint favourite um, and that came after a, a pretty encouraging point-to-point -point jumping debut at Charlton Hawthorne in early March. Had a couple of rules races last year which were certainly pretty decent and there he is led up by the trainer Liberty Rock and very strong in the betting here this afternoon and uh, look forward to seeing his rider, Darren Edwards, in a moment in the, the blue and red diamonds with the red cap. Colours he's often wearing. Good crowd crowding around the paddock, determined to have a, a good look at uh, these horses. And we're getting news of the best turn out, and that was Banff that was adjudged the best turn out. There's number four. That's Grove Ash, seven-year-old grey by Great Pretender. And this horse was a maiden with Nigel Hawke under rules, but a decent amount of promise along the way. It's been point of pointing since March, had five races, I think it is. Favourite on four occasions. But the time he won was 12 to 1 for uh, maiden, the maiden at uh, Stafford Cross when conceding plenty of weight to a Chris Barber four-year-old and holding that horse off. Horse that beat him last time has won again since. Number four, Grove Ash, will be of considerable interest to plenty of you, although there's a strong favourite, pretty prominent in the betting as well. Number four, Grove Ash. Then that's uh, King's Key, who we saw before, just going through the bottom of the picture. Who have we got over there? Riders, as you can see, appearing in the paddock. That's Liberty Rock again. We'll talk more about Liberty Rock in just a second no doubt there's number three which is dice report being led up by the groom in red in the middle there ten-year-old mare by well chosen tracy williams trains qualified via the quantuck stag hands owned by a partnership well beaten in three completions this year but to be fair did show up for quite a long way uh, all, all three times, or certainly, yeah, the last three times, I think. So, um, Dice Report, a player. Following that one is that Star Walker just behind, I think. Star Walker, five-year-old by Telescope. Own train ridden by Jimmy Cole, qualified via the Spooners and West Dartmoor Hunt. Jimmy has been around a bit. It is a is a word on the race course today might be his last day but I think we've heard that before um, never really a player in four point to point so far and was well beaten behind Liberty Rock over the course and distance latest 
Well, I have to say that the, the prize for the biggest enthusiast of the day is not held by Edward Dark after his, the first win, though he was very enthusiastic, but our paddock announcer, let's go racing. I love that. And uh, he's indicating his enthusiasm in good style today, the paddock announcer. So the horses being mounted here, decent number of them as well. So we had, in this race, we had nine entries and we're going to have seven runners. So, A, it's good to get seven. That's a testament to the state of the conditions, ground conditions here. But also congratulations to everyone for actually getting here um, because that has just been an issue for one or two uh, today. So... Uh, just going through our picture, there's Liberty Rock, that's Liberty Rock, and then so in those diamond colours. Then uh, behind in the, uh, the blue and the yellow, so that's Liberty Rock, is Banff. Blue, blue sleeves, yellow armlets, yellow cap, Chad Bayment, there's a good shot of Chad. Um, Banff's a nine-year-old by Papal Bull, and uh, this one owned and trained by Daniel Farr, qualified via the Tiverton Staghands, formerly with Ollie Murphy and with his mum, Annabelle King. Only win was actually in a flat race on the all-weather at Newcastle. Not really got into any sort of stride so far has Banff since a return from a long break in January, then didn't run again until early in the month. Was in touch quite a long way last time. So a few words there about Banff making its uh, way. And let's, uh, let's hear Mark Dennis's description. Well, that's Banff, uh, ridden by Mr Chad Bayman, uh, blue with the uh, yellow armlets and a yellow cap. And behind this we see number nine, that's Who the Man, ridden by Mr Will Biddick. Change of colours here, this is uh, red with the uh, black armlets and a black cap. Following this one down is number three. That's Daisha's report, uh, written by Miss Megan Bevan. Green and beige quarters with the beige sleeves. Green chevrons, red cap with a green star. Next out is number four. That's Grove Ash, written by Mr. Charlie Sprake. Black and white uh, diamonds with the uh, black sleeves, white stars, white cap with the black star. In behind this comes number five. That's King's Key, written by Mr. Matt Hampton. Uh, blue with the orange stars and sleeves. Blue cap with the orange star. And the uh, final one to get down is number seven. That's Star Walker, ridden by Mr. Jim Cole. Uh, red and black Diablo with the uh, chevrons on sleeves and a quartered cap. So those are the seven that go to port post them for this restricted race. They are due away at 3.10. And so we've got around about uh, seven minutes till post time. fence which will be there first so they'll race down the far side of the track jumping 18 here before then coming up the home straight past the winning line and doing it twice more and uh, we were saying with Simon earlier on that Liberty Rock was all the rage in terms of the betting what about now oh well, yes it's four to seven now I was late on parade the bookies tell me some of them actually did two to one against Liberty Rock so some puns have snapped up the value it's now four to seven the only real opposition is um, who the man which touched two to one back to seven to four so it's those two really excellent well they're down there who the man is the one that we haven't really uh, seen so who the man Will Biddick is uh, riding who the man pink colours with a black hoop the Julian Sheriff colours um, this one trained by Bradley Gibbs, qualified by the Langano Penturk hunt. So it's pink, black hoop, hoop sleeves and a black cap. And who the man is a, a six-year-old grey by Not Now Cato. Good solid form figures, as you can see, 1432. Highest rated horse in the race is who the man. And um, kept on well to lose his maiden status at Higham in January. Since then, has contested, contested some quite nice races, met some pretty decent opponents. Second last time at Cottlestone has a solid look to it. 
beaten half a length by a previous winner with another winner, Cool Simon, uh, behind. So who the man? And uh, Grand will be fine for Hudeman as well. And Will Biddick being on board will be a little bit of an extra bit of encouragement for some. Always uh, popular in these parts is anything that uh, Will is riding. So the horse is all... Th and just going across to the... Is that him there? Just across the extreme left of the picture is Hudeman with the black cap and uh, in the sunshine here pinks and reds and oranges all looking a little bit similar but number number nine there anyway is uh, who the man so the starter has uh, got hold of the flag we're running half an hour late flags raised hot favorite here in Liberty Rocks money around for who the man as well a couple of other interesting ones, Grove Ash and King's Key. Mark Dennis will describe it. Quickly, so they uh, step away from the start then for this uh, keenly contested, competitive, uh, restricted seven runners and riders, and they uh, take on the first of their 18 fences, and who the man, just with a fractional advantage. Liberty Rock uh, gave that a little bit of a whack there, I think, on the outside of uh, the leader there. But they're all over it safely and racing away on uh, to the top of the... Uh, Back straight and uh, beginning their turn at the far end now. Who the man from Liberty Rock? Uh, Dacia's report there in third. And uh, a length then back to Grove Ash who races on the inside of Banff and Star Walker. King's Key on the inside is just the back marker of that bunch at the back as they turn uh, to race back towards us and on towards uh, four playing fences in the home straight. They're all over that safely. And uh, now settle down for a descent down to the next. And uh, who the man on the inside under Will Widdick, second in the men's national championship at the moment, having uh, James King win, uh, had a couple of winners at the Bratton meeting last week. Uh, so uh, Will will be looking to make that up this afternoon. Got uh, four rides this afternoon. And uh, Darren Edwards on his outside right in Liberty Rock who incidentally was a good winner here at the Eggersford meeting uh, three or four weeks ago. Uh, and the uh, favourite to follow up in this restricted Liberty Rock. As they pass the judge then, they've got two circuits ahead of them to race and down towards another playing fence at the bottom of the home straight, who the man, and uh, comes to it now, takes it, sails out over it, they're all over it safely, and uh, race away right-handed now. So uh, Darren Edwards, second to Will Biddick in the Devon Cornwall Championship, five points short. Darren on the 21 winner mark for the season uh, down here. And uh, they've almost completed the uh, turn at the bottom end of the course then to begin up their run up the back straight. And uh, three fences to take, the uh, plain fence, open ditch and uh, plain fence. So who the man and... Uh, Liberty Rock, these two are a couple of lengths clear. Then Jace's reporter races on the inside of Banff. Star Walker's a little bit wider out, and Grove Ash on the inside. King's Key uh, continues as the back marker then as they uh, make their way on then to the open ditch uh, uh, for the first time. So who the man? Set a decent gallop away from flag four under Will Biddick. Liberty Rock in second. Dacia's report a clear third now. Couple of lengths then back to Grove Ash and Charlie Sprake. Charlie works for uh, Will and uh, is leading the uh, Novice Championship uh, for Devon and Cornwall. As they cross the next, then they're all over that safely and uh, racing away on then to continue to uh, climb to the top end of the course now. So, Who the Man and Liberty Rock, Jace's report, King's Key has improved a place or two on the inside. And uh, they now race right-handed at the far end. And the two leaders have gone clear of Dacia's report by about four lengths now. Two lengths then back to Star Walker and Jim Cole. This is going to be quite an emotional afternoon for Jim. He could well be having his final point-of-point -point ride later in the maiden on no escape. So uh, this could well be Jim Cole's penultimate uh, ride this afternoon. So they... Uh, Race down then to another plain fence, second one in the home straight. 
And uh, who the man comes to it, Liberty Rock on the outside. These two now pretty much uh, stride for stride. Dacia's report back in, or sorry, Grove's, uh, Grove Ash now goes into third. And uh, Dacia's report has lost a, a place or two. As the leaders across the next, that'll be the final fence in the circuit's time. King's Keys improved into fourth now from Star Walker. Dacia's report being ridden and uh, bump the back marker and just beginning to lose touch then. So they race down to another plane fence then. Two leaders sail out over it. Just, uh, Liberty Rock just uh, knuckles slightly on landing after that uh, under Darren Edwards, but maintains upsides with uh, Who the Man. There's a gap of around about eight lengths back then to Grove Ash, who's a length clear of King's Key, King's Key sorry. and uh, another seven or eight lengths back to Star Walker. Three more then. Uh, back to Dacia's report and 10 to the back marker, which is Banff. So the leaders then are on the run up the back straight uh, for the time, final time in this restricted and uh, on towards another plane fence before the ditch as the, uh, they arrive at it now. And it's uh, Who the Man on the inside, Liberty Rock. Uh, over in second, just lost a half length over that. King's Key now looks to be making stealthy progress and is into third now at the expense of Grove Ash. That was the ditch there and both the leaders got in a little bit tight to that as uh, who the man now is beginning to be ridden uh, by Will Biddick as King's Key goes into three uh, from Grove Ash. That's the front four and uh, Dacia's report also struggling to go with them now. So they come to the final one in the back straight. All the leaders safely out over it and uh, continue on then. So who the man ridden out in front by Will Biddick. Liberty Rock continues uh, to travel quite sweetly at the moment on the outside under Darren Edwards. These two are then clear by about six or seven lengths uh, back to King's Key. Grove Ash is next, another six lengths back. And it looks as though who the man has uh, lost the battle and is being pulled up now by Will Biddick as they sweep the turn and uh, arrive at the top of the home straight. Liberty Rock out over, clear from Kings Key and Grove Ash as who the man has been pulled up. Racer's reports over in four and uh, we look back then is Banff but down to the final fence or to, down to the uh, second last fence now and Liberty Rock uh, comes to it, just runs out to his left slightly. King's Key is trying to get back on terms on the inside and is up to within a, about a length and a half now of the leader. Grove Ash also running on from the back under Charlie Spake. Final fence coming up then for Liberty Rock out over safely. Two lengths clear though. King Ski's going to try and run him down now, but he's pulled out a little bit more. Liberty Rock's going to hold on for uh, winner number two, 22 for Darren Edwards. King Ski over in second, and uh, Grove Ash will be next. Dacia's report will be ridden out for fourth, and uh, Banff will be finishing fifth. So, um, perhaps a little bit more dramatic than might have been anticipated, but Liberty Rocks has uh, followed up uh, that success of the other day. Uh, and he looked, <laughs> there, were, there were a couple of them, weren't there, who looked pretty dangerous uh, up against Liberty Rock. He's only six. He's very much on the, on the up, this son of Libertarian, trained by Dean Summersby, uh, Darren Edwards, the rider on board. I think that's 21 wins for the season for, for, for Darren. But a couple of times it looked, first of all, as though uh, the horse that Will Biddick was riding, the bottom one on your card, who the man was going to uh, pose a big threat. But uh, that one uh, fizzled out quite quickly and was pulled up and dismounted by Will Biddick. And then uh, entering the very closing stages, Matt Hampton got a right tune out of King's Key. Uh, and go between the final two fences for, for a stride, I thought, my goodness. But uh, as, it, as Mark Dennis said in commentary, uh, Liberty Rock always just had enough uh, up his sleeve. But hats off to King's Key, who uh, kept on all the way up the run-in and hasn't uh, been beaten all that far. And uh, the third horse has kept on well. That's Grove Ash uh, for Mary Sanderson and Charlie Sprake has kept on in third place. Never a factor during the race, but uh, is a horse, I'm sure, that's um, 
how old is uh, Gro- yeah, only a seven-year-old, Grove Ash, uh, and had a pretty good season already. And um, wouldn't be at all surprised to see that featuring in some OK races next year. So there's our winner, number six, Liberty Rock. Liberty Rock running in the colours of Messrs Banks, Gardner and Hughes, qualified via the Lamerton Hunt. Dean Summersby and uh, Darren Edwards, uh, the team uh, with, uh, with that particular horse. And we can confirm the result in full. Oh, oh, so there for confirmation of the runners for the next race. Uh, a win for uh, number six, Liberty Rock, the seven to four on favourite, beating number five, Kings Key at eight to one. And third was number four, Grove Ash. Uh, at odds of six to one we'll get news of the runners in our third race very uh, shortly um, but um, before we do that let's uh, let's uh, reflect on liberty rock success with one of the co-owners uh, nick banks is here Hello. Uh, delighted nick banks very, i guess very yeah, delighted. be delighted enough to get nice and close very to delighted yeah. yeah well that, that was great because uh, it's lovely when you win yes. and it's extra exciting when it, it looks at uh, various times during the race they look to be big it, dangers they were yeah the second last yeah um between the last two i really thought that matt hampton might get his horse yeah, up yeah exactly yeah but not quite but no anyway. and uh, and the horse uh, who uh, ran ran a gallant race for a long way as well yeah i didn't know what pulled him up but yeah, yeah there we yeah. go so um tell us about how did you come to um well dean sourced him in ireland Right. Um, and we, after the, or during the COVID, we ran him under rules just to get him, uh, you know, used to running other horses. And he ran all right, didn't he? He did, yeah. Yes, he did. And then we took him to uh, Charlton Hawthorne at the beginning, because after, after running under rules, he got a, a puncture wound in his oh. ankle. And it, in fact, the... the Vet comes with us now. He, he, he came up to Charlton Hawthorne. Oh, right. He drained it twice. We, it was touch and go, really, whether he'd, he'd run again. Oh. But Dean's nurse, you know, Team Summers be nursing him. Perfect team to be trying oh, to do that. Yeah, yeah, mm. fantastic. I mean, he even puts a pulse on him at night now to make yeah. sure the blood's going. Oh, that's cool. Yes, yeah. And then win the other day, and then. Um, yes. And then this. And then this, yes. So that how it. Right. How, That'll be it for the day. Right, for, 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 the, for, the, for, the, for the season. For the season, yes. But you'll be, you know, he's not really, he's only six. Yes, he is, yes. So you'll be having, you'll be hoping to have a little bit of fun. Yes. Um, in the future, and you're in with John Gardner John and, Gardner um, and Torben, Hughes. Torben Hughes. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's quite a team. It is. To be... Formidable. Uh, yeah, formidable <laughs> in, in, every, in every sense, I suspect. Yeah. So, so um, point appointing in the sunshine north yep, devon yep. etc is, is what Brilliant. it's all about it isn't is. it yeah it is yeah so if you were on obviously when you've just had a winner this is a silly question in some respect how enjoyable is a day yeah, like it is yeah, we, yeah you know i've involved with jet me out of here as well he's run twice yeah honest opinion yeah the mayor she's run twice she's got a bit of a leg now but uh, has she i did yeah so <laughs> we've had a, that's dean's 15th winner yeah he's going well he and is and uh, and Darren's going well as yes, always. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh, I, I noticed on a on the um, uh, on the we get a statistic sheet. Yeah. And yeah. in the veteran riders bit, there's yeah. only one rider there's there. Only one rider it's there. Just Darren. Exactly. But he, he's a, you know he seems to have been around forever yeah. and a day, doesn't he? And he's a he's a fantastic horseman. Yeah, absolutely. Really is. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. Well, I'm being told you're going for a meal tonight in Bratton Cl- Cloverley. Am I? Yeah. Right, there we are. Oh, you didn't know that? No, I didn't. Well, I t- you said they were a formidable team. Yes, They've already That's arranged right. it. Yeah. Well, look, congratulations to all of us. Thank Lovely. Thanks very much indeed. Lovely to hear uh, from Nick after that success uh, with, uh, with Liberty Rock uh, and Liberty Rock following up the success of just the other day. Stays really well, keeps on really well, and there were dangers and there were perils during the race, strong challenges from others, uh, but Liberty Rock was up to all of that and it is worth noting he's only six years old this horse and uh, he is going to be a a really fun horse for the the three guys that own this horse during next season so uh, Liberty Rock wins the Giffords Chartered Accountants restricted race which is our second race so if you're just with us on the live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point area this afternoon it's worth uh, underlining that we're running 30 minutes late Uh, because of traffic in 
this part of uh, the southwest of England earlier on in the day. So that is what we've got so far. Now, we have news of our third race coming in. I'm not sure if we've got it in caption form yet. We may do, but I do know the runners uh, for our third race uh, this afternoon. Here's the confirmation. Uh, I think we're more about quality than quantity in this one, but the, the quality is excellent. Seven famous Clermont goes. So does 15, says Truger. So does 16, 16 letters. Gosh, the stars may be aligning. 16 letters, number 16. Josh Newman looking for a double. And then 17 Sykes, ridden by Darren Edwards. So, gosh, not only have we got four talented uh, rivals who are going to contest the Simpkins Edwards mixed open race, but riding wise in the in the, this part of the world, you're talking about uh, plenty a good uh, percentage of the creme de la creme. Will Biddick on famous Clermont, Sastruga with Rob Hawker, very experienced. Sixteen letters and Josh Newman, and then Sykes and Darren Edwards. And um, Darren, I think that was uh, Darren's 21st winner of the season something like that and in terms of the devon and cornwall point-to-point -point area leading gentleman rider for the peter pian memorial challenge cup this is done on points you get four for a win two for a second one for a third will Biddick leads with 104 darren edwards second with uh, 99 josh newman third with 58 darren andrews fourth with 50 and jake Baymond in fifth with 42 leading lady rider very quickly chloe emsley 26 points. Anna Johnston, 18. Olive Nichols has had such a good year, uh, 12. Amy Benelik, 9. And Anna Highlands, also 9. And the leading novice male rider, Charlie Sprake, with 38 points from Vinnie Webster and Aaron Butterfield. Both Vinnie and Aaron with wonderful years. And then Otis Morgan, who's had another good year. And leading novice female rider, Anna Johnston, leads from Olive Nichols, Amy Benelik and Anna Highlands. Please refer, it says on my bit of paper, please refer any queries to Granville Taylor, who's the great historian and statistician as regards point of pointing in these parts. Lots of musings, lots of reports uh, from Granville available on the website, pointingdc.co.uk. So that brings you right up to date with all that information. Just the four for the next, but a good quality race, as I've said, Simon Knott's here, so uh, I suspect Simon may have some betting because I tell you, uh, I've it, got it, some it news. is inverted commas only four. Yes, but these 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 are four really interesting contenders. Well, we've had an interesting bet as well. Famous oh, Claremont, on. one bookmaker went four to five. He was knocked Which over. Which are we talking about? Famous Claremont right. went four to five. Was knocked over for relatively small money. And then just up the road from him, another bookmaker was four to six. He's laid twelve hundred pounds cash at four to six. And this is on to twelve hundred on famous Claremont. So now he's desperately looking for another bookmaker to, 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 to stick his neck out so yeah. he can hedge a bit back. But at so, the moment, he's got to sit with it. So his price at the moment is. Well, no, it's, it's one to two everywhere, bottle right. on. But he's hoping that none of the others will lay it, so they might yeah. go out again. And but at the moment, <laughs> he's sitting about on the other, twelve for eight. And what about the other three? Well, the other three, um, you've got. Sastaruga 16 to 1. The second in 16 letters was 6 to 4, and Sykes was 7 to 4. But those are probably hoofing out to, you know, because they've taken the money for the What favorite. price is Sykes? 7 to 4. Oh, I love Sykes. You know, I'll go over there is, for you if you like, Cornelius. Your oh, credit's nothing, good. Uh, I must just grab my race card here. But, um, but uh, thank you to Simon and could bring us any more information uh, from the betting ring uh, about uh, that. But uh, that sounds. Uh, very interesting indeed. Right, our next guest needs little introduction in these parts. Jimmy Cole uh, is an owner, trainer, rider, uh, but only for today. I think. I think. He, are you calling it a day? I am finally calling it a day. Yes. Call, because you know, there been rumours have occasionally circulated in the past. You might do, but you are going to. One hundred percent. Yeah. When right. I say I'm doing something, I'm doing it. Yeah. Right. Not Good. not because of the physical side. Just it's a lot of work involved in. Right. Uh, yeah. And you, you go out in the maiden no escape. That's it, yeah. I quite like no escape. I do too. Yeah, I, I, I feel there is there are races in in her. She's she's only four, isn't she? Yeah. 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 And uh, form figures of the P doesn't count, but a four, a four, and a two. 
Yeah. They're all they're all very very solid runs. As um, I think Dean Summersby teamed up. Dean Summersby says to me, "I never pick my races. What's there? You just got to try and beat it." <laughs> I, I'm not one for picking races, and uh, I've probably been running her in like you know strong enough races, really. Right. So hopefully today will be the day. We'll see. Two and a half miles. Two and a half miles. Right. They give me an easy lead. She won't be beat. All right. Well, <laughs> and, and if we believe in fairy tales, and all of us who like racing and point to pointing do believe in fairy tales, then that would be a fantastic. It would be good, but we'll just see what happens. And what? How long have you been doing it? Twenty-three, I think I've been. I've, I've rode right. for twenty-three years. I missed one season, I think, back a couple, two or three years ago. And that, so, roughly, how many rides do you think that will have been? <sighs> I have no idea. Not many, because I but ride how all my own. Say twenty-three times half a dozen. I don't know. I've, I've Maybe. never looked at things. Yeah. And wins, wins wise. I wanted to get to twenty, but I'm only on eighteen and one hundred chase win. I think. Well. But you know, well, I was maybe always, you will get to 20. You never know. <laughs> and you're going to concentrate on long distance running? Uh, yes, probably. I'm going to, uh, long distance running and plenty of drinking, I think. Right. <laughs> well, it says I, a board's being held up to me saying plaster, uh, but, but no, it's I'm plastering pl rather than plastered. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, what are you pl plastering? I'm a plaster in the right. building game, yeah. And that, that is what so many people love about this sport is you can be a plasterer Monday to Friday. Yeah. Love your horses, yep. and then at the weekends, be out in the sunshine doing this yeah. kind of thing. And you've done it for twenty something years. Yeah, but not only that, it's trying to keep them going. Like you're training them on your own every morning. It's not. I'm not giving up because of the physical side. It's just so much work involved, and and I think pointing's gone. Really, I do. It, it just oh, don't be so gloomy. What, well, what? it's not like it's not the same now. It's it used to be like people like myself, but it's got so professional, and it's a shame. Now, yeah. um, you know, I'm muck no escape. 800 pound horse yeah. probably up against like 10,000 pound horses and well, it's just possibly it a bit more than that maybe a bit yeah. more than that yeah. yeah but as you said about her she's done me you know I'm proud of what I've done made her really yeah. she's only four and we've like bought a mask at there December she was a head case when we had her and now she's she's really settled down yeah you, you, you sounded a bit gloomy there but you said that it's about taking part it, you aim for a race you go and take part yeah you know, it is it's, it's getting so expensive for it all that's the trouble. I'm throwing money and money over fist, like hand over fist. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you've, am I allowed to ask how old you are? Uh, Forty. For, oh right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, and the, this running? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to try and um, maybe do a marathon now because my running coach, I've never managed to put enough mileage in to actually do a full marathon, but I plan to do one now, hopefully. Excellent. Um, raise a couple of quid. Yeah, maybe. Yes, uh, maybe well do. So, do you can. fancy the London Marathon or do you fancy? Yeah, it? that's what I aim for, but I want to do it well as well. Yeah. Really well. Excellent, excellent. Well, look, very best of luck with, uh, with No Escape. And thank you. You've given a lot of people, uh, you've given yourself a lot of fun. Uh, but, yeah. you, but at these places, they, they, they love seeing you, uh, whether it's here or Fleet or wherever, well, they having a go. No more. I, may, I may train a few. Yeah. We'll see. Well, and, and don't be too gloomy. No, all right. The sun's out. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> excellent. Lovely to see uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, and he'll be riding uh, No Escape at the end of the day, who, who's actually genuinely a really interesting contender. Uh, she's, uh, if, you, if you look up the form, the point-to-point.co.uk, uh, you, you have to register and probably pay a subscription, but you can look at all the point-to-point -point form on there. Uh, on the whole, when it's working, which is most of the time, it works pretty well, that... Uh, website and you can look at the form of no escape and we'll see her in the paddock before the uh, last race of the day but she's run some really quite nice races uh, for um, for the for Jimmy Cole qualified with the Spooner the excellent Spooners and West Dartmoor Hunt as well all right so that is coming up later on we have horses in the paddock for our third race so we've only got four of them so we better not miss out on them so um, here they are, and um, I don't know about you, but the sunshine is just absolutely beautiful here this afternoon, but it does shine on that. That looks to me uh, like it's number 16, which is 16 letters, and 16 letters, I always think the stars may be aligned when 16 letters is number 16, and 16 letters looks absolutely terrific. At the back of the three that you see, uh, no, let's stick with 16. Uh, the back of the three going down the side of the track there. 16 Letters is a 10-year-old by Well Chosen, trained by Neil McLean. Qualified via the Sevington Hunt. Mr and Mrs Symes own this horse. Look at the, look at the form figures for this horse this season. And there's been a walkover in there, the dreaded walkover. Um, but, but even so, those numbers make for 
Very pleasant reading for 16 letters. A two, then two ones, a three, and then four ones. So absolutely magnificent season this horse has been having. I've written in my notes here, having a ball at the moment. I've actually written having a ball ATM because I'm modern like everyone else. Having a ball ATM. Uh, before the walkover here on May the 8th, uh, won a hunter chase at Wincanton in April, won a mixed open at Stafford Cross, beating uh, another of today's entries. A walkover aside, has run well at Upcut in the past as well in a couple of races. So 16 letters is number 16. And uh, six, that's, we'll look at number 17 in just one second. But uh, 16 letters, uh, really looking forward to seeing that one in action here today. So 17, there he is. Now let's, uh, number 17, who... Uh, we were flirting with there is um so the front of that's in front of those is Saz Truga. we'll look at uh Saz Truga in a second because i i build number 17 so that is and that's a real favorite of mine personally number 17 sykes he's a 13 year old by mountain high nicky martin trains qualified via the dalton farmers runs in the colors of the the bradley partnership and the bradley partnership are terrific uh, terrific owners, the, the maroon with the lighter coloured star. Um, and uh, he returned a point of pointing after, what, six, seven years away. Ex absolutely excelled under rules with, uh, and has been uh, back. Won the men's open at the first Wade Bridge in December. Tried to follow up in January, beaten by a very much in-form horse. Since then has won three against plenty of in-form rivals. The latest at the Devon and Somerset Staghand fixture at South Hill when accounting for the prolific Southfield Theatre at the beginning of the month. Under rules, won six out of 34. Plenty of big runs in defeat as well. Uh, and uh, was trained for Philip Hobbs as well as by, uh, by Philip Hobbs, as well as by Nicky Martin. And uh, Sykes was an absolutely uh, magnificent horse. Uh, and um, yeah, looking forward to seeing him in action in a, a few moments time, Darren Edwards is the rider on board that one. Well, we've been talking about 16 letters and what a good season 16 letters has had. And Kayleigh Wollacott, part of, very much part of the team, uh, is, uh, is here with us. You've had a great time with 16 letters, haven't you? Oh, it's been brilliant for, for everyone. Um, it's, I think I trained him as a very young horse. He came over when he was four. And um, he's won from Ireland. Yeah, from yeah. Ireland. I think he was fifth behind Slate House in an Irish point to point. Um, and he came over and he's, he's been wonderful. Um, he hasn't got very good wind. We were really disappointed with him when he came over. We were thinking, God, how are we going to get him to do very much? Um, and he's been remarkable. Yeah. Um, well, look at the form. Two, one, one, three. <laughs> One, 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 one. Admittedly, there's a walkover in there, but even so. Yeah, yeah, no, he's been, he seems to have come into his best this year. I wondered whether I did say to, to John um, and Neil and thinking um, for this year whether it would be his last year, but he's, he obviously heard he's us because, cared. yeah, yeah, just, you know, whether he'd then go on to a novice rider or something, but he's, he's in the form of his life. So mm. he's, um, yeah, we're having a really good time with and him. The, and all it, credit to Neil and Josh and all the team at home that do and, him. So. And the owners love him, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's a star. I mean, he's, you know, he's given them some brilliant days out. He's won them a hunter chase this year. And, um, yeah, he's, he's good fun to be involved with. Is it good that he's just been a judge best turned out? No, I won't worry, yes. Uh, yeah. Has he ever been number 16 before, I was wondering? I don't know. I did notice that, yeah. yeah. I just wonder whether that's all yeah, part of, that's a cool. sign. Um, I, think, I think this will be his hardest assignment Probably today. I mean, famous Claremont. I mean, he ran for me a few times during lockdown. Is yeah. a very, very nice horse. And, um, and the other two are all right. And uh, yeah, Sykes is Sykes, Sykes is <laughs> is smart. And uh, yeah, I think this will be his hardest task this year. But whatever, win, lose or draw, he's he's been an absolute saint. So you know, we owe him a lot. Well done. Well, uh, best of luck. I hope he, I hope it goes well for you. Thank you very much. Lovely Thank to you. see you, Kaylee Willicott, with us and uh, Georgie leading up. Uh, Sixteen letters, number sixteen as we take you back to the paddock now. So we've seen 16 letters uh, and uh, we've seen Sykes, but we haven't seen so far the hot favorite, number seven, Famous Clermont. So let us find Famous Clermont in the paddock. Uh, we've got, he is just coming up 
yeah, there he is, up the side of the paddock there, famous Clermont. And uh, this one with a £5 penalty. Will Biddick is uh, riding the horse uh, today. And um, he's only seven years old. Uh, seems to have been around a bit, but only seven. Trained by Chris Barber, qualified via the Catastock, owned by a partnership, famous Clermont. Um, and this horse in excellent form this season. The two on debut this season was in an open at Barbary. Markle Ridge won that, though, so that's, um, that's very solid form, especially first time out. But since then, he's carried all before him, won the intermediate at Buckfast Lee, an open at Charlton Hawthorne, and a hunter chase at Exeter as well. And I suspect was a little bit luckless at Cheltenham last time. And it, that, that meeting at Cheltenham, I, I, I don't know what you ever think about the meeting at Cheltenham, but... You know, it's you can absolutely excel on the point-to-point -point field, but then you go to Cheltenham on Hunter Chase night, and it is a different kettle of fish. Um, and the horse ran with credit, and um, the, um, the the horse uh, is uh, famous. Claremont there, number seven, is a very strong favourite to win today. So the only one we haven't seen is number fifteen, and number fifteen is over on the other side keep going round there is the I think we need to go around a tiny bit further and there we are uh, to see Saz Truger for the Hawkers led up by Richard Hawker and the Hawkers in fantastic form at the moment uh, and uh, the horse is uh, so that's Richard leading up Rob will be riding and Brian, the granddad, owns. So it's a, a proper family thing, this, uh, in this particular horse. 15, Saz Truger. Um, now, nine-year-old by Master of the Horse. Just had um, the one run, as you can see, from the form figures of late when uh, pulled up. Um, showed up quite a long way before being pulled up. That was at Cottlestone in the uh, men's open has been uh, well beaten under rules for for richard hawker of late but was the 40 to 1 winner of a handicap hurdle race at newton abbott about um, 18 months ago so i don't know if you heard the uh, the announcer with his cry let's go racing but uh, that's what he did as he asked the riders to get on board their mounts and that is exactly what they are now doing. So there's Saz Truger. Hawkers have been in great form under rules. Just coming through there, that's um, Sykes. Then we've got 16 letters, number 16 today. And famous Clermont just coming through the picture any second now, so you get a good look at the colours. The maroon with the white star. And in fact, Sykes' rider, Darren Edwards, just being given the leg up over there. So what are they going to do? Are they going to go out now or are they going to do one more? They're going to do one more circuit. So there's those of you who like to have a good look at the colours as well as everything else. That's Sykes. That's 16 letters, the yellow with the spots. Then the maroon with the white star. That's um, famous. Uh, that's uh, number seven. That's famous Clermont. And... Then uh, says Truger is blue with a red star in front. Busy old afternoon. It was, it was quite quiet here only an hour before the scheduled first race. But I think race goes as well as so many other people were stuck in traffic. But a decent crowd now here. Plenty of cars as you can see in the background. And uh, they are doing this final circuit. And then they'll come out on to the track and we'll... Uh, give uh, Mark Dennis the microphone to describe the horses on their way to the three mile start. This is the Simpkins Edwards mixed open race. Sans Truger wants to go down last, so he's just taking one more turn. Let's go uh, over to Mark. The runners now on their way uh, down to start, and the first out we're going to see is number 17, that's Sykes. Uh, ridden by Mr. Darren Edwards, maroon with a beige star, Diablo on sleeves and a star on the cap. Following this one down will be number 16, and that's uh, aptly named 16 letters, ridden by Mr. Josh Newman, yellow with the dark blue spots, sleeves, yellow cap with the dark blue spots. 
Next out is number seven. That's famous Claremont, uh, ridden by Mr. Will Biddick. Maroon with a white star. Blue sleeves, maroon cap with a white star. And uh, going down beside that one is number 15. That's Sastruga, ridden by Mr. Robert Hawker. Uh, royal blue with a red star. Half sleeves, blue cap with a red star. So just the uh, four going to post them for this uh, mixed open. And uh, they're uh, due away at uh, 3.40. So we're... Uh, we're right on post time now. So, horses on their way to the starting point. Just switch cameras in just a second so we can, there they are, at the start. Simon's here just uh, to update us on the betting, Simon. Yep, our famous Claremont's now one to two. The bookmaker that laid the big bet would be looking at the race through his fingers. Um, Saskaruga, you talked about earlier, touched 40 to one. Most of the bookmakers are betting each way, uh, two places, and that's now 25. A little bit of money each way for that one. 16 letters, two, and Sykes friendless, four to one. Four to one, Sykes? Yep, four to one. And just remind us about the bet that's been placed on um, famous Clermont. Yeah, £1,200 at four to six. The bookmaker stands to lose 800 quid in cold blood, so he's got nowhere to go with it. Excellent, and the horse is uh, all down, uh, or just having a look at the fence there, and they'll be assembling back. I see Sykes has already got there, 16 letters is going there, so um, uh, the, the, the uh, two most interesting ones in the betting were, um, were um, just having a look at the practice fence there, so uh, there we've got um, them just coming back across as well. Sastruga, little bits of uh, each way money for that one. And um, the really strong favourite in famous Clermont. So I think what that caption that we've got, just confirming the runners for this third race of the afternoon. For those of you who are just joining us, I think we can just put that up on the screen for you. So that, uh, as you can see, Sastruga in the centre and the white star on the chest of famous Clermont coming. Well, we don't need the caption, but those, uh, those are the four then uh, that are taking part in this mixed open number seven famous Clermont a very strong favorite the man of Will Biddick 15 Sastruga uh, which is um, owned by Brian Hawker who trained by his granddaughter Charlotte ridden by his grandson Robert and being led up by his son Richard Hawker so the Hawkers who are winning races at Worcester, Utoxeter, Stratford all over the place at the moment got a runner at Fontwell tomorrow uh, under rules they've got this quite interesting contender in Sastruga today. He showed up for quite a long time before being pulled up at Cottlestone in the Men's Open. Has been well beaten under rules of late, but has been a winner under rules as well. And as we look down there, Sastruga is the one that is just moving now to be the most uh, on the left of the four contenders. The yellowish colours of 16 letters, who's been in great form this season. Sykes, who's just a really good horse. Very successful for six or seven years under rules. Now point appointing and lovely to see him. And uh, famous Clement, uh, which was in great form earlier on in the season and a bit luckless when pulled up last time. As you can see, right centre screen. Flags are raised. In the old days, we'd say they're under starters' orders. But these days, flags are raised. Mark Dennis will be describing it for us. Flag is down then and uh, they're away. So uh, they very, very gingerly... Jump away from the start then. Nobody too keen to uh, make the running. 16 letters has uh, led them off then eventually to the first and is over safely out in front. And uh, Sykes just goes up on his inside to uh, join him now. These two are around about uh, four or five lengths clear then of uh, Sastruga, who races on the inside of uh, famous Claremont, who's uh, just, or only fact, who's just gone into third now. Uh, famous Claremont. So uh, they're at the top end of the course and on the turn. That's uh, going to bring them back towards us and into the uh, top of the home straight. And uh, they make their way on to uh, fence number two now. 16 letters comes to it. Sailed out over it safely. As the, uh, the rest of them also. Now they begin the descent down over the hill here. So famous Claremont was the uh, five to two on chance with the bookmakers, uh, nine to four for 16 letters, and uh, Sykes 
a five to two chance, four to one or three to one in some places as well. So uh, these three horses, 16 letters, uh, Sykes and famous Claremont, prolific winners. So uh, 16 letters has won 10 pointer points. Uh, Sykes has won four this year as well. Waybridge, Trefue, Buckfast Lee, or sorry, Lamerton and South Hill. And uh, famous Claremont, a winner of two this season, or sorry, one this season, and also pulled up at the 100 chase meet even about a month ago. So uh, they're on the run or taking the fence at the bottom of the home straight, and they're all over that safely. Sykes now just with the uh, fractional advantage as they leap the home straight behind then and begin the turn. Uh, right-handed at the bottom end of the course. 16 letters, half-length down in second. Two-length gap, two gap back then to famous Claremont and uh, Will Biddick. Another two then to Sastruga and uh, Robert Hawker as they now complete their turn and uh, begin uh, their run up the back straight in full uh, for the first time. So uh, plain fence open, ditch and plain fence to take. So Sykes on the inside of 16 letters. These two now pretty much matching strides. Jump and land together, although the f better jump on the outside by 16 letters. Sykes just brush through the top of it. And now they track up to the open ditch uh, for the first time. So they come to it now. 16 letters, measured it nicely. Sykes now just uh, with Sastruga goes up on his inside to dispute second, famous Claremont now the back marker of the four then as they uh, pass their point of departure and on to another plain fence and they come to it now, 16 letters out over safely from Sykes a length and a half clear then to uh, Shastruga famous Claremont uh, still sat in around about 10 lengths off of the two leaders now as they uh, Leave the back behind them then and take the tilt turn at the top end of the course. And uh, so Sykes with the Sykes with a fractional advantage. 16 letters on the outside under Josh Newman. Josh on number winner number 16 for the season. Darren Edwards on 22. So they cross the next then. They're over that safely, all over safely. And Sastruga was the one that's just a little bit flat footed at the moment. And he's uh, ridden along quite vigorously for a few strides by Robert Hawker, the outsider of the, f of the four at about uh, 12 to 1. So they cross the next then, and uh, they're all over that safely. So 16 letters now with about a length advantage. As they uh, race down to what will be the final fence in the circuit's time. Famous Claremont just creeping a little bit closer under Will Biddick. Goes up now on the outside of Sykes, uh, two disputes second. Sykes has given a shake of the reins on landing or over that to uh, just maintain a, about a half length deficit on the leader as they make their way down to the final plane fence in the home straight and they all sail over it safely. Good jump there by 16 letters and uh, they leave the home straight behind them then and big this, make this uh, long sweeping turn at the bottom end of the course and uh, things are bubbling up nicely then in this uh, competitive mixed open famous claremont joe just goes up to dispute second with sykes they're right on the heels of 16 letters there's a length and a half clear then as they uh, race up the back straight for the final time then and uh, as they do so they line up the first of the plane fences so 16 letters by a length to sykes famous claremont they cross the uh, first plane fence they're over safely sastruga's ridden along at the back under Rob Hawker to maintain this gallop up with the three leaders. This is the ditch then for the uh, second and final time. 16 letters was held on to, to, uh, to uh, going into that and just cost him a length there. Out jumped on the outside by famous Claremont. It looks to be travelling pretty sweetly at the moment under Will Biddick. It's, uh, 16 letters though goes back up into the lead. Sykes is also ridden now back in third. Sasuga's over in fourth. They've uh, taken the uh, final plane fence in the back straight and uh, continue to gallop on then to the top end of the course. So 16 letters and famous Claremont. They've gone clear now by around about eight, maybe ten lengths clear of Sykes, who's toiling, and Sastruga looks to be as though he's being pulled up. So the uh, 
leaders then are on the turn back towards us for the final time and are racing towards the third last now and uh, famous Claremont out over safely goes a couple of lengths clear then of 16 letters Sykes over in three Sastruga has been pulled up so the uh, leaders now racing down to the second last famous Claremont Will Biddock looking for winner number 50 of the campaign comes to it now out over safely got a little bit tight to it and uh, just just brush at the top of it, but he's clear from 16 letters. Sykes is a long way back in third, so the only dangers are probably in front now for famous Claremont. Kicked into it and asked up at the last, jumped it well. So they race down to the line then, and famous Claremont wins easily in the end. He's around about 10 lengths clear of 16 letters, and another 20 lengths back to Sykes. So there's our winner, the bookmaker that laid that enormous bet. If he was watching through fingers, he'd have wanted to put earplugs in as well because the commentary was very clear that the horse was uh, going pretty well from a long way out and success looked extremely likely. And there in the centre of your screen, the maroon colours, the blue sleeves, white star, very prominent on the body, on uh, Will Biddick the rider of famous Clermont and that one comes back ahead of uh, there he is just coming into the winner's enclosure now just behind just checking in on 16 letters who's that in the yellow and uh, Sykes well held on this particular occasion but um, famous Clermont look at the the form figures of this season a second early on in the season. That was at Barbary in the Open. Good, decent enough race that. Then Buckfast Lee, the intermediate, Charlton Hawthorne and Open, Hunter Chaser, Exeter. And um, then actually ran fine for a long way when pulled up last time. But um, a comprehensive winner here this afternoon in the sunshine at Upcross, Upcut Cross, one by 10 lengths. Well, to be honest, it could have been 110 lengths. Uh, well, no, it couldn't have been 110, but it, 10 lengths, it was a very comfortable 10 lengths, put it that way. It's probably the best way of describing it. And famous Clement, another success for Chris Barber, who's had a, a very good season and uh, plenty of success going in that particular uh, direction. And uh, well done to all involved. And as Mark Dennis said in commentary, uh, half century up for the season for Will Biddick, who lies... Uh, 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 he, the commentator says he thinks that's true. Well, if the point-to-point .uk -point, uh, uh, website is correct, then it's certainly true. Lying just second in the riders, cha Gentleman Riders' Championship, the Male Riders' Championship, with James King in first place. Well, we'll keep having a good look at the runners who uh, have completed that one lovely to see so many people wanting to crowd around the winners area to uh, have a look and in fact we can confirm the result with our caption there's just a, a feeling that once uh, there we are once this is with us for the Simpkins Edwards mixed open race love these captions hope you agree today lovely and clear uh, position uh, first horse number seven Horse name, famous Clermont, France. Will Biddick, the jockey, 2-1 to one on. Second, 16, 16 letters. Josh Newman, 2-1. to one. And third, 17 Sykes, Darren Edwards at 4-1. to one. Our caption's brilliant, but it doesn't say who the winning trainer is. So uh, we, therefore, flick our fingers and produce on our camera here Chris Barber, the uh, winning trainer. Well done. That was... That was. You heard that somebody's taken a right hit in the betting ring this afternoon. Oh, really? Somebody's turned up with... 
a considerable wad of money, Christ. stuck it all on your horse at a very short price, oh, and it's cost the bookie 800 quid just like that. Brilliant, love to see it. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. And this is a horse that you, you know, he's he's actually he's had a fantastic time. He actually ran well at Cheltenham when he pulled he, up, didn't he? Yeah, he he did. He just didn't. It all happened very quickly, and he didn't jump round Cheltenham, and it was all. It was just probably a year too soon for him, uh, experience-wise. Um, so that's why he's only seven, isn't he? Exactly, and we've got a long time to go. Um, and it was very much. He, I was had one eye on Stratford yesterday, and thought maybe. But then having a chat with Will and all the rest of it, we just felt like I'd rather finish the season on a good note, get his confidence up. And he goes into the summer full of it. Exactly, most yeah. definitely. And this was the horse that was very special for you when um, when winning at Exeter. Yeah, exactly. He's been a fantastic horse for me um, and for the owners. I mean, they picked yeah. him up very cheaply. It's their first horse they've had. Um, and I mean, who would have dreamt that we'd be very here? Very cheaply. How cheaply? Uh, Five thousand. Which you know, yeah, and if you can then go and win three races within a few, you know, few months, that's that's good business, isn't it? Most definitely. And I mean, he's just a pleasure to have, and I'm very lucky that the owners have stuck by me. They had an offer for him after Exeter, and they, they said, well, look, we've we've bought him as a fun horse. Let's enjoy him. Oh, good um, for them. So I'm I'm extremely lucky that they've kept him with us, and hopefully, I think we're just we're just getting going, and next year we can have a lot more fun with him. And a few of them are here today. Are they the sort that likely want to to uh, celebrate? Oh, most definitely. I mean, there's a whole team. Olive. Olive George Rogers' uh, daughter's there, his team mascot for yeah. Famous. Uh, Andy, another owner's up watching the rugby, so he's he's there with five pints and a picture already <laughs> come in, absolutely <laughs> delighted. So, And um, Alice is about to have a baby, so they couldn't make oh, it. Right. So, um, no, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant bunch of people and brilliant horse. And uh, how many is that for you now this season? It uh, feels 24, like a lot. Yeah. 24 winners. So, that's, now, so. That, that's, a, that's a nice nice number. It is, we've got to get that. That one more, 25, would be magic. Um, so to get fantastic. the quarter century. That, yes. And Biddick's just got the half century, I think, hasn't he, exactly. for, for the point of pointing. Exactly. Well, uh, hopefully that's one back on James as well. I'm not sure yeah. how James is getting on, but no. we're, we're very much... I'm... It's that time of the year when <laughs> everyone's looking at all the results, <laughs> it's isn't definitely, it? Definitely. All the time. Yeah. All the time. And yeah. uh, have you got anything else today, or is that... Uh... Uh, one more maiden, a four-year-old, who finished second oh, first right. time you out. And your, you and your four-year-old maidens, well... with all those weight allowances. <laughs> well, you I love know, having well, a go well, with them, don't you? No, well, you just got it. It's all very much it's a business. Remind me of the name. Uh, talking to the moon. Oh yes, oh, um, he was very Great green the first time. Well, we try to, try to. Um, but he's owned by Orton Stud, who stand peathers me in the stallion. So, oh, of course. Hopefully, he's a good advert for him. And hopefully, we we bang another one and we'll be talking to you again. Uh, and a few a few more runners between now and the end of the point to point season. Uh, a couple more. We're, we're, we are drying up a little bit more now. The ground's lovely here, isn't it? Exactly. They do a fantastic. They always do a fantastic job. John Hyde and everyone needs to be recommended for that because they always do a fantastic job, and hence why we always come here. They've got a trophy for you. You better go. Brilliant. Don't want Thanks to get into much. trouble for, you. for you talking too much. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Chris Barber there with, uh, with another success, uh, this time with famous Clermont, but uh, continuing a fine season. And Chris Barber, part of that extended Barber uh, dynasty, which has got uh, so many uh, good people and good horses that have uh, been part of that. Paul Nichols, the, uh, the, uh, the trainer at uh, Ditchett, where... Um, another member of the family, uh, Paul Barber is the owner, Richard Barber's in there, Jack Barber's in there, Barber's uh, around and about. And there are others I've missed out, for which I apologise. Uh, but uh, I've got the family tree just immediately in my head. Uh, but uh, lovely to see another member of the extended Barber family uh, with winners uh, here this afternoon. Well, it's not only about winners here. I saw a winner midweek at Newton Abbott, trained by a familiar uh, character in these parts. Uh, Tim Dennis, every time he sees a camera, he's very reluctant to walk past it, and he's with us now. <laughs> First time I spoke to you this year, actually. Chris. Oh, is it? All oh, right, but it, I bet Lucky it, you. I bet you couldn't stop talking at Newton Abbott after your win. No, 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 he's a very good day here. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Imperial Joe. Yeah, he uh, came second then at Weybridge when you. Um, yeah. And uh, old that was a bit of time ago. Uh, when was that? It was twelve months ago yeah. in uh, December. And we thought it was a ni we thought it was a nice enough race at the time, yeah, didn't we? Old Town Guard that won it as one in Ireland for Gordon Elliott. Elliot. Yeah. And we really fancied ours that day, and he's now I won. remember you walking around quite indignant you've been wow. beaten. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then um, the third... No one likes a one. trainer that likes being beaten. So, so the, No one likes a trainer that likes being beaten. Well, exactly. So that's winners is what it's about. Yeah. So then um, he had, a, he had a, a, a bad injury. Unfortunately, he broke his leg um, at home on the gallop, but my brother-in-law saved him, and we've had a couple of wins this year, so... Well, hold on. So Imperial, that was really bad. 
Yeah, he. Um, I've so thought. your brother-in-law is a very uh, Brian Amara. He's called. That's he's right, a yeah. very well-known horse Orth- surgeon. Yeah, orthopedic surgeon for equine orthopedic surgeon. And um, I thought we were going to lose him. And the local vets X-rayed him. And Brian, I look at the X-rays. He said, "Oh, I come down tomorrow. I should be able to screw his leg together." So uh, and he did. We put family rates. We well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we put we put two screws in his front leg and. Um, he hasn't looked back since. So. So, so that just goes to show, doesn't it? I was talking to a member of the Balding family the other yeah, day. We were talking about Mill Reef. Right. And Mill Reef uh, was saved in 1972, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Uh, but wouldn't have been saved a few years earlier. And presumably this is, a, you know, that science and medicine yeah, yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. is orthopedics have moved on so much. Well, you know, I mean, the x-rays got emailed up within sort of like five minutes of us having them. And Brian... Um, pulled in on, 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 on in a lay-by because he was travelling because he, he, he travels and he had a look at them on his phone because he had Wi-Fi and um, he said yes yeah, it's, it's 90% chance I'll be able to save him and thankfully he did and that happened when? Uh, roughly? 12 months ago last February right and then and when he won at Newton Abbott how many runs he he won in um, he won in March at Exeter over hurdles so yeah 13 months later he'd had a few run, three four runs and a, and a win yeah and so, uh, and win at Newton Abbott last week your, yeah. your your local track yes 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 so yes. that was um, that that must have been really quite a special day well uh, it's time frightening where time goes um Mick Fitzgerald, who was doing the the the, uh, the Sky Sports Sky. down yeah. there, he um, obviously commented on it. Mum said, last, yeah. last winner that she had then at Newton Abbott as an owner was in 2001, and Mick rode him. Really? Her. Yeah, because David was then um, riding for Ian Williams at Market Raisin or somewhere else. That's your else. brother. Yeah, and so Mick rode him, and he won on him, so... I was that trained by your dad? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, um, so yeah. oh, it's followed in the footsteps. It's quite neat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so... So, uh, and Imperial Joe, will that, that be here, I imagine? Or will he... I don't know. I, I think he likes um, just like... safe safe ground. I, well, something in nice my bones says that we might have a bit of rain soon, so... When? Well, I don't know. I just <laughs> think we will. The law of averages says we might. There was a bit this week, you know, that's yeah, why yeah. we've got quite a nice ground that's here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, it doesn't take much to turn these... Summer tracks where they consistently water. Yeah. So I, I just keep them taking over and yeah. see where we are. Well, well done. Thank and every, you. Uh, everything else good? Yes, thank you. Yeah, brother, yeah. brother sounding a very good voice doing the yeah, commentary yeah, this yeah. afternoon. Here with the, the kids. So, uh, All right, well, you better, let you, you better let you get back. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to help them. Les Jefford tack up his horses now. So, All right. The maidens. So. All right, well, I don't want to hold you back. No, no. I don't want to be shouted at by Les. Quite right. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Excellent. Lovely to see you. <laughs> One of the, uh, we were talking about, uh, about extended racing families with the barbers, well, the Dennises, uh, another one. Um, uh, Tim there talking about his mum Jill late dad Walter uh, Mark who's the commentator I was pointing up because he's got this crane thing that he uh, sits into uh, or stands in to commentate he's, uh, he's part of the Dennis family David uh, Dennis used to be a jockey now trains he's actually in hospital at the moment so if he's able to follow us by any chance best wishes to him this afternoon he'll be out soon happily and uh, sister Lucy as well, whose husband is this brilliant orthopaedic surgeon who saved Imperial Joe, and Imperial Joe won at Newton Abbott, whichever day Newton Abbott was. Was it Wednesday, Thursday uh, of this last week? Right, that brings you absolutely bang up to date, and uh, we're now going to look forward to the Dunbeer Mixed Open Race for Novice Riders, kindly sponsored by Dunbeer West Devon. And uh, I think we might, uh, well, the horse in the paddock, as you can see, we might just have a little caption for you. Uh, just to always think, I can, I can pass on information, but it becomes official uh, when we've got the caption, uh, which um, maybe we haven't got. But, oh, there we are. There it is. To Beau de Brise with Molly Landor riding that one. Four, Eric III and Chad Bayment. Five, finisher, Charlie Sprake on board. This is Novice Riders. So it's a mixed open race, but novice riders the important part of it. Six, Golden Poet uh, is uh, Alice Proctor. Nine, Rhythm is a Dancer. Great name, isn't it? Uh, Olive Nichols. Olive looking for, what, is it 11 wins? Yeah, I think she's looking for her 11th success of the season. She only started at the new year. And ten, River Myth, ridden by the very much in form Vinnie Webster. And uh, River Myth being a mayor gets an allowance and there are allowances as well uh, for Molly Landor and Chad Bayment under the conditions of this race those allowances 
being five pounds. So this, the Dunbeer mixed open race for novice riders. Uh, it was originally scheduled for 3.45, but uh, we're running half an hour late. So 4.15 is the approximate time, probably around about 10 or 11 minutes time. Right, we can take you to the paddock now and we can bring you Simon Knott as well, who will tell us uh, what's happening in the betting ring as we... Who's, who's our, who's our favourite for this one? Yep, favourite, another odds on shot. Rhythm is a dancer, four to six. So we're looking for number nine, Rhythm is a dancer, while you just um, quickly rattle through yep. the odds of the other ones. Uh, down the card, uh, Boda Brizaz, seven to one. Eric the third, eight to one. Finisher is a second in at seven to four. Golden Poet, ten to one. Rhythm is a dancer, four to six. And Rhythm Myth, seven. Excellent. And there is our strong favourite. Rhythm is a dancer. And uh, Rhythm is a dancer is uh, number nine on your cards. He's a nine-year-old horse as well, or nine-year-old gelding by Norse Dancer. Georgie Nichols trains. So the uh, jockey's mum is the trainer. Qualified via the Blackmore and Spartford Vale. Owned by Olive's dad, Paul Nichols, the champion trainer. And uh, we've got Rhythm as a dancer here. Oh, right next to us. Lovely shots of him. We can see him going up the side of the course. Um, by far the highest in this and one by 20 lengths at Cottlestone. The ladies open in great style. First season point pointer which uh, also won at Maysmore, won at Andoversford. Clearly played a big part in Olive's great season. When trained by Paul Nichols, won eight races. Was rated as high as 134. And three miles, which is the distance of this race on a flat track, which basically is this track, is just ideal. So no wonder Rhythm as a Dancer is a very strong favourite. Let's see if we can find number 10, Rhythm Myth, River Myth, like River Myth. Um, and River, River Myth is just coming behind me here. Uh, so if we can just, yeah, um, here we are. Uh, and River Myth We'll see her better side on. She's going to go to the start early in a second. But um, I love her. She's an 11-year-old mare. She's by Midnight Legend. She's a bit of a legend in her own right as well. Trained by Stuart Sampson. Qualified via the Tiverton Foxhounds. Terry Hamlin and John Gardner are the owners. And um, success in a, in a mixed open over the course and distance in 2021. It's won 12 races, I think it is. Thrives at this time of the year. Walked over at Cherry Brook, then very respectable runner-up to the informed footloose at Trevi Dannon. And then has been, and Vin, Vinnie Webster's on again today, has been part of Vinnie Webster's really good run, successful in a novice riders race at Hunnicutt at the beginning of the month. I've written in my notes about number 10 River, River Myth. Very likeable. And she is really likeable. And uh, she really looks the part. I think she's walking around here as though she knows her, she's a bit of a queen and her subjects have turned up to have a look and see um, see what she's like. Vinnie will be riding this one in the famous colours of uh, the Hamlin and Gardner colours, the, the red with the blue diamonds and the red cap. And although in the paddock at the moment, I think you'll find she just goes down to the starts a little bit earlier than the others. So, what well, and uh, her rider just appearing in the paddock right now. Another popular horse taking part in this race is number four, uh, Eric the Third. We'll see him in a second, but number ten has just arrived. Uh, oh no, that is Riven Myth. Sorry, that was number ten has just uh, came across our picture. So that's number four there. That is Eric, Eric the Third, thirteen-year-old. Another one by Mountain High, trained here, literally here by John Hurd, owned by the Herds and Friends qualified via the Eggersford Hunt. Um, first time um, there was a drama, wasn't there, when the horse lost the, the weight cloth was lost here on the May the 8th. Imogen's Thunder got the race. Plenty of creditable form this season, including Conditions Race, ridden by Jake Payment at Trevi Dannon, the second Trevi Dannon in April. Won a couple of races. I think I like him because he's called Eric. He's got a ni nice name. Um, and um, Eric um, uh, is a horse that was runner-up in this 12 months ago. So uh, Eric the third is uh, number four in this race. 
So what else are we looking for? We've seen Eric. Uh, number five finisher. Um, one just going uh, behind me now is, oh, that's Rhythm is a Dancer is going behind me. Over on the far side of the track, of the paddock. Uh, we've seen River Myth here. We've got, oh yeah, here's finisher. <laughs> Let's go racing. A little bit of almost American enthusiasm comes to Devon on this occasion. But here's finisher, seven-year-old by Street Cry, trained by Rachel Bartlett. Qualified via the Portman Hunt, ran on the flat, uh, ran for Kevin Ryan. Had plenty of experience uh, under all codes for Mark Gillard. Won a novice handicap hurdle at Doncaster early last year, rated 94. And actually, there was quite a lot to like about the first run for this trainer when only beaten a whisker at Cottlestone, with uh, Boda Brise in third place on that occasion in a, in a pretty fast time on the good ground that day. I think finisher, number five finisher, is definitely an interesting contender for this race. Right, uh, River Myth is being mounted uh, on the track and we'll go down ahead of the others as stated. We'll pick up some of the others in a moment, but let's, um, uh, let's pick up uh, Simon here with some... Um, I heard with. you talking about uh, finisher there. That's the one that they're opposing the favour with. I, I told you it was seven to four. It's been three to one. But it's been quite strong. Not big money, but, but steady money for that. Rhythm is a dance. So the book, the book Eastern City again beat eight to four to five now. And seven to one bar. So let's let's hear the others. Uh, Danny Carr, Boda Braz is seven to one. Eric the third eight. Finisher seven to four. Golden Poet ten. Rhythm is a dancer four to five. And Rhythm Myth seven. Excellent, and we'll hear more from Simon in a moment. As finisher just goes past us, there'll be easy colours to spot during the race. Uh, very white colours with, uh, with maroon diamonds. Following that one out onto the track is uh, Eric the Third in the yellow with the green cap. Uh, pretty yellow as well as Golden Poet. We'll have another look at Golden Poet in a second. Very white to easy to spot during the race is Beau de Brise. And uh, Rhythm as a Dancer, the checked colours of uh, the purple and white checked colours just going across the screen there but um, uh, that's rhythm as a dance of the colours of, of Paul Nichols. So they're streaming their way down to the start let's pick up with Mark. Number six that's Golden Poet ridden by Miss Alice Proctor dark blue with a yellow quarters yellow sleeves dark blue armlets and a dark blue cap. In behind this is number two, that's Beau de Brézé, ridden by Miss Molly Landu, red with the royal blue seams, royal blue sleeves, red armlets, red cap with a white star. The final one to get in is number nine, that's Rhythm with his dancer, ridden by Miss Olive Nichols, uh, violet and white checks with a white cap. And the uh, one that went down slightly early was number ten, that was River Myth, ridden by Mr. Vinnie Webster, red with the blue diamonds and a red cap. So those are the six runners then that go to post them for this uh, mixed open for novice riders. They are due away at uh, 3.20. So we're, sorry, uh, 4.15 and uh, we're about three minutes until post time. So the horses now all on their way to the three mile start um, we didn't see Boda Brise which is just the, the very light coloured horse, we'll pick that up in fact they all, as soon as we were just ready for them there they uh, made their way uh, back towards the starting point but the, the grey almost white horse by Capguard no less, is Boda Brise uh, same stallion as uh, Aplutar of course and Boda Brise has had a, a wonderful season, trained by Teresa Clark, qualified via the Taunton Vale Foxhounds, owned by the Notre Cheval Partnership. And, uh, and um, Boda, Boda Brise has had a busy time. This is his, uh, what, 10th race. Productive time as well, including wins at Barbary, um, Treby Dannon, uh, Cottlestone uh, in April, Hanukkah in May, some excellent runs in defeat. Good second at Larkhill on the 2nd of January. Trained by uh, Philip Hobbs in a previous life and won five races. Boda Brise, the very, just on the, um, on the left of the screen there, the very light coloured horse. Uh, we saw Eric, we saw Finisher. We didn't see number six, Golden Poet, 
at the start. Golden Poet, the rider in the dark blue and the yellow quarter colours. Just, just about nearly centre screen now. And uh, this one ridden by Alice Proctor. And uh, she's riding for her boss, Kieran Burke. And uh, this uh, Golden Poet, 10-year-old by Urban Poet, qualified via the Sevington Hunt. Won a bumper and a hurdle in Ireland. Has been with the Burke team for two or three years now. Hasn't won under rules, but has run well plenty of times. Suited by this kind of flat track. Having a very good time in point of points. Winning at Lark Hill. Ladies Open at Chilfroom, plus a walkover. Some other OK form as well. Bigger test here, but six Golden Poet has indicated there's every chance that he should be up to it. And then we've got Rhythm as a Dancer and River Myth. So we're not far off post time here. They go three miles for this mixed open for novice riders. And just to confirm from the website, the runners are two, Boda Brise with Molly Landor, four, Eric III with Chad Bayment, five, Finisher with Charlie Sprake, six, Golden Poet with Alice Proctor, nine, Rhythm is a Dancer in Olive Nichols, and ten, River Myth with the very much in form Vinnie Webster on board that one. Now the starter who's got a leg and a boot at the moment, is still moving pretty well on the going here. He goes for his flag, which is just about to be raised. So this is the Novice Riders mixed open, and Mark Dennis will describe it for us. It's quickly down, so we're away quickly then for this uh, start of this uh, mixed open from Novice Riders, and six runners and riders uh, take on the first of the 18 fences then, and Eric III uh, out over in the lead. A couple of lengths clear then, and... Uh, just in second, Rhythm is a dancer there. And uh, they race away then to the top end of the course. Uh, the uh, back marker in the uh, very early stages, Golden Poet, under Alice Proctor, ran about a dozen lengths off the lead then. As they uh, round the turn at the top end of the course and uh, begin their journey back towards us and on towards fence number two. So Eric the third just went a little bit wider there at that fence, but... Uh, his lead was just reduced. He's now switched uh, quite dramatically to the inside. Chad Bayman looks over his shoulder. You can see Rhythm as a dancer over on his, uh, on his outside, on his left. Boda Breze is in third, the grey. As they uh, cross the next then they're over that safely. Golden Poets improved on the outside, up to dispute fourth now. River Myth is next on the outside in the red colours. And back on the inside, at the back, is finisher under Charlie Sprake. So they take on fence number four then. And uh, with him as a dancer, just got a little bit tight to that, as did Eric the Third. Eric the Third ran here at the Eggersford meeting uh, about a month ago and uh, unfortunately was disqualified. The weight cloth um, was lost going up the back straight. But they've uh, taken the fence at the bottom of the home straight then and race away right handed now at the bottom end of the course. So uh, Rhythm is a dancer and Eric the Third, these two now. Uh, uh, stride, pretty much stride for stride at the bottom end. There are a length and a half clear then of Boda Brazé. And then to just showing on the inside in the fourth uh, finisher, River Myth and uh, Golden Poet on the outside as they uh, begin their run up the back straight in full. So uh, plain fence, open ditch and plain fence. And they come to the uh, first of the plain fences now. Come to it, Eric the third with a fraction of advantage there. Rhythm is a dancer. Jumps up on the outside under Olive Nichols. Olive on the 10 winner mark for the season. Pretty successful campaign for her first uh, year of point appointing. And a great jump there again uh, by the favourite. Rhythm is a dancer is the uh, odds on 2 to 1 on favourite. 6 to 4 is finisher. And then a whole host of them on 8 to 1. Uh, Golden Poet, the outsider. At uh, 10 to 1 then. So they've completed the circuit, passed their point of departure and on towards another uh, playing fence then. And they're all over that safely and uh, uh, continue on then to the uh, top end of the course. So Eric the third and Chad Baymont from uh, Rhythm as a Dancer on his outside. Boda Brazé uh, and Molly Landu in a clear third now. As they uh, continue their turn at the top end of the course, Golden Poet is next in four. Uh, River Myth and Vinnie Webster on the outside of Charlie Sprake and Finisher. As they turn back towards the stem, Charlie Sprake and Vinnie Webster, first and second. Charlie Sprake about six points clear of Vinnie. 
with uh, 38 points, spinning on 32 for the uh, Denman Cornwall Novice Championship. And uh, Vinny, a very good winner at the Stratford meeting last night. Uh, and on the say about it, uh, it really was a great win for a Denman Cornwall horse up there. Beat James King into second. So they race down to the next end. This will be the final fence in a circuit's time. And uh, Rhythm is Dancer. Jumped it nicely, nice and safe. Eric Gaffel on the inside. Boda Brazé is three. Uh, and uh, Golden Poet, four. Uh, River Myth is next, and Finisher is the one that's just becoming a little detached from the main group and ridden along by Charlie Sprake as they cross the next end. Rhythm is a dancer with a, a clear length and a half lead now as they leave the home straight behind them then and begin their turn at the bottom end of their course. Eric a third back in second. Boda Brazé uh, now joined on the outside by River Myth. A length back then to Golden Poet and a gap of about eight, uh, eight lengths back then to Finisher who's uh, still hard ridden by uh, Charlie Sprake. So they begin their run up the back straight then for the final time then. And it's the uh, odds on favourite. Rhythm is a dancer looking for uh, Olive Nichols' uh, length winner of the season. Comes to the first one in the back over over safely. River Myth now up into second. Looks to be travelling quite sweetly at the moment uh, for Vinnie Webster. And this is the open ditch then for the second and final time. And the leader there, a great jump out over it. Olive Nichols now keen to keep him up to his job out in front, River Myth in second, in behind this Boda Brazé is three, they've gone clear then of Eric the third, he just looks to be struggling to go with the pace now, Golden Poets also struggled and uh, uh, finisher has been pulled up, so the uh, leading quartet are over the uh, final one in the back straight then and uh, continuing their journey up uh, to the top end of the course then Rhythm is a dancer, is a, is a clear by around about uh, two and a half lengths to River Myth in second, Boda Brazé uh, now driven uh, back in third by uh, Molly Landu but uh, Rhythm and the dancer and uh, Olive Nichols looks over her shoulder, she's going to see uh, she's still got River Myth for company at the moment, so three out coming up then for Rhythm as a dancer out over safely, although River Myth now shaken up by Vinnie Webster and Boda Brazé back in three. They're a long way clear then of Eric III and Chad Baymont in fourth and uh, Golden Poet is next. So down to the second last now for uh, Rhythm as a Dancer. Out right over. Jumps out to his right slightly. Uh, River Myth in behind and Boda Brazé now uh, br finishing well on the outside as the leader then just runs around a little bit on the approach to the final fence but he comes down to it now. Rhythm as a Dancer right over safely. Boda Brazé though, now driven in second and uh, looks to be getting back on top for this leader as Rhythm as a Dancer has pulled, his, pulled himself up on the run to the line. River Myth is uh, back in third. Then we see Golden Poet and Eric the third. Well, that's close. Uh, I think by the reaction of some of the people here, the feeling is that uh, Boda Brise has got up on the line. It, it's, it's tight. And I, I saw the judge uh, uh, on his trailer earlier on, uh, and the judging team I'm looking over, they actually take a picture on a, on a device, uh, on an iPad or something like that, as they hit the line, just to be sure. But I think that there is a feeling that Molly Landau and Beau de Brise for Theresa Clark in the Notre Cheval partnership may have just got up to beat Rhythm is a Dancer and Olive Nichols. If, uh, if that is the case, it was right in the final, final strides of the race. So we await news from the judge of confirmation of the result there. Let's bring you some news now of our next race, the PRJ Engineering Maiden Conditions Race. We've got the runners out, our numbers six. That doesn't go, and nor does the bottom one, because it's run already 13. So in that race, there are going to be 11 runners, one of which uh, is Spike's Princess. And Spike's Princess is ridden by Megan Bevan, 
And I think Megan, oh, those are the just confirmation there of the runners. We'll use that caption again in a second because Megan's going to have to go and take part in the race in just a second. But uh, she's with us now. And I remember it was one of the interviews of the uh, of the live stream last year. Did you ride your first winner at Bracken Down? Yeah, first winner at Bracken Down. You were quite Down. pleased, as yeah, I recall. Yeah, no, I was very pleased with that. Yeah, there he is. What, what could... was his name? What's his name? Yeah, yeah. that's it. He so you thought when I was about to say what's his name, you were going to say what? We that, were, it was yeah, a whole comedy routine, that, wasn't it? Yeah, that is his name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he gets so, that a lot. How, so, uh, and how have things been since then? Oh, very good. Um, he's been brilliant for me. He's um, recently won at the Barclay point to point um, about five or six weeks ago, which was, you know. Is that Woodford? Something. Yeah, Woodford, yep, yep. yep. Uh, he, he won well there. Um, and then that set him up nicely for a Hunter Chase around Newton Abbott where he, he also won that. It was a, a match with just one other, but yeah, still well, a win, they, they all can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They all can. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah, on Wednesday, he came second again at Newton Abbott in a Hunter Chase. Oh, right. Oh, good. Yeah, how many so runners were there on? Um, oh, I think there was about eight or nine. Yeah, there were. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. It, was, it was a proper I race. I thought you were about to do a, a, a hilarious punchline <laughs> that there were only two runners. But, Not uh, this time. No. <laughs> uh, and what about Spike? So you've got Spike's Princess in this um, maiden conditions race coming up. Yeah. So the now the form figures, Megan, are an F and a P. So yeah. you're still smiling. I'm still smiling. You know, um, she she'll run well. Um, just waiting for everything to fall into place. Really, she had a long layoff. Um, she's been off the track for probably about two years. Um, when she ran at Cottlestone, where she is her first run out, so she's a bit keen. Um, you know, then she did end up coming down. And then the other day, I I don't think she liked the ground very much. Where bit, was that? A bit slippery. Um, that new course is it South, South Hill? Oh yeah. Yeah, um, she yeah she didn't like the ground too much, um, so I pulled her up. Right, um, but right. I think she'll like the ground today. So she'll, you know. she'll be primed for the lovely Hopefully. ground on a lovely course Hopefully. here. At Hopefully, Africa. exactly. They've done a lovely job. Lovely yeah. job here. Yeah. Well, I, I have a feeling that whatever happens, win, lose or draw, the smile will be broad. Oh, it'll still be there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, it was lovely to see you last year, and I'm so pleased that it continues to uh, go well. And best of luck here. Perfect. Thank you very lovely much. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Not hold you up any longer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. There's uh, Megan Bevan who will ride Spike's Princess in our next race, the PRJ Engineering Maiden Conditions Race. It's just looking at the conditions for horses which are maidens, which have run in at least two point-to-point -point races, including point-to-point -point flat races. So that is uh, the situation there. Uh, and there was, was there quite, yeah, there's a couple of riders. Uh, have we got that caption, actually? We were going to give you that caption earlier on, but then Megan turned up for a chat yeah there we are let's just confirm uh our riders here uh businessman isn't now ridden by darren edwards so that is a a change of rider number one businessman now ridden by michael mcintyre uh martin mcintyre michael mcintyre someone quite different who if he was riding in a in a maiden conditions race at upkick cross there would be a crowd uh, for it and there would be some gags as well but number one businessman is ridden by martin mcintyre flyer mcintyre so, um, two celebrate with Zoe Hawkins, and that's a... Ch ah. Right, just getting confirmation before we go on uh, that Boda Brise uh, did get up there. A neck in it at the end, and, and the time 6.37, and the distance between second and third was three lengths. But uh, Rhythm is a Dancer, caught close home by Bo de Brise, trained by Teresa Clark. The Notre Cheval partnership qualified via the Taunton Vale hunt. Molly Lando on board uh, and uh, Beau de Brise, the very light coloured horse, which is, uh, you can, amidst all the people there gathered round, you can see Beau de Brise on the extreme left of your picture. Well done to all concerned. We'll get starting prices in just a moment for that one. But we needed to confirm that result in full for you. Right, so now we can. Can we go back to that? Um, they just the, the confirmation of the runners for our fifth race, and we will do that in just a sec. Right there we are. So as I've said, it's going to be Fly McIntyre on Businessman, but Zoe Hawkins on Sillerbrook. Two shades of blue, the colours there. Three Daisy Yates with Will Biddick riding that one. Uh, had his 50th winner of the season a few minutes ago. Four Frontier Lad with Charlie Marshall. Full spares. Heidi Lewis, Henry's regime of Woodward. Now, Darren Edwards rides uh, Jimmy Chu uh, in this race. Uh, then Kate Slane uh, with uh, Ella Herbison, Josh Newman on Lucky Lara, Pixie Cops and Charlie Sprague. And as we've said, Spike's Princess 
with Megan Bevan. So a chance quickly to reflect on that last race. Uh, one by Boda Brise by a neck in a thrilling finish. And one of the owners uh, of, from the Notre Cheval partnership is Philip Brown, who's with us now. Come nice and close to the mic so we can hear you, Philip. Uh, were you sure you got up? I, uh, no. it, was, it was tight, no, wasn't it? No, And the longer the judge took yeah, to make absolutely. the declarations. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh, I, but, how, but that was marvellous. You know, the, 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 um, the runner-up was hot favourite with all its credentials, but you've got up to beat it. Will, Will's ridden him all the season to win, um, well, three races and a walkover. Um, he's a bit quirky. Right. I'm Philip Hobbs' vet and have been for 40 years, and we bought him from Philip last right. year. Um, I know everything about him, so I looked after him for five years. Oh, right. And he's been an absolute star for us. Yeah. Very consistent, as you can see. Look at the um, form figure, and he turns out all the time. He does. Yeah. He likes this ground, he likes the sun on his back. Um, we decided that he's, he's finished with conditions, he should have to carry 12 stone 9, so right. we've got to go open. Yeah. And we took our chance on Mo Molly Landau. Yeah. Molly. Why did you go for Molly? Because she helps Teresa Clark out, right. our trainer. She rides out weekends when she's back from doing a day job. Well, um, her, remind me of her day job. Andrew Balding, I think. Oh, right, right, um, right. So she's ridden a winner on the flat and, and over hurdles. Right. But hadn't got the five, so hadn't got the five winners, so claims the five. So he only carried 11.9 today. Whoa. Uh, how important was that? Very important, yeah. I think, as it turns out, wouldn't yeah. it? You know. and, and a word about Teresa as well. Absolute uh, she, star. Yeah, yeah. I've had horses with her, the partnership have had horses with her for right. probably 10, 11 years right. now. Works her heart out at all times, as do a lot of point-to-point -point trainers. Oh, of course they do. For, very li for days like this, yeah. when you can actually turn around and say, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. She thinks out of the box, she gets into the head of most of her horses, and this horse goes to the beach at Breen, he goes swimming, he goes chasing deer on the Quantox, I probably shouldn't say that, but... Um, no, you shouldn't, but... Uh, <laughs> there's uh, no that's dogs. what there's, he'd like to there's, do, there's, but he's there's not no allowed dogs, to do. Yeah, there's no dogs. <laughs> um, he, he is trained, if you want, in a little feral way, yeah. rather than going up and down the gallops But look all day. how well it works. It works with him, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Well, look, what, look, well done. And there is a few of you owners here today. Six. This, Six of us. This will be well celebrated. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you've fantastic. had lots to celebrate all season. So well done to all of you. And Thank you very much. Thanks, indeed. thanks Thank for coming and having indeed. a chat as well. Uh, lovely to hear. Beau de Brise then winning. Don't think we've had a starting price yet, have we? But we'll get one uh, very shortly. In fact, we have got the starting prices uh, for that uh, success for Beau de Brise. There we are. 12 to 1, I hope that they, the owners, they all back the horse as well. So um, with less than, with less than, and, and that's just confirmation that the, the result is indeed official because uh, the weighed in has been given here on the track. One by number two, this is race four, number two, Beau de Brise with Molly Landor at 12 to 1. Crucial that she was able to claim a five, five pound allowance having not ridden five winners. 12 to 1, Beau de Brise. Second number nine, Rhythm is a dancer, four to seven, seven to four on favourite with Olive Nichols. There'll be other, there'll be other days for Rhythm is a dancer. Uh, and then the third horse home, number 10, River Myth with Vinnie Webster at odds of 17 to two. So that is race four sorted out for you. I have a feeling, I don't think I've invented this. I think Molly is the daughter of uh, Guy Landor, who was an uh, uh, excellent rider of yesteryear and one that used to ride that marvellous horse trained by, with an impossible looking name, trained by Stan Meller, called L-E-A-N, new word A-R, new word A-G-A-I-G-H. I think Lanarai, but people used to call it Lean on the Arga. It was easier. Uh, and uh, I think, well, Guy Lando certainly rode that horse and I suspect Molly is daughter of and might well have graduated from pony racing, which uh, is, we were going on about that earlier on in the day, how important that was. Loudspeaker has suddenly got an awful lot louder, hasn't it? But hopefully you can hear us on the live stream. We're live from the South Tetcote Point to Point at uh, Upcut Cross uh, in Devon. Uh, and this live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall Point to Point area. We've been on the go with these live streams. It's the cutting edge of point to pointing live streams. We've been on the go 
throughout this season and indeed throughout uh, last season as well. I think uh, we would have started at Ottery St Mary at the end of October, but the weather intervened. We've been to Dunsmore, we've been to Wadebridge, we've been to Buckfast Lee, we've been here before, we've been to Fleet Park, uh, we've been to Cherrybrook, we've been to other places I've missed out. Uh, but uh, there are lots of people coming point to point in, which is great. But this is a great opportunity presented by the Devon and Cornwall point to point area for you to follow this this wonderful sport, uh, this historic sport and all its heritage from the comfort of wherever you happen to be. Hope it's not in a traffic jam. Hopefully it's in a comfy armchair. And uh, these are the type of pictures that uh, we have been bringing to you throughout the season. And that's num uh, this is number three in this race, Daisy Yates, ridden by Will Biddick. And uh, Daisy uh, is one of nine... Uh, is one of 11 runners who are taking part in this race. Dad, uh, earlier on, I could hear myself think quite happily, but for someone's just um, put an extra 50p in the meter, I think, and uh, so, the, um, so the, the noise has become enormous. But hopefully you can hear all. And there's Daisy, Daisy Yates. She's a six-year-old mare. She's by Yates, National Hunt Stallion at the moment, trained by Sarah Prowse, uh, owns her as well. Qualified via the Silverton Hunt, well beaten fifth in a course and distance maiden. Won by Liberty Rock, who's won again today uh, towards the beginning of the month. That form so far, something on which to build. Number three, Daisy Yates. So um, we might get some betting news. Simon's here. Um, and um, I'll tell you what, rattle through the betting because we don't want to hold up the last winning rider. OK, businessman, 8-1, to one, Sillibrook 14, Daisy Yates 4, Frontiers Lad 2, Full Spies 8, Henry's Regime 4-1, to one, Jimmy Chu 4-1, to one, Kate's Lane 5-2, to two, Lucky Lara 7-4 to four favourite, Pixie Cops 5-1 to one, and Spikes Princess 12-1, to one, but prices are going to be bigger if you search around. Well done, thank you very much indeed, as um, we, I hope, say hello to the winning trainer, uh, winning jockey of our last race. We've heard from one of the winning owners who told us about the five pound allowance and how important that that turned out to be. And Molly Lando has won the race. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Did you know you'd won? I, I thought I had, yeah. I had yeah. a little look over and yeah, I could see yeah. I could win, yeah. And um, your, your owner was saying earlier on, you haven't, you've ridden a flat winner. Uh, uh, two, how many do you have before today? Two flat winners? No, two um, hurdle winners. Two hurdle winners. Yes. Right. And so less than five, so you could claim a five pound allowance. Yeah. And you won by yeah, exactly. a few inches. Yeah, makes big difference yeah. with that five pounds off. Excellent, yeah. excellent. And, and uh, your first point to point winner? Yes, first yeah. point to winner, yep. So that's, that is, you know, t tell us how excited you are about that. Oh, it's so great, especially to do it for Teresa, because I've been riding up for Teresa since I was about 10, and she's helped my riding basically right. the whole time. And she's just, I'm so grateful for everything she does. And to put me on a horse like him, it's just amazing because yeah. he's a great little horse. He's, he can be tricky to ride, but I think he quite liked having a novice rider on his back, not <laughs> bossing him about. <laughs> so, yeah. so when you say can be tricky, in what way? He, um, he, doesn't, he sometimes just comes out your hands, gets in there tight sometimes. Like he's, but otherwise, he's, he's a lovely, lovely horse. Yeah. Oh, well, that was, that was great. Will, Will Biddick, the one and only, has been riding him, hasn't yes, he? Yes, yeah, I managed to steal the ride off Will yeah. for the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely to see uh, the horse in a... In a in, in, so it's an open race, but for novice riders, which yes. is a nice little condition, gives, gives a nice opportunity. Yeah, definitely for those older, older horses who have got lots of wins on their name. It just makes a big difference, really, having that five pounds off in, a, in an open. So, yeah. And what, what point did you think you were going to get there? The line, <laughs> yeah, just just Spoken started like running a true on. Jockey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and just clarify two things. Your surname's Lando. Yes. Does that make you Guy Lando's daughter? Indeed, it well, does. Well, otherwise, I'd have been talking a lot of rot earlier on. <laughs> I'd have been, and we were we were recalling on the program earlier. Lana Rye was a great horse that he rode yeah. yesteryear. So, oh well, lovely that you're keeping that going. And you work? Do you work at Kingsclear? Yes, I'm now down at Andrew Boardings right. for the summer. Yeah. Well, that's quite a that's yeah. quite an academy. Really, uh, really an academy exciting to be down there. At. They've just just got shy of 300 horses. So. Right. 
It's massive. Never yard. boring. No, exactly. Always something something going on anyway. And I get the impression that uh, the floodgates from Kingsclear are, are going to open very soon. Yeah, there are lots yeah. of winners already, but they're going to be lots yeah. more. Royal Ascot in a couple of weeks' yeah. time anyway. Yeah. Excellent. Well, look, congratulations <laughs> Thank today. Thank you very much. Lo lovely to see and uh, lovely to see keeping up the family tradition as well. <laughs> Thank you. Super. Lovely to see Molly Lando with us at uh, Upkit on the live stream uh, this afternoon. Right, we better concentrate now on our race five because, you, as you can see, the uh, runners are in the paddock behind me. The one I'm very keen to find here is number 10, Lucky Lara. And Lucky Lara is... Where are you, Lara? Um, she's uh, a pretty strong fancy in the betting. Oh, there she is. She's over on the far side of the track. There we are right in the center of your picture now so we'll stick with lucky lara so we might just need to swing the camera a little bit there we are and um this lucky lara uh is by marla L lara by marla josh newman trains this one himself qualified via the blackmore and spartford vale trains it for terry hamblin no luck in a couple of hunter chases but has shown signs plenty of signs of promise clearly in good hands uh, under the care of Josh Newman and probably significant that uh, the horse uh, if we were looking for some significance we'd be looking at the betting because the horse looks magnificent today and the two to one favorite is Lucky Lara it was two to one favorite anyway when last we heard so lovely to see that one just behind Lucky Lara is number eight Jimmy Chu oh what a star Jimmy is Jimmy's been around a bit nine-year-old by flying legend Look at all that form that uh, he's got this season. Trained by Janet Ackner, qualified via the Devon and Somerset Staghounds. Trains this, the owner is Ian Howe. Place 9 out of 26, Jimmy Chew, but remains a maiden. Lots of decent enough runs this season, including a third in a similar race to this at Cottlestone on the 11th of May. So in good hands in terms of the jockey as well. And possibly interesting, I'm not sure, but... Um, Darren Edwards was jocked up on businessman as well, but he's opted to ride uh, this Jimmy Choo number eight on your card. So uh, that is the situation. Let's see some more of these in the paddock. Uh, just behind, uh, is behind number eight, Jimmy Choo is number four, and uh, four is Frontier's lad or Frontier's lad by Saint Frontier. Uh, Hannah Clark trains, qualified via the South Dorset Hunt and uh, looks as though might benefit from the run when just over 10 lengths fourth behind Grove Ash in a maiden at Stafford Cross, end of April. Daisy Yates behind on that occasion. That was uh, a first race since um, debut at Mollington on, in April. Frontier lad, only a five-year-old probably got a little bit more to give as well number four on your card this is the most packed i've seen a paddock with jump racing under rules or in point of points for some time um as you know field sizes have become a little bit of an issue but lovely and i suspect the reason for this is the ground which has received plenty of plaudits this afternoon that uh, there were 11 entries in this race and there have been plenty of Races over jumps under rules and over jumps in pointer points where 11 entries have turned into a relatively small field. But it's an absolute doff cap to the officials here that uh, the good, good to soft in places or the good to soft good in places ground has attracted plenty of runners. And as you can see, the latest of them just coming around here, who are we looking at? Well, with the, the groom with the hoop sleeves, uh, that is number one. And that is Businessman. Uh, businessman is by Milan. Les Jefford trains. Les Jefford, who's being aided by Tim Dennis in saddling this afternoon. As Tim told us earlier on, he had to dash off and help with the saddling of Businessman. Les qualified this via the Axvale Harriers. Amanda Hill and Shirley Cork are the owners. Finished fifth in this last year, beaten just under 20 lengths. Decent enough race last year. Um, that was part of a quite promising time this time around not quite if one's brutally honest not quite so promising so far may well have needed the run at Cotley and was prominent in the betting and also prominent in the race 
until unseating the rider on a bend around halfway last time. So probably forget the U. The P was a good first start. So maybe I'm being, I was being a little unkind there, actually. I, I expect that some, some solid enough efforts to build on and better can be expected from businessman today. And if you're following via the pointtopoint.co.uk website, that's now written by Martin McIntyre. And I promise you, I'll buy the team here a drink if I mention a Saturday night BBC One comedian one more time. Uh, though Martin would probably think it's very funny and also, I guess, has heard it plenty of times before. Um, probably deliberately as well, as opposed to my slip of the tongue. Anyway, horses continue to go round in the paddock and Simon is returning with uh, more news I think, from the betting ring. Well, the, fir the first bit of news, the, the last race we watched here, how confident were you that the winner won? Totally. Totally. You could have bet even money in the betting ring with two bookmakers and bottle on with another one. Well, they, they couldn't wait to give it away because the odds-on favourite looked oh, like right. it might be even yeah. money you could have had. So come racing. Oh, um, come. This race, nobody knows. Oh, right. Nobody knows anything. Um, a little bit of money for businessman, eight into six. Silla Brook open 14 out of 25. Daisy Yates is seven. There's been a whisper for that, but no money. Uh, Bid Biddick's on that. Yeah, well, that'd that might be, be stronger. That, yeah. Uh, Frontiers Lad, five. Uh, Full of Spies, touch 16. Down to eight again, but we're talking, you know, modest money. Uh, Henry's Regime, four to one out to seven. Uh, Jimmy Chu is a seven to one chance. Katie's Lane, three to one. Lucky Lara, the nine to four favourite, but open seven to four. Pixie Cops, open five, now 16. And Spikes Princess, open 12, out to 25. Nobody knows. Well, I'll tell you what, in terms of, look, I like, I like Daisy Yates in terms of, she's quite easy to back though, didn't you say, Daisy? She's easy to back, but somebody that's very clever, to, you know, said they really fancied her. Plus, you got Biddick on, but it's drifting, so there's yeah. no serious money. Right, but, well, you better get back just in case there's some marvellous value. Excellent, lovely to uh, hear from Simon again and uh, our announcer once again with his enthusiastic Let's Go Racing. So they'll be coming out onto the track fairly shortly. Uh, I can see that Mark Dennis is just being put in his crane, our commentator, to uh, get uh, an elevated... <laughs> I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, this crane, it's not the smoothest um, ascension that Mark's ever done. Oh, it's better now. But it was just a bit wobbly a second or two ago. And... Um, I'll tell you what, for the, for the benefit of those of you just joining us, I'm going to uh, uh, get Josh, the cameraman, just to switch his camera around so we can actually see where Mark is as the horses are mounted by their riders in the paddock. Uh, and if the technical team will bear with us, yeah, there he is. He's going up in the air. And I don't know whether, Josh, you can just give an idea of how high he is by just swinging the camera down a bit. Or, yeah, so that's how high up Mark Dennis is. Uh, happily, he has a head for heights and he has a voice for point to point commentaries and he's been an excellent voice uh, all afternoon. Thank you to Josh uh, for that uh, as we go back to the horses. Uh, and, um, but I just wanted to give you an idea. That is what he, and he spends. There was there was I can't remember whether it was at the last meeting. Either he was down and wanted to go up and the runners were leaving the paddock or he was up and wanted to come down uh, and um, uh, he, he couldn't find his man to do it, but um, uh, it's a really good vantage point, and I'm sure you agree. He's uh, giving some excellent descriptions here this afternoon because conditions actually are really bright, and it's not it's uh, to, to actually be able to spot them is not necessarily all that straightforward. Anyway, the first of the horses will be leaving the paddock. In fact, the first of them is being given the signal to go to the post right now. And there's the Huntsman signal as well. So um, let's hear uh, Mike Dennis describe them down. J Engineering Maiden Conditions Race. The runners now on their way out of the paddock. And the first one we're going to see out is number 10. That's Lucky Lara, ridden by Mr. George Newman. Purple to yellow stars, hoop sleeves, yellow cap with a purple star. Next out is number four, Frontiers Lad, ridden by Mr. Charlie Marshall. Black with a white hoop, half sleeves and a black cap. In behind this, we see number one, that's Businessman, ridden by Mr. Martin McIntyre, blue with a white chevron, red sleeves and a red cap. Following this one out will be number 12, that's Spike's Princess, ridden by Miss Megan Bevan, green with the yellow sleeves and a black cap. Then comes number seven, Henry's Regime, ridden by Mr. Mervyn Woodward, and that's uh, blue with the white hoops, red sleeves and a white cap. 
Following this one down will be Pixie Cops, number 11, ridden most of Charlie Sprake, dark green with a yellow star, dark green sleeves, yellow stars and a dark green cap. Next out is number nine, that's Kate Slane, ridden by Miss Ella Herbison, and em emerald green with the yellow sleeves and a beige cap. Then comes number two, that's Sillabrook, ridden by Miss Zoe Hawkins, change of colours here, this is blue and a light blue Diablo, a light blue cap, and blue sleeves. Following this one down is number three, that's Daisy Yates, ridden by Mr Will Biddick, yellow with a black epaulets and sleeves, and a black cap with yellow spots. Then we see number five, that's Full Spez, ridden by Miss Heidi Lewis. And that's royal blue with the red cross belts, red sleeves and a quartered cap. And the uh, final one to go down is number eight, that's Jimmy Two, uh, ridden by Miss Darren Edwards. That's white with a dark uh, blue triple diamond and sleeves. So 11 go to post them for this uh, conditions race. They are due away at uh, 4.50. And uh, we are about a minute until post time. So post time will not be very far hence. The horses at the starting point. Interesting to hear Simon say that there was there was nothing that he was getting. He could say was getting really uh, exciting in the betting ring. There are a few horses that uh, are of interest. Businessman is certainly one who's got some fair form. Yeah, I was being unkind to that horse earlier on. The unseated rider last time was somewhat luckless on a bend for number one businessman. Businessman ridden by Martin McIntyre in, um, in quite white colours with a bit of dark about them. Businessman. Sillabrook there, mare by Great Pretender for the Hawkins family. Navy and light blue... Um, colours navy blue and lighter blue colours 33 to 1 and right in the hunt when fell at the ninth fence about halfway through here on the 8th of may well beaten in a bumper a couple of years ago under rules three daisy yates looks the part daisy six-year-old mare by yates no less were well beaten uh, behind liberty rock uh, over the course and distance on may the 8th but that that's not that's pretty decent something to build on Frontier Lad definitely has got um, has shown a bit of promise. The Grey is Full Spez by Alna Mix for Heidi Lewis, qualified via the Lamerton Hunt. The fifth at the second Weybridge in January was okay for Full Spez. The blue colours with the red cross belts, that one. Henry's Regime, uh, Merv Woodward, uh, trains uh, and owns it as well, along with John Cole. Hasn't won, but gradually building up a bit of a profile, Henry's Regime. The, was it second last time? Uh, second time before last wasn't bad at all. Both the last two have been quite respectable. Jimmy Tew, well, he's a long-term maiden, but he's run plenty of OK races. Kate's Lane, bits and pieces of interest for that one. Gives a run for the money from the front every time, number nine. Kate's Lane in green colours with yellow sleeves and a lighter coloured cap. Uh, Lucky Lara, Josh Newman riding that one. He trains uh, that one as well. Qualified via the Blackmore and Spartford Vale. Uh, shown signs of promise. Pixie Cops. Uh, it's a five-year-old mare for Danny Keneally. Uh, very much on a learning curve at the moment. And Spike's Princess. We heard about Spike's Princess. Fell at Cottlestone after a long break in a restricted. Pulled up last time again in a restricted. Um, and um, no, no, no particularly obvious chance, but a bit of a chance, I think, is likely. But let's, um, let's Simon, have we got a, uh, an update from the... The ring, is anything sort of just rearing its head a bit more than the yeah, others? Th th um, sort of expected it. Daisy Yates is now a 5-1 to one from 7-1. to one. Late money for that. I think the guy that tipped it up to me backed it along the line. So, right. make it interesting. So, Daisy Yates by Yates. And that's the yellow colours with the black. Will Biddick riding that one. So, just confirm, businessman is Martin McIntyre now, not uh, Darren Edwards. Will Biddick on number three. Uh, Daisy Yates, but the other riders are as stated, and a couple of non-runners, number 6 doesn't run and number 13 doesn't run either, so the starters flag is raised, ready to go So we are away so they jump away from the start then for this uh, conditions maiden race and uh, on towards the first of the 18 fences Jimmy 2 with the uh, lead as they approach it, businessman also up there 
Limb Runners and Riders, biggest field of the day so far, and uh, Pixie Cove was the one that catch up that. Was very slow out over it and uh, was quickly relegated to the back marker spot then of the uh, 11. Then as they leave the uh, back straight behind and uh, begin their turn at the top end of the course. So Jimmy Two, businessman, races up there. Also on the right side, Sillabrook is also up there in the front rank. Full Spez also there, disputes third as they uh, prepare then to leave the ground for the second time. They're over that uh, safely and uh, now settle down to make their descent down to another plain fence. So Jimmy Two and uh, Darren Edwards lead them down towards it. On his outside, uh, we've got Businessman, Full Spez and Sillibrook. On the inside, Henry's Regime under Mervyn Woodward. Kate's Lane's Rod in mid division under Ella Herbison. Following these through is the uh, favourite, two to one favourite, Lucky Lara under Josh Newman. Frontiers Lads next on the inside under Charlie Marshall. Daisy Yates is next, Will Biddock. And uh, Pixie Cove at uh, the back marker and around about a dozen lengths off the lead then as they pass the judge. Two circles ahead on the race and down towards uh, another plain fence at the bottom of the home straight. And uh, they're all laid over that safely. And again, um, Pixie Cops was a, a little bit sticky out over it and was just giving a good shake of the reins on landing there by uh, Charlie Sprague. So uh, decent galloping set away from the uh, front flag for them as they've almost completed their turn at the bottom end of the course and uh, uh, facing up to go up the back straight uh, in full for the first time. Sillabrook now just with the lead under Zoe Hawkins but only fractionally. Full Spares and Heidi Lewis are also up there. Jimmy Choo's run up the inside, and uh, Businessman following them through on the inside is Henry's Regime and Kate Slane as they cross the next there, and Henry's Regime made a, a real mess of that, gave it a mighty whack, and uh, Merv Woodward did very well there to uh, stay in the plate as they take on the open ditch then for the first time, these maidens, and... Uh, and the one that made an error at that was uh, Frontier's lad. Charlie Marshall gives, it, gives him a little bit of a wake-up call for his trouble. And is relegated to the back marker of the main group. As um, Pixie Cops is uh, now becoming detached under Charlie Sprake. As they uh, completed the circuit then. And they're over that playing fence at the top of the uh, back straight. And uh, continue on then to the uh, top end. Jimmy Chu on the inside. Sillabrook on the outside, and uh, Kate Slane follows these through. Businessman is also up there in the uh, front rank as they uh, take the turn then. It's going to bring them back towards us uh, uh, for the second time and on towards these uh, plain fences in the home straight. So Jimmy Chu on the inside, Businessman a little bit wider out right with full spares. They're a line of three up front as Sillabrook has been pulled up uh, on the outside of that fence. And uh, they, they uh, continue to descend back towards us then and down towards these, uh, these two downhills. And uh, Jimmy Chu on the inside, full spares on the outside, businessman in between them. They're a line of three up front. Kate Slane's on the inside. A little bit wider out then is uh, uh, Spike's Princess and uh, Megan Bevan. In between them then is uh, uh, Lucky Lara as they cross the next end. That'll be the final fence in a circuit's time. Henry's regime just given a, uh, a reminder there and ridden along by Mervyn Woodward fairly vigorously. And uh, uh, Pixie Cups has been pulled up. So they're down to the final plane fence in the home straight then in this uh, maiden. And Jimmy Chu was asked for a uh, one there, and Darren Edwards got a good one from Businessman and Martin McIntyre on his outside. And uh, Full Spares a little bit wider out in third. Lucky Laura's now up on the inside into fourth. Clear fourth now from Kate Slane, who races on the inside of Sparks Princess. A length and a half then back to Daisy Yates. About three lengths then back to... Uh, Henry's regime, the back marker, and under strong pressure now, again from Mervyn Woodward, as they begin their run up the back straight then for the final time 
in this uh, open maiden and on towards the playing fence they come then Jimmy Chu from full spares good jump there by full spares to just take a fractional advantage two lengths then back to lucky Laura who's uh, back in three joined on the outside by spikes princess Daisy Yates is also on the move that was the ditch then uh, for their final time and they're out over safely Kate Slane was the one that's uh, a little bit left toiling now in their wake and uh, Henry's regime has been pulled up so uh, things bubbling up nicely up front with full spares with the advantage as they come to the final one in the back straight but a half length clear of Jimmy Choo on the inside on the outside lucky Lara then Spikes Princess is next Daisy Yates appears to have cracked back in fifth then as they uh, prepare then to leave the back straight behind them then and uh, race right handed so full spares with the advantage Jimmy Choo now been shuffled back to third as uh, lucky Lara goes up on the outside of full spares to just take a, an advantage now goes a couple of lengths clear readily under Josh Newman as they race then to the third last three out coming up then for Lucky Laura head over from full spares Jimmy two back in three hasn't cracked yet in behind this we see Spikes Princess back in four and they're the only four that remain in this open maiden then so they're racing down they look to be getting a little bit weary these four as they come down to the second last then so Lucky Laura out over safely from full spares Jimmy Chu just maybe coming back for a bit more on the outside under Darren Edwards so they race down now to the final fence in this uh, maiden race Lucky Laura the favourite comes to it jumps it safely now they settle down and run down to the line so Lucky Laura by about four or five lengths now to the game full spares Jimmy Chu's back in three and uh, Spikes Princess will finish in four So, uh, the, the betting market was just struggling to make head nor tail of it all. Uh, but uh, the one they made the favourite, and there must have been a move at some stage for her, was Lucky Lara. Lucky Lara completing a double for Josh Newman. He trains this one himself, and he rode it too. And uh, we'll get a look at that horse in just a, a second or two's time. But uh, Jimmy Chu's run with credit again, finishing... Uh, in, a, in a decent position but um, not able to win and a couple of other decent runs as well but um, although the commentator quite rightly said they were getting weary some of these just actually seeing a whole lot of them that were all pulled up during the race uh, one of those was businessman another of those was uh, number nine Kate's Lane was pulled up another one pulled out was Pixie Cops as well so there were a few where the uh, another one pulled up as well Sillabrook uh, a few where um, you know they 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 set quite a test these these leaders here, and uh, in the end, plenty of them were, just weren't up to staying in touch. And there's our winner, getting pats down the neck, pats on the bottom as well, on, on the horse's flanks. Just uh, don't move our camera too far. Let's let's see our winner. Yeah, there we are. No. Just coming in now. I'll... So the judges We're so our winner, Lucky Lara, the purple colours with the there we are with the yellow stars. We heard from Kaylee Wellicker earlier on, partner of Josh Newman, the winning trainer and rider, and good success for this Lucky Lara, and uh, she's come home uh, a good winner. And uh, worth just, I think she ran a couple of hundred chases, didn't she? And no real luck, um, but um, showed signs of, of promise and is clearly in good hands. And uh, Terry Hamblin, good supporter as well. So there's our winner getting a well deserved bucket on, and another bucket of water. And we'll confirm the runners for the sixth and final race to you in a moment. I think we've got seven runners in uh, that race. We'll do that in a, a few moments' time. But um, uh, have we got any starting prices for... No, just starting prices will be with us very shortly. But it's... Uh, yeah, uh, apparently we have them. 
no, we don't have them. Uh, we'll have them for you in just a second. In the meantime, um, I, I'll give you the full list of the captioned list of runners for our final race shortly. But the numbers are 3, 5, 7, 12, 16, no escape for Jimmy Cole, 20 and 21. There are numbers in the final race. So we'll have news of the final race on this live stream in a few moments time. Right, we have them. So here come those starting prices. So the winner was number 10, Lucky Lara, 9 to 4, favourite, I think. Second was number 5, Full Spez at 8 to 1, with Heidi Lewis riding that. And Jimmy, Jimmy Tew is still a maiden, but it's going to come for him one day, I promise you. Number 8, Jimmy Tew returned at odds of 8 to 1. That the PRJ Engineering maiden conditions race. Lucky Lara successful in that one and she was the favourite at the end of it. So well done to Josh Newman and uh, Josh the winning jockey uh, and trainer in uh, that particular race. So um, just somebody will tell me in my ear whether we've got the full list of runners for our final race yet. No problem. Yeah we have them so uh, here they come. And there they are. So we had um, we have number three Buster move. Merv Woodward is riding that one. I don't think that necessarily had a rider in um, on the website or in some publications. Five Cornish Cavalier, Holly Andrown on board that Cornish Cavalier. Firefly Lane, Josh Newman going for for a treble uh, at Upcut this afternoon. Kesa Great. Uh, not now ridden by Anna Johnston. There's a change of rider on that. I'll tell you who that change of rider is in just a moment. Uh, but um, it's now ridden by Martin McIntyre. So that's 12. Kessa Great is not the rider on there, but it's Mr. M. McIntyre. 16, no escape is Jimmy Cole. 20, pencil Darren Edwards. And then Will Biddick uh, rides, uh, rides uh, number 21, talking to the moon and those are our seven runners in the final race of the afternoon let's see if we can just give you a little bit of uh, of a guided tour some use some of our cameras just to give you an idea of what this point to point the south tech at point to point at upcut cross today is like you can see plenty of people there that's an even better shot looking down at the crowds uh, certainly in the area on the right of your picture uh, lots of people crowding in there and there are trade stands and there's a bar and there are bookmakers etc as well plenty of cars over there and then towards the left hand side of the picture you can see horse boxes etc etc so actually on a, a lovely summer's afternoon here uh, we've got a, a good crowd and plenty of people here enjoying themselves in the sunshine and uh, delighted to see so many of them uh, with us this afternoon. So we've got one race to come and news of that one in a moment or two's time. Just talking about um, Lucky Lara. So um, she is, uh, she's been, um, she ran in a couple of hunter chases in March. Uh, she unseated the rider both times. She was favorite uh, on one of them. They took her uh, quite a long way, I think. They, uh, Tristan Durrell Road, they went to Catrick and uh, unseated the rider there, unfortunately. Uh, on that occasion, unseated... Oh, quite unlucky, just sort of um, was going well when unseating the rider. And then they went to a hunter chase at Ludlow. And on that occasion, um, Fionn Summers Road um, jumped right and bumped another rival right at the very first obstacle. So unlucky and or luckless and then well luckless times too really but um, a couple of uh, point to points of late have been pretty good third to grove ash at uh, stafford cross was promising enough with talking to the moon in second and talking to the moon runs in our final race and then uh, they went to hanukkah and uh, finished third on that occasion as well uh, so uh, there were a few bits and pieces of form to uh, get us uh, uh, excited uh, and uh, although 
the horse was favourite today, not at prohibitive odds, so nine to four favourite. I wonder whether we might take this opportunity to reflect on some earlier results from here uh, today, because this is race six, but we started way back at the beginning of the afternoon, and we start with the result of the original two o'clock race, which was staged at 2.30. And uh, here comes the result of uh, that particular race. This was the level two conditions race won by and it won in. It was a lovely result, actually minimalistic with uh, Josh Newman riding uh, for Edward and Sue Dark and uh, odds on favorite one in good style. But I'll tell you, the second and the third both ran with credit uh, there in that race. So uh, minimalistic uh, was the winner of our first race this afternoon and I mentioned Edward Dark who's the owner and trains the horse with his wife Sue he claims to be 80 though he doesn't look it and he rides that horse every day so great result for the whole family with minimalistic in the first race then um, our second race this afternoon uh, was the restricted race and uh, the restricted was won by Liberty Rock Darren Edwards odds on favorite again Kings Key ran with credit in second place and uh, looked to be throwing down a pretty mighty challenge in the closing stages. But Liberty Rock had a bit more up his uh, sleeve and uh, this horse would be one to follow next season as well, uh, Liberty Rock. Kings Key will be winning again uh, before too long as well, I'm sure. So that was the restricted, advertised as the 235, but actually became the 305. Uh, then we had uh, the third race this afternoon. We had the Simpkins Edwards mixed open race. Will Biddick won this on another odds on favourite. I hadn't quite realised how many odds on favourites were successful earlier on in the day, but uh, famous Clermont was successful in the mixed open, beating 16 letters. Another success, taking him to 24 for the season uh, to, uh, for um, Chris Barber, the winning owner there. 16 letters has run another good race. It wasn't to be for Sykes today, but maybe before too long. And then our fourth race this afternoon uh, was uh, a success very narrowly for Molly Landor on Beau de Brise. Molly was able to claim a £5 allowance because of her lack of uh, experience, less than five winners. And that made all the difference. She won by inches there, beating the odds on favourite Rhythm is a Dancer. Beau de Brise at odds of 12 to 1. And Molly riding her first winner in point of points. She's uh, ridden a, a couple of others, and she's the daughter of Guy Landau, who is a jump jockey of yesteryear and a good one as well. And then our most recent result, just to bring you right up to date, Josh Newman double. Uh, Lucky Lara was favourite, 9-4 to four favourite, uh, and uh, had those two hunter chases in March where nothing quite went right. Uh, went a long way as well, um, and unseated the rider when going well in one race at Catrick. Uh, and then everything went wrong in a second hunter chase at, at Ludlow. So, uh, but a couple of good recent runs for Lucky Lara, something to build on. And um, Josh Newman uh, did the building, both as a trainer and a jockey. Is that your first winner as a trainer? Second. What was the first? Uh, I had one down at Great Trophy on the bumper. Oh right, right. Yeah. But oh, so first over jumps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that 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 was that was nice, uh, you know, because she was a bit unlucky, wasn't she, earlier in the year in a couple of hunter chases. But you brought her yeah. along nicely. Yeah, well, we bought her privately after that, um, and yeah, she was running hunter chases. She was still a maiden. It it, it she was seemed, unlucky. Both, I think both yeah, times. Yeah, 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 and, and just it uh, it just seemed a little bit at the deep end. So wanted to bring her back to basics and. And um, that 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 will be her now for the summer. Right. Probably she'll she'll come back in hopefully pointing, um, and then look to progress. Maybe go back under rules. And does she feel progressive? Yeah, I think so. She'll build on that. She was still green at the end. Um, I thought the other horse was going to lead me a bit further and sort of got there and sort of got left there in the end. But she had a good look. But there's, there's no harm in that. She still did it and and she'll, she'll come on. Yeah, she'll it. learn a lot for that. And um, touch wood, she's 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 safe and sound in the morning. And yeah, look to. Just wind her down a bit and turn her out. And one, one to go. Uh, fire, you're busy all day you're having, aren't you? Yeah, F yeah, yeah. Firefly yeah. Lane in the last? Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, oh, that's Edward Duck again, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rhoda, last time she, she ran a credible third here. Um, the the winner looked good and the second second looked oh, a nice forms, enough horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I sort of joked with Dean afterwards and said, that, that turn that could turn out to be your best horse and be interesting to see how it goes on.
Excellent. Well, look, we better let you go and Perfect. do whatever you've got to do. Congratulations Cheers. on a nice double Thanks as well. Very much. Nice to see you. Always, no, no, as I always say, always nice to see Josh. Of course, it is always nice to see him. Uh, but uh, excellent that he's been able to come and have a chat uh, as a result of a double. But as you can perhaps see uh, on my left-hand side, we've got horses in the paddock for our final race. Better bring um, uh, bring the betting guru in to Simon to um, give us an idea uh, odds-wise for our final race. So we've got seven runners. What am I going to bet? I, I really like one horse. Uh, I think there's a really interesting contender in the race. Um, but um, talking to the moon is the favourite, is he? It's is the favourite. Shade of odds on. Four-year-old, you see all those weight allowances. Yeah, it's uh, four to five. In the early skirmishes, I mean, the rest of them, you can take your pick, really. Buster Move, 10. Cornish Cavalier, 10. Firefly Lane, 3. But these shop around, you'll beat all of them. Uh, Kessa Great, 2. No Escape, 3. They're, they're putting out, and Pencil, 4. They're putting out feelers to see if what, anybody's going to break. What price is Pencil? 4. But, four. you know, these prices are, you know, yeah. they're putting out feelers to see if anybody it's backs to keep one. you on your toes so you can, so you can do such brilliant they're, reporting. They're, they're literally waiting for the punters to mark their card, and yeah. then the books will organically form. That's how I'll, it'll work. I'll tell you, organically form. Organically form. Yeah, they, you, 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 you've been in the betting room too long. Uh, but um, I, I think No Escapes have, uh, is quite interesting in this race. Uh, and as we heard from Jimmy Cole uh, earlier on, it's going to be his last ride as well. So thanks to Simon. We'll see you again in a second. But our odds-on favourite, our very strong favourite, for this race is number 21, Talking to the Moon. So let's uh, move cameras and let's uh, have a look at these horses in the paddock. There, were, there we are. And we're looking for, first of all, number 21. And just trying to see where he is. Uh, they're not all here yet, so there's a chance. One of those that hasn't just arrived yet. Yeah, I think we're... Uh, no, I don't think he is. Uh, so um, instead, will uh, I, uh, is number 16 in there? Five, yeah, there's 16. Let's have a look at 16. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, I have uh, number 16 here, uh, which um, is No Escape. She's a four-year-old filly by Cityscape. Jimmy Cole qualified her via the Spooners and West Dartmoor. Train zones, I think, remains really interesting. Gets seven, is it 17 pounds of allowance as a four-year-old filly? So for being young and female, gets extra weight off. Showed some promise for Richard Spencer, trains in Newmarket. And uh, plenty of promise since started point-to-pointing in February. Four runs for Jimmy Cole, couple of fourths, both respectable. Second last time at Fleet also. Uh, just a concern that this is two and a half miles that a little bit more than two and a half miles will suit her even better. Just coming into the paddock over there, we might pick up number 12. And uh, there's number 12, which uh, is uh, Keza Great, five-year-old by Great Pretender, good, good stallion, Great Pretender, trained by Les Jefford for a partnership. Back to two and a half miles after weakening fast over further at Hunnicutt and then at Bratton Down. Decent effort when runner-up to Between You and Me at Trevi Dannon in mid-April. That was decent. Subsequently fourth behind some OK horses in the restricted at Hunnicutt on the 7th of May. The Minehead Harriers and West Somerset fixture. Kessa Great, number 12. There he is, close up. Behind number 12 is number 5, which is Cornish Cavalier. Uh, and uh, number five uh, is there. That is Cornish Cavalier, an eight-year-old. Stephen Long owns and trains, qualified via the Forbra Hunt. Well beaten when final finisher in the maiden here on May the 8th, but uh, he got round, which everyone must have been quite pleased about. There he is. Looks good. Number five, Cornish Cavalier. Now, just coming through our picture here is number 16. And uh, 16 is no escape. Oh, we've talked about um, no escape already, but I just think she'll, she'll go okay. Next one that's going to come around uh, behind us is number three, which is Buster Move. There we are. There's Buster. Buster is a 10-year-old by Catastrophe. Michael Sweetland uh, is the trainer of Buster Move. Written by Merv Woodward. I don't think there was a jockey advertised on the websites or in the various publications. And uh, naught from three in point to points. A couple of races um, a bit of time ago. 
Uh, most recent PU at Chipley in January 2020. So it hasn't run for a bit. Uh, and, um, yeah, bust a move. Well, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on today. Number three. Behind him is number 20. Uh, and that's Pencil. Now, Pencil's interesting. Pencil is interesting. He's a five-year-old. He's got no point-to-point -point form. Nicky Martin trains, qualified via the Dulverton Farmers Hunt. Runs for the Bradley Partnership again, same colours as Sykes earlier in the day. Two races under rules so far, when distinctly immature, not least when getting loose before a race at Exeter in March, then very keen and ultimately unseated the rider last time. But um, Pencil, only five, in good hands. Not saying that Pencil is going to, trying to think of an awful pun, is going to uh, sketch out his, uh, his, his chance today. But uh, he might sketch out that he's one for the future. He's uh, number 20, Pencil. And the other one that we are really keen to see here is of, uh, where are we? We're looking, there he is, um, attendant in a, in fact, two attendants, one in white and one in blue over here. Um, that is our number 21. Yeah, here we are. There, there he is, the one that plenty of people are very interested in indeed, number 21, Talking to the Moon. He's a four-year-old by Peathers Moon. Chris Barber trains, qualified via the Catterstock. Uh, David Futter's Yorton Racing, the owner of this one. The mother of Talking to the Moon was uh, a man called Blue Buttons and uh, by King's Theatre. Uh, and that won four races under rules and a point to point. Uh, the horse ran at uh, Stafford Cross, didn't he? Made quite a promising debut on uh, that occasion. Um, and, um, yeah, it's running over two and a half miles here, so wonder how that one will get on. Uh, but um, look forward to seeing Talking to the Moon in action here this afternoon. And clearly only a four-year-old, so allowances galore as well. So the riders just arriving in the paddock for this one. Talking to the Moon, our favourite. Uh, black and gold colours right in the centre of the... You can see right in the centre of your picture now. Uh, those, uh, the Yorton Racing Colours and uh, the trainer with his back to us and the baseball cap on, Chris Barber. Is that a, they've had a winner together already uh, today. This is number seven. Firefly Lane. I yes, don't think we've seen Firefly. Firefly Lane, trained by Nicky Frost, so in good hands with the Frost family. Six-year-old mare by Milan, qualified via the Mod Modbury Harriers. Um, ran six under rules for Jimmy Frost during the 2021-22 season. Best effort, fourth in a bumper at Warwick this time last year. Reasonably promising start to point to point in career when third behind Liberty Rock and Mount Oscar. Over three miles here on May the 8th. Had that been two and a half, probably would have been interesting. Jockey in good form, Josh Newman. He's ridden a double already here today. And it'll be interesting when we hear from Simon in a moment whether Firefly Lane is featuring at all in the betting. I wouldn't be at all surprised uh, if it was. Perfect scene. Have we got that, that shot looking down over the paddock? I love that uh, shot. Yeah, love it. So that is, that's what it's like here at the moment. The sun is out. The jockeys are in the paddock. The horses are parading. Members of the public here at the South Tech Cup point to point at Upcut Cross are getting a view of all these horses. Uh, and, um, yeah, the, the sunshine, which was really very warm with the breeze earlier on, it's just eased slightly. I think the wind's eased as well. And it is the most fabulous late May afternoon. Do you not agree, Simon Not certainly do, yes. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Absolutely so, lovely. So um, is, is our favourite uh, talking to the moon... It's talking to the moon hardening. It's not hardening, but it's, it's stayed solid, four to five. Right, you, four, you so four to five, talking to the moon. And then yeah. some of these other ones. Firefly Lane, I think, is definitely of interest, number seven. Yes, fire, f f oh, sorry, dropped my card. Fly Firefly Lane is a four to one chance. Any movement at all? Um, only outwards. Buster Move is now 25. Cornish Cavalier, 25. Firefly Lane is four. 
Uh, Castle the Great opened a very tentative two to one. That's now it to six. No escape. That's the one they've backed. Three to one into two to one. Yeah, I'm not uh, surprised. And pencil drifter four to five out to five to one. And talking to the moon, a solid four to five. Excellent. And the horses are leaving the paddock right now uh, for this race. Well, not all of them have been united with their uh, with their riders, but um, there is uh, one that is just being uh, given a rider, Kessa Great. Fly, Fly McIntyre just getting in the saddle on that particular horse. And they'll be on their way to the starting point fairly soon. Interesting, there should be solid money for No Escape. Some of No Escape's forms quite interesting. And uh, as they are led out onto the track by Cornish Cavalier, I think, with Holly Ann uh, Drown, uh, well, I'm just looking across to our commentator. He'll be in place. <laughs> He's having a very bumpy ride in the crane this time. He's obviously upset the, the crane driver, but they are making their way to the starting point there. Uh, there goes number 16, no escape, the orange cap. There we are. Sixth and final race of the afternoon. This is the FC Cleaning Systems uh, maiden race. And... Uh, they race over the uh, two and a half miles this time, so they're going to start here in the home straight. And uh, they're almost all down at the start now, so in no particular order, it's number three, Buster Move, ridden by Mr. Mervyn Woodward, light blue with a dark blue hoop, yellow collar and sleeves, light blue and yellow corded cap. Number five is Cornish Cavalier, ridden by Miss Holly Andrown, yellow with a green cross of Lorraine and armlets and a green cap. Number seven is Firefly Lane, ridden by Mr. Josh Newman. Yellow with a black cross belts, yellow sleeves, black armlets, and a black cap. Then we see number 12, Keza Great, ridden by Mr. Martin McIntyre. And that's a change of colours, pink with a black disc, uh, half sleeves, and a uh, black cap. Number 16 is No Escape, and this is uh, blue with a red sash, red armlets on sleeves, and a red cap. Uh, number 20 is Pencil, ridden by Mr. Darren Edwards, maroon with a beige star, diablo on sleeves, and a star on the cap. Number 21 is Talking to the Moon, ridden by Mr. Will Biddick, uh, black with a gold chevron and a black cap. So those are the seven runners that go to post them for this final race of the afternoon. The Open Maiden to be run over the reduced di distance two and a half mile. This one then over two and a half miles, so they start in the home straight uh, this time. And uh, they, just looking across at the colours there on the right of the picture, that's Firefly Lane. Pencil in the maroon with a white star there. Um, Jimmy Cole's mount, no escape, the, the blue and the red. And then in the centre of uh, our picture, uh, just uh, the, um, the our favourite here is uh, is over on the where, where have you got? He's gone. He's, he's right the way over on the <laughs> right hand side of the picture. But he'll be from what I can six to four on. By the way, uh, talking talking to the moon and uh, talking to the moon with Will Biddick on board. Um, that's a, a pretty solid first run. He gets weight allowances. He's trying to advertise Peather's Moon. Excellent uh, stallion, racing for Yorton Racing for the Futter family. And Will Biddick is on board. There are seven. He's just not quite in the picture at the moment, but he will be shortly, hopefully. Cornish Cavalier is the very yellow one towards the left of the picture. Another quite yellow one with a darker uh, hoop. That's his buster move. In the sunshine then. Nearly ready to go. And there is our favourite. Don't think I was being stupid. But there, there he is now, 21 as you can see. Dark colours with the golden V. Very good distinctive colours. And be interesting to see whether he can give Chris Barber a 25th winner of the 
season. Chris, who had a Chris, who had a uh, a winner earlier on in the day, along with Will Biddick, famous Clement won the mixed open race earlier on, and that was uh, Will's fiftieth winner of the season, putting him. Well, we haven't actually been able to um, to get the signal to uh, get news of James King today, but he's he, he's well within striking distance. But clearly, there are only a couple of weeks of the season still to go. So, an odds-on favourite for our last race of the day. And odds-on favourites were doing pretty well earlier on in the afternoon. But then um, Rhythm is a Dancer was turned over in the open race for novice riders. But it's been a, a really enjoyable afternoon. And I, I just feel maybe it's the weather, maybe it's just a decent number of runners, but there's... That, that it's really got a, got a vibe, as, the, as uh, people say. It's got a vibe here today. Crowd looking around is decent without being spectacular. It's not as big as um, some of the crowds that have uh, been witnessed in Devon and Cornwall this year, but a real buzz about the place. And just, I think, a certain amount of delight that in, in one of the races were, there were 13 entries and 11 runners. The, uh, the, the mixed open only had a small field, but a good quality one. But we're pretty much ready to go then for the last race of the afternoon. Mark Dennis is the commentator for the FC Cleaning Systems maiden race, two and a half miles. Flags are raised. The favourite right in the middle there, the black with the uh, golden V. And they'll be on their way, just being asked to take another turn. Pencil going across the centre of the, of the um, picture. And best wishes to Jimmy Cole on no escape, having his last ride, he says, in a point to point. Let's see how he gets on. Jump away from the start then for this final race of the afternoon, the Open Maiden, over two and a half miles and uh, just the 15 fences to take this time and no escape. Leads him out over it, couple of lengths clear under Jim Cole. And for those of you who don't know, this is Jim Cole's final race of his career. So best luck, Jim. And he leads them down towards the, the uh, second then. He's around about six or seven lengths clear. Takes out in uh, fine style. Talk to the moon. He's over in second. And uh, uh, then Pencil following these through his Firefly Lane. And then uh, uh, Buster Move. Then um, in behind this, Keza Great. And the back marker Cornish Cavalier at the moment. There's no escape then. He's gone further clear. He's 12. Maybe more lengths clear then. No escape. Jim Cole. Jim been riding down in the Devon Cornwall. Uh, for 24 seasons now, 18 winners, and uh, also a regular on the half marathon circuit, and it's not too shabby at a half marathon either. And a uh, highlight of his career is probably Holly Walk winning the uh, Hunter Chase at Aintree back in about 2007. Uh, that was definitely Jim's career highlight on Holly Walk. So they prepare now to take the ditch, they rode over the ditch safely. And uh, the rest of the field stream out over. Talking to the moon over in second. Joined on the outside by Pencil. Firefly Lane is uh, next in fourth. And another three or four lengths then back to Keza Great. Uh, uh, five more lengths then to Buster Moves. And uh, the back marker Cornish Cavalier under Holly Andrown at the moment. And around about uh, 30 lengths off the leader then. No escape. Jim Cole's going to make this a real test of stamina. As he's on the uh, turn at the far end now. And no escape, a 7 to 4 chance. Uh, talking to the moon is a 6, or f 6 to 4 on uh, with the bookmakers. Pencil 3 to 1. Then we're out to 4 to 1 for Firefly Lane. So uh, the leader then on the turn back towards us. Gallops just steady slightly, I fancy, as they uh, approach the next then. And uh, no escape out over it. Jim Cole's looking over his shoulder. He's going to see Talking to the Moon leading the uh, charge of the uh, remaining runners from Firefly Lane on the inside. Pencil on the outside. Kez are great in the slipstream of these three. As they, they continue down then to the next. Come to it now. No escape out over. His lead has been cut now. He's uh, down to about five or six lengths clear then. As they uh, take on what will be the final fence in the circuit's time. So no escape. Comes to it, jumps it beautifully out in front, talking to the moon. Over next on the inside of Pencil, then the Firefly Lane's just 
Uh, give him a shake of the reins on landing there. By Josh Newman. Keza greets him behind this. That's the uh, hunting group of four that are going to try and chase down. No escape in the final circuit then. And no escape. Took a bit of a chance with that. Just landed a little bit untidily. No escape under Jim Cole. So uh, talking to the moon now. Up to doing about seven lengths of the leader. Pencils next. Then Firefly Lane. Three lengths then back to Keza Great. Uh, a big distance, about 12 lengths then back to Buster Move. And three more lengths then back to Cornish Cavalier, the back marker. So they uh, begin their run up the back straight then for the final time in this uh, open maiden. And uh, plain fence, open ditch and plain fence to take. And they come to the plain fence now. No escape with a lead of about four lengths now. But it is being reduced by talking to the moon. Pencil got in a little bit tight to that. Firefly Flame now makes a bit of a move up on the inside of... Uh, uh, talking to the moon to go up and dispute second. Open ditch then for no escape. Out over safely. Talking to the moon. Firefly Lane now ridden vigorously under Josh Newman. Keza Greats also arrived there with these uh, looking uh, as though he's travelling pretty sweetly at the moment. Pencils the back marker of the main group up front. Buster Move and Cornish Cavalier continue a long way adrift of the main field then. So they're taking the final one in the back straight and continue on to the top end of the course them and uh, as they do so no escape he's trying to do it the real hard way trying to beat them off from the front talking to the moon back in second firefly lane is now three lengths back in third so talking to the moon looks the chief danger to no escape at the moment as they round the turn then and arrive at the top of the home straight so no escape with jim cole trying to bring it bring him a dream Finish to his career. Talking to the moon on the outside now. Looms up large uh, from No Escape. But No Escape now still with about two or three lengths in hand. Firefly Moon lanes back in three and Keza Greats four. Down to the second last then. No Escape joined on the outside by Talking to the Moon under Will Biddick, who now goes on by a length from No Escape who switch to the outside as they race down then to the final fence. Talking to the moon and Will Bielek looking for a two-timer this afternoon from No Escape. Back in third is Firefly Lane in Kazagrate. But Talking to the Moon's going to take it just in about seven or eight lengths from uh, No Escape, then Firefly Lane and Kazagrate. Wow, it did look as though it was going to be a fairy tale there for a long time, didn't it? With uh, on the right of your picture there, uh, with uh, getting a good uh, pat down the head, no escape. And it did look as though perhaps no escape had escaped them, but uh, it was talking to the moon. And look at the difference in weight, no escape. Um, oh no, she had a low weight as well, of course, didn't she? Because she had even less weight than, um, than the winner. But it looked as though this one might be successful but much as uh, many people here would have loved to have seen those blue and red colours uh, in the winner's enclosure uh, as uh, Jimmy Cole rode in his final race, it is. There we are. And, oh, well, that's nice to see. A, a shake of the hand from Will Biddick uh, because he has got talking to the moon past somebody that he will know really well. Uh, I think uh, Jimmy said that he'd been riding for 21 years, was it? 20 plus years. Uh, with half a dozen or so rides every year, so they'd know each other well. They'd have ridden e against each other many times. And, and uh, when on the uh, home turn, Biddick was trying to was saying to Talking to the Moon, come on, come on, uh, the, the response wasn't instantaneous. Obviously, there was uh, an element of, um, uh, of inexperience uh, for this horse. Uh, and for a stride, it looked as though that fairy tale might happen and that no escape might win. But in the end... It's another win for Will Biddick, his 51st of the season as he chases, what, an eighth title as the champion male point-to-point -point rider. Uh, just trying to find out um, what they've scored between the two. Uh, we haven't actually got, I was hoping for, a, for an update from the James King camp, but uh, the, the, the James King camp doesn't seem to know, which probably means he hasn't had one elsewhere, in which case... And we've gone down for the last couple of weeks. 
Will has gone to 51 and James was on 51 this morning. So I'm not saying that James hasn't been successful elsewhere. Uh, communications between us and the outside world haven't been particularly brilliant today. But this guy, the seven times champion male point-to-point -point rider of Great Britain, Will Biddick, uh, has ridden uh, his 51st winner today. And uh, there he is. We'll just swing our camera a bit further on so we can keep up with our winner. There's the runner-up. There we are. There's, there's, there's our winner and there's our uh, runner-up. So let's go back to our winner, shall we? Um, and um, there we are. But the reception, good for talking to the moon, of course. Four-year-old by Peathers Moon, but even better for the, running, the runners up jockey. And I don't know if you can just see that, but there's been a bit of water flying around the tradition of uh, a bit of dunking for the retiring rider. And uh, that's what's happened uh, right there. But there's our winner. Centre picture. There's our winning trainer. Centre picture as well. And... There's our winning jockey too, Will Biddick, for the photographs after the final race of the afternoon at Upcut Cross. The South Tech Cup point to point in the sunshine on good to soft, good in places, I would imagine. Ground, but lovely ground, especially for the time of year, goodness. And uh, a bit of rain earlier on in the week, just absolutely perfect for the team as they made certain that conditions for this second point to point of the season at Upcut Cross were as good as they possibly could have been. I think we can confirm the result in full with starting prices now. There we are. Four to six. So another odds on favourite. The odds on favourites did well today. First number 21, Talking to the Moon, racing for Yorton Racing Partnership, Chris Barber and Will Biddick, six to four on. But Hats off to the runner-up, number 16, No Escape. The owner-trainer rider retiring today, 5-2. to two. He says he might train a few in the future. He's going to concentrate on his plastering and his long-distance running now. And third, number seven, Firefly Lane. Firefly Lane, Josh Newman, who still had a couple of successes today. Third at odds of 4-1. to one. That, the two-and-a-half-mile FC Cleaning Systems maiden race, which concludes the action here today i'm going to bring uh, i'm going to bring simon in just to have a quick word about the afternoon i can tell you that uh, that over on my right hand side our commentator mark dennis is just uh, having a little breather at the end of the day maybe a cool cup of tea or iced coffee or something but well done and thanks to mark for all his efforts today and indeed throughout the season as far as the live stream presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area is concerned. He'll be in action, though, uh, uh, as the season here in the extreme southwest of England continues through until nearly the middle of June. We've got, what have we got, two at Bratton Down to go? One at Bratton Down and one at Umberley. Yeah, so two fixtures to go, and those golden tones will be well heard at both of those fixtures. Thanks to Mark. Thanks to Simon as well. Thanks. So, um, the bookmaker's taken a bit of a bashing today. If you were odds on favourite, you had a very good chance of winning. Yeah, well, yeah, I've only had one favourite beaten. Mm. So, five winning favourites, never good for the bookies. Um, they'll be back. They'll be back. They'll yeah. be happy. They'd love enjoying the day, same as anybody else, but they'd like to have gone on with at least their expenses. Did, but, did, uh, did you feel, we've been to a few of late, I, I felt the crowd wasn't the best today, but no. the buzz about the place, the racing was good, the betting ring was buzzing. The, the, the weather was great, the ground was decent. I, I felt a bit of a buzz about the place yeah, today. It was a feel good day today. Um, one of the bookmakers said it's a bit of a shame that it wasn't busier for them because the racing was so good. But, you know, it was, but everybody's enjoyed themselves. A fleet park a couple of meetings ago, that was probably the one for me that was the, the busiest, the first fleet park. Yeah, they were that was, fantastic. That was absolutely, you know, that was what it was all about. But this has been lovely, lovely as well. And it's not all about the betting, you know, it's just been a wonderful day's racing. So. And I, I mentioned a fleet part there. I, I love fleet. There are two fixtures there, usually in April. The two fixtures, I think maybe sometimes they just go into May, the second one goes into May. But if you've never been to Fleet Park, it comes highly recommended. Well, thank you very much indeed thank you. for everything today and throughout the season. Love the, love the shirt. I, whenever I see anyone with a, quite, a, quite, a, quite a snazzy shirt, 
I always say you wouldn't want to ride a non-trier in those colours. You wouldn't. But of course, non-triers don't exist, so that we can't make that particular uh, gag. Uh, but uh, anyway, lovely. Thanks Thank very, very much, much indeed, Thank Simon. You. Thanks to Mark as well. And uh, thanks to everyone else involved uh, today and throughout the season for these live streams presented by the Devon and Cornwall point-to-point -point area. Uh, particular thanks have to go uh, to... Uh, we've, there are plenty of people who contribute to all of this. Hold on, have we got another... We've got a, we're, we're, I'll tell you what, I, I was going to say my thank yous, but I'm not now. Okay, I'm going to have another word with the... Uh, how wet is he? Yeah, uh, Dab. Got this. He's got a beer. Come, come, come in front of the microphone because we've talked a lot. We'll do our thank yous in a second. We're doing a lot about. We talked a lot about Jimmy Cole and the, ending his career today. I thought the fairy tale was on for so a long I, time. Cornelius, and get I, nice and close to the mic so we can hear. Well, you. So did I. Um, yeah. I said that if I get out of lead and I won't be, you know, yeah. if I get fine start, I did, but. She, and then she, on the turn for home, you couldn't see, but bit it was beginning to yeah. have to go on the eventual win. I never looked back because I thought, do your own race. And, and they always say, don't look back. And um, I honestly did think it was mine. But when we went over the last fence, I could just tell Wills was going away. Yeah. But he, he, uh, he peed on my fireworks really a little bit. Yeah. But never mind. She ran no. her heart out. Yeah. And uh, so, so what, what, happens to, what happens to her now? Are you still going to own her? And, no, uh, I would like, if anyone comes forward, she'll be on the market. So well, I'll tell you what, yeah. d d don't be giving her away because yeah. bring me first. Uh, because I think, no, because she has shown, she's only four. Yeah. She's a filly with uh, relatively little experience. Yeah, a lot more to come. She, yeah, a lot uh, more to come. Definitely. I mean, we had a... Um, You'll be able to back her in the future as well. I will be, will I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's got a lot more to come. A lot more. And I mean How much that, you pay? Eight hundred quid. Eight hundred pound only. But she's been a bit of a live. When she came, she um, she was a bit of a head case. Yeah. She's, she's just all about buzzy. And the dear of her has been in that lorry all day. We wish the race was a bit sooner because she sweated herself up in the lorry. The other one went out. We were uh, running Star Walk in the second, and she's just been stuck in there and mm. just got a bit and worked up. It's a warm up. old day, isn't it? But yeah, she, she's a nice horse. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. And how do you, beer in hand? I'm happy now. How do you, they dumped you in the, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, poured water yeah. room. What I loved actually at the end of the race, when obviously you'd have been disappointed there was no fairy tale, but yeah. Biddick came over no, and shook yeah, your hand. Yeah, very good. Which very good. I thought that showed. Yeah, you know, no, I wouldn't want something to give to me easy anyway. And it's. Uh, well, they, they weren't going to no, give it to you easily. No, you looked as though, it's called no escape, looked as though you had escaped. Yeah. 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 yeah she gave, yeah, a bit of a fun, fun ride that was. She. she jumped like a just missed one i think three out yeah. and that just sort of got missed that one mm. but there we go and you've got the beer in the hand I got beer in the hand i'm happy and big smile on the face i am now excellent well look good luck with the plastering right. yeah and good luck with the long distance thank running yeah. and thank you for everything thank you Cornish. it's thank been you great much. lovely to see oh <laughs> and uh, that's really nice to uh, to round off our live stream today with somebody who won't be appearing on the live stream uh, any live stream again as a jockey but who knows uh, he said he might even train the odd one I bet you he pops up at uh, some point anyway so no escape runner up in our final race runner up to talking to the moon but uh, a, nearly a wonderful story still a fabulous story and lovely to hear Jimmy in such good form there and I think that just about concludes everything from a sunny Upcut Cross uh, this afternoon. Um, I'm going to thank everybody involved very quickly uh, on the floor running around. You occasionally see her in the uh, picture saying to a jockey before he's even got off the horse, you're going over there for an interview next. Uh, so thanks to Rita for that. Wow. For, for, oh, there's, uh, sounds like there's more, oh, there's more dunking going. I don't know if we can, uh, get, uh, we can uh, get a camera on the, um, on the far corner there. But uh, there's uh, uh, plenty of dunking for our, our jockey there. Uh, for Jimmy after that particular tradition. Somebody poured a bucket of water over him already, but they dumped him in the water butt as well. But thanks to Rita, thanks to Mike, who runs around for statistics. Simon uh, with all the betting. Practically all the technical team were called Josh today, but those